Hi guys, Dave here again from Gas City Gaming, bringing you another Warhammer 40k 8th edition index review. Uh, this review will be taking a look at the Xenos 2 book. This contains Orcs, uh, Tau, Tyranids, and Gene Stealers. So just like the other reviews, what we're going to take a look at first, well, I'll just explain my thinking behind these reviews. Basically, if you have a little local gaming shop, they're usually allowing you to go in, have a look at the indexes, kind of the points, things, look, the data sheets, all that. So what these reviews are about is giving you guys that look at home while you're painting, getting stuff ready for ready for 8th edition, or just while you're killing time at home. Uh, so you can read along with me. I'd love you guys to keep me company while I'm doing this. Uh, but what we're going to do first is take a look at the point values of things for match play. Then we're going to take a look at the... Uh, war gear cost for points and the war gear details for each of the empires or these races in this book And then we're gonna go back and take a look at the data cards now If you're worried about jumping around a whole lot things will be time stamped in the description below uh, Below so don't worry too much about that if you see interesting things you want to time stamp do so in the comments I uh, would love to have you guys add on stuff you think is interesting and also any other comments you think are kind of uh, Helpful and interesting about the new indexes and new 8th edition so let's get right down to it and take a look at our orc point values for the orc units uh, going forward in 8th edition. So uh, first of all we have an ammo run, now you can't take them on their own but they are 4 points. Uh, also just a quick note, uh, until I say so, the units do not include war gear. Okay, um, so we're going to look at the units first, then the war gear, and I will mention when the units begin to include the war gear in their cost. So an ammo runt, you cannot take him on his own, but he uh, is worth 4 points. A battle wagon is 161 points. A big big guns in unit 1 to 6 are 8 points. A big mech is 55. Big mech in mega armor is 77 points. Big mech on a war bike is 81 points. A blitz a bomber is 108 points. A bomb squig, not on his own, is 10 points. Boys in unit of 10 to 30 are 6 points. Burna boys in unit of 5 to 15 are 14 points. A Burna bomber is 102 points. A Daka jet is 88 points. 1 to 3 Def dreads in a unit are 74 points each. 1 to 3 Def coptas in a unit are 55 points each. Flash gits in a unit of 5 to 10 are 27 points each. A Gorkonaut is 295 points. Gretchen in a unit of 10 to 30 are 3 points. Grot gunners, not available on their own, are 2 points each. A Grot Euler, not available on its own, is 4 points. And a Grot Orderly, again not available on its own, is 4 points. Killicans, in a unit of 1 to 6, are 51 points each. Commandos, with a K, are, I love that about orcs, in a unit of 5 to 15, are 9 points each. Ludas, in a unit of 5 to 15, are 17 points each. Mega Knobs, in a unit of 3 to 10, are 25 points each. A Mech is 22 points. Mech Guns, in a unit of 1 to 6, are 15 points each. A Morkonaut is 270 points. A knob with a wah banner is 75 points. Knobs in a unit of 3 to 10 are 17 points. Knobs on war bikes are in a unit of 3 to 10 are 42 points each. A pain boy is 40 points. A pain boy on a war bike is 90 points. A runt herd is 1 to 3 uh, in a unit of 1 to 3 is 26 points each. Scorchas are in a unit of 1 to 5 are 49 points each. A Stompa is 900 points. Storm Boys, in a unit of 5 to 30, are 8 points. Tank Bustas, in a unit of 5 to 15, are 5 points. A Truck is 76 points. War Bikers, in a unit of 3 to 12, are 27 points. A War Boss is 55 points. War Boss in Mega Armor is 107 points. And a War Boss on a War Bike is 86 points. War Buggies, in a unit of 1 to 3, are 44 points. War Tracks, in a unit of 1 to 5, are 49 points. A Waz Bomb Blasta Jet is 99 points, and a Weird Boy is 62 points. So none of those include the cost of their war gear uh, in their point cost, but the following units do include the cost of their war gear in their point cost. Boss Snickrot is 69 points. Boss Zagstruck is 88 points. I apologize if I'm butchering these. Gazgul Thraka is 215 points. Captain Bad Ruck is 84 points, and Mad Doc Mad Doc Grotsnick is 74 points. So we'll get on, that's the cost of all your units uh, and your named characters. Keep in mind those named characters include the cost of their war gear, and everybody else does not. Uh, as far as weapons go, we'll get on to their costs. Uh, ranged weapons first. A big shooter is 6 points. A big bomb is free. 
bomb, uh, boom bomb is free. Uh, Bubble Chucka is 32 coins. A Burna is free. Burna Bomb is free. Daka Gun is free. Def Gun is free. Def Cannon is free. Def Storm Mega Shooter is free. Grot Blaster is free. A Grot Zooka is 10 points. A Cannon is 15 points. A Kill Cannon is 27 points. A Combi Weapon with Rocket Launcher is 20 points. Combi Weapon with Scorcha is 19 points. Copto Rockets are 28 points. Custom Mega Blaster are 9 points. A Custom Mega Cannon is 23 points. Custom Mega Slugger is 7 points. Custom Shooter is 4 points. A Lava is 18 points. Rack of Rockets is 28 points. A Rocket Launcher is 12 points. A Pair of Rocket Pistols are 12 points. A Shock Attack Gun is 45 points. A Shooter is free. A Scorcha is 17 points. A Scorcha Missile is 20 points. A Slugger is free. A Smasher Gun is 16 points. A Snaz Gun is free. A Squig Bomb is free. Stick Bomb Finger is 4 points. A Stick and Stick Bombs are free. Super Shooter is 10 points. A Super Gatler is... That should be Gatla, really. Uh, <laughs> keeping with Orc Phonetics is 28 points. A Super Rocket is free. A Tank Buster Bombs are free. A Teleport Blaster is 11 points. Teleport Mega Blaster is 18 points. A Tractor Cannon is 15 points. Twin Big Shooter is 14 points. Waz Bomb Mega Cannon is 12 points. And Zap Gun is 18 points. For their melee weapons, an Attack Squig is free. A Big Choppa is 9 points. A Choppa is free. Defarola is 19 points. One Dread Claw uh, is 30 points. And subsequent Dread Claws are 15. A Grab a Stick is free. Grab and Claw is 5 points. Grot Prod is free. Can Claw is free. One Kill Saw is 28 points, and two are 38 points. A Claw of Gork, or possibly Mork, is free, and a Mega Choppa is free. Power Claw is 25 points. A Power Stabba is 3 points. Spinning Blades are free. A Tank Hammer is, again, should be Tank Hammer, is 10 points. Uh, Erdy Syringe is free. A Wa Banner is free. A Weird Boy Staff is free, and a Wrecking Ball is 3 points. Other Warrior includes a Cyborg Body for 3 points, a Grot Lash for free, Custom Force Field for 20 points, and a Squig Hound is free. So that's the cost of everything. Keep in mind when you're purchasing ranged weapons or melee weapons for a unit, you have to pay that many points per model that you're taking it on. We'll have a look at the actual details of their Warrior as far as range for shooting weapons, strength, AP, and damage. There we go, that gets a whole page in. So a big bomb, uh, you see the big bomb when we see the stat line, again, everything will be linked in the description below for as time stamped, but it can only be used once per battle. A big shooter is 36 inch range, assault 3, strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A boom bomb, same thing, it can only be used once per battle, and we'll get to it later. A bubble chucka is 36 inch range and heavy star. Roll 4 dice each time you fire this weapon, then take it in turns with your opponent, starting with you to allocate one value at a time to its strength, AP, damage, and number of attacks. Note that the dice assigned to AP is a negative number, e.g. 3 for the AP is a negative 3 AP. So that's kind of neat, it's just in the, maybe not super competitive, but kind of makes flavorful for orcs that they just get to chaotic things, depends how it was bolted together as far as how powerful it is. A Burna in shooting is an 8 inch range, Assault D3, Strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Before a unit fires its Burnas, roll once for the number of attacks and use this for all Burnas fired by the unit in this phase. When firing a Burna, it automatically hits its target. Uh, Burna Bomb, and we'll see the details later, but each bomb can only be used once per battle. A Daka Gun is 18 inch, Assault 3, Strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Def Gun is 48 inch range, Heavy D3, Strength 7, AP negative 1, and 2 damage apiece. When a unit fires its Def Gun, roll once for the number of attacks and use this for all Def Guns fired by the unit in this phase. A Def Cannon is 72 inch range, Heavy D6, Strength 6, AP negative, uh, sorry, Heavy uh, D6, Strength 10, AP negative 4, and D6 damage. When attacking a unit with 10 or more models, this weapons type changes to Heavy 2D6. A Def Storm Mega Shooter is 36 inch range, Heavy 3D6, Strength 6, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. A Grot Blasta is 12 inch range, Pistol 1, Strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Grot Zooka is 18 inch range, Heavy 2D3, Strength 6, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Cannon, when attacking with it, choose one of the two profiles. It can be Frag, 36 inch range, Heavy D6, Strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Or Shell, 36 inch range, Heavy 1, Strength 8, AP negative 2, and D6 damage. A Kill Cannon, 24 inch range, Heavy D6, Strength 7, AP negative 2, and 2 damage. 
a combi weapon with rocket launcher. You choose one or both of the profiles below. If you choose both, subtract one from your hit rolls. A rocket launcher is 24 inch range, assault 1, strength 8, AP negative 2, and 3 damage. A shooter is 18 inch range, assault 2, strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A combi weapon with Scorcher, same thing, pick one or both profiles, if you pick both, minus one from your hit rolls. A shooter is 18 inch range, assault 2, strength 4, AP nothing, 1 damage. And a Scorcher is 8 inch range, assault D6, strength 5, AP negative 1, and 1 damage, and it automatically hits its targets. A Copter Rockets are 24 inch range, assault 2, strength 8, AP negative 2, and 3 damage. A Custom Mega Blaster is 24 inch range, assault 1, strength 8, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. Custom Mega Cannon is 36 inch range, heavy D6, strength 8, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. And a Custom Mega Slugger is 12 inch range pistol, strength 8, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. For the, all of those three weapons, if you roll one or more hit rolls of one, the bearer suffers a mortal wound after all the shots have been resolved. A Custom Mega Shooter is 18 inch range, assault 4, strength 4, AP nothing, 1 damage. A Lava is 48 inch range, heavy D6, strength 5, AP nothing, 1 damage and it can target units that are not invisible to the bearer. A uh, pair of rocket pistols are 12 inch range, pistol 2, strength 7, AP negative 2, and D3 damage. A rack of rockets is 24 inch range, assault 2, strength 8, AP negative 2, and 3 damage. Deripa, when attacking with this weapon, choose one of the profiles below. Standard is 24 inch range, heavy 3, strength 7, AP negative 3, and 2 damage. Supercharge is 24 inch range, heavy 3, strength 8, AP negative 3, and 3 damage. If you roll one or more hit rolls for this weapon of one, uh, the bearer suffers D3 mortal wounds after the shots have been resolved. A rocket launcher is 24 inch range, assault 1, strength 8, AP negative 2, and 3 damage. A shock attack gun is a 60 inch range, heavy D6, 2D6 strength, negative 5 AP, and D3 damage. Before firing the weapon, roll one. Uh, roll once to determine the strength of all its shots. If the result is 11 plus, do not make wound rolls. Instead, each attack that hits causes D3 mortal wounds. Well, that oh, bleh, that seems good. Um, granted, it's a roll of 11 on 2d6, but still. So shot uh, a shooter, 18 inch range, assault two, strength four, AP nothing, and one damage. A Scorcha is 8 inch range, Assault D6, Strength 5, AP negative 1 and 1 damage, and it automatically hits its targets. A Scorcha Missile is 24 inch range, Assault D6, Strength 5, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. Units attacked by this weapon do not gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. A Slugger is 12 inch range, Pistol 1, Strength 4, AP nothing and 1 damage. A Smasher Gun is 36 inch range, Heavy 1, uh, Strength Star, AP negative 4 and D6 damage. Instead of making a wound roll for this weapon, roll 2d6. If the result is equal to or greater than the target's toughness, the attack successfully wounds. A Snaz Gun is 24 inch range, Heavy 3, Strength 5, AP negative 2 and 1 damage. Range weapons continuing on the next page. A Squig Bomb is 18 inch range, Assault 1, Strength 8, AP negative 2 and D6 damage. Uh, this weapon cannot target units that fly. Remove the bearer after making this attack. A stick bomb is 6 inch range, grenade D6, strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A stick bomb finger is 12 inch range, assault 2D6, strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A super shooter is 36 inch range, assault 3, strength 6, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. A super gatler is 48 inch range, heavy 2D6, strength 7, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. And you see the Stompa data sheet for more details. A Super Rocket is 100 inch range, heavy D3, strength 8, AP negative 2, and D6 damage. And only one Super Rocket can be fired by the bearer a turn, and each can only be fired once per battle. A Tank Buster Bomb is a 6 inch range, grenade D3, strength 8, AP negative 2, and D6 damage. A Teleport Blasta is 12 inch range, Assault D3, strength 8, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. Uh, and a Teleport Mega Blaster is 25 inch range, or 24 inch range, Assault D3, Strength 8, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. For both Teleport weapons, Teleport weapons, sorry, if a model suffers any unused, unsaved wounds from this weapon and is not slain, roll a D6 at the end of the phase. If the result is greater than that model's wounds characteristic, it is slain. Uh, it basically gets teleported away. A tractor cannon is 36 inch range, heavy 1, strength 8, AP negative 2, and D3 damage. If this weapon's damage increases to D6 against units that fly, if a tractor cannon destroys a vehicle that can fly, the model automatically explodes. Uh, twin big shooter is 36 inch range, assault 6, strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A was bomb mega cannon, a was boom mega cannon is 36 inch range, heavy D3, strength 8, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. If you roll one or more hit rolls of one, the bear suffers a mortal wound after all this weapon's shots have been resolved. 
and a zap gun is 36 inch range, heavy 1, 2d6 strength, AP negative 3, and 3 damage. Before firing this weapon, roll to determine the strength of the shot. If the result is 11 plus, do not make a wound roll instead. If the attack hits, it causes 3 mortal wounds. The bearer then suffers a mortal wound. Uh, the orc melee weapons, what everybody came to see. Uh, we have a big choppa is strength plus 2, AP negative 1, and 2 damage. A burna in melee is strength user, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. A choppa is strength user, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Each time the bear fights, it can make an additional attack. Death roller. Death Rolla is strength user, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. Add 3 to hit rolls. Add 3 to hit rolls made for this weapon. Uh, Dreadclaw is strength times 2, AP negative 3, and 3 damage. Each time the bear fights, it can make one additional attack with this with each Dreadclaw it is equipped with. A grab a stick is strength plus 1, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Each time the bear fights, it can make one additional attack with this weapon. A grab and claw is strength user, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. The bear can only make a single attack with this weapon each time it fights. A grot prod is strength plus 2, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. A can claw is strength plus 3, AP negative 3, and 3 damage. A kill saw is strength times 2, AP negative 4, and 2 damage. When attacking with this weapon, you must subtract 1 from the hit roll. If a model is equipped with 2 kill saws, add 1 to attack's characteristic. A claw of gork, or possibly mork. Uh, when attacking this weapon, choose one of the profiles below. Crush is strength times 2, AP negative 4, and D6 damage. Smash is strength user, AP negative 2, and 2 damage. Make 3 hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of 1 if you choose Smash. A Mega Choppa. When attacking with this weapon, choose one of the profiles below. Smash is strength times 2, AP negative 5, and 6 damage. And Slash is strength user, AP negative 2, and D3 damage. Uh, make three hit rolls for each attack made of this weapon instead of one. And I missed one in between there, sorry. Uh, Custom Claw is strength times two, AP negative three, and three damage. Mork's Teeth is strength user, AP negative one, and two damage. A Power Claw is strength times two, AP negative three, and D3 damage. And you must subtract one from hit rolls made with some her attacks with this weapon. A Power Stabba is strength user, AP negative two, and one damage. Spinning Blades are strength one, AP nothing, and one damage. Roll D3 dice for each attack made with this weapon. A Tank Hammer uh, has no stats listed, but says make a single hit roll when attacking with this weapon. If it hits, inflict D3 mortal wounds on the target, then remove the bearer. Uh, Erdy Syringe is strength user AP nothing and 1 damage. This weapon always wounds targets other than vehicles on a roll of 2+. Uh, the Vulture's Claws are strength plus 2, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. Each time the bearer fights, only 2 attacks can be made with this weapon. A Wa Banner is strength plus 2, AP nothing, and 2 damage. A Weird Boy Staff is strength plus 2, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. And a Wrecking Ball is strength plus 2, AP negative 1, 1 damage, and the bear can only make 3 attacks with this weapon each time it fights. Uh, next is our Tau Empire point, va point values. Uh, so one more time, if you're cutting right to this section, anytime we, I'm going to list the first units, uh, until I say so, the units do not uh, include the price of war gear. So the first few units I list here do not include the price of most of their weapons listed uh, with them on their in their point cost. Uh, so for an example, a breacher team, a model, a unit of 5 to 10, cost 8 points each without any weapons or anything. Uh, so an XV-88 broadside battle suit in a unit of 1 to 3 costs 80 points per model. A Kadra fire blade costs 39 points. A commander costs 76 points. Commander in XV-86 Co uh, Cold Star Battle Suit costs 90 points. XV8 Crisis Battle Suits in a unit of 3 to 9 costs 42 points each. XV8 Crisis Bodyguards in a unit of 3 to 9 costs 45 points. A TY7 Devilfish costs 101 points. An Ethereal is 45 points. Ethereal on a Hover Drone is 50 points. Firesight Marksman is 21 points. XV95 Ghost Keel Battle Suit is 82 points. Crude Carnivores in a unit of 10 to 20 or 6 points each. Crude Hounds in a unit of 4 to 12 or 4 points each. A Crude Shaper is 31 points. Crew Talks Riders in a unit of 1 to 3 or 34 points. Long Strike is 137 points. A Pathfinder Team of 5 to 10 is 5 points each. TX4 Piranhas in a unit of 1 to 5 or 45 points each. AX3 Razor Shark Strike Fighter is 82 points. XV104 Riptide Battle Suit is 209 points. XV25 Stealth Battle Suits in a unit of 3 to 6 are 20 points each. A KV128 Storm Surge is 180 points. A Strike Team of 5 to 12 are 8 points each. An AX39 Sunshark Bomber is 100 points. A Tidewall Drone Port is 70 points. A Tidewall Gun Rig is 70 points. A Tidewall Shield Line is 70 points, with each Tidewall Defense Platform from 0 to 1 also costing 70 points. 
A TX-7 Hammerhead gunship is 117, 117 points. A TX-78 Skyray gunship is 119 points. And Vespid Stingwings in unit of 4 to 12 are 15 points. So none of those included their war gear in their cost, or drones in their cost. Um, the following models, however, do include their war gear. So a DS-8 Tactical Support Turret costs 20 points. MV-1 Gun Drone costs 8 points. MV-4 Shield Drone is 8 points. MV-5 Stealth Drone is 10 points. MV-7 Marker Drone is 10 points. MV-8 Missile Drone is 20 points per model. Uh, MV-17 Interceptor Drone is 15 points per model. MV-31 Pulse Accelerator Drone is 8 points per model. MV-33 Grav Inhibitor Drone is 8 points per model. MV-36 Guardian Drone is 8 points per model. MV-52 Shield Drone is 11 points each. MV-62 Command Link Drone is 6 points each. MV-71 Sniper Drone are 18 points each. MV-84 Shielded Missile Drones are 25 points each, and MV-3 Recon Drones are 12 points each. All of those models include their war gear. Now, the following models include war gear, but not drones, okay? Uh, so, I'm going to butcher these names, and I apologize for that ahead of time. Uh, Aun Shi costs 68 points, including their war gear, but not drones. Uh, Aun Va is 65 points, and Ethereal Guard... Uh, Two of them are at five points each. That includes their war gear, but no drones. Commander Farsight is 151 points, including his war gear, but no drones. Commander Shadowrun is 167 points, including his war, war gear, but no drones. And Dark Strider is 45 points, including their war gear, but no drones. Now, their cost of their ranged weapons are as follows. A reminder that if you're equipping an entire unit, these following costs are per model that you equip. All right, so air bursting fragmentation projector is 10 points, burst cannon is 10 points, a cluster rocket system is 61 points, a cyclic ion blaster is 18 points, a cyclic ion raker is 39 points, destroyer missiles 10 points, flamers 9 points, fusion blasters 21, fusion colliders 44 points, heavy burst cannons 55 points, heavy rail rifles 63 points, high output burst cannon is 20 points, high yield missile pod is 41 points, ion accelerator is 107 points, ion cannon is 55 points. On rifle is 7 points, crew guns are free, crew rifles are free, and long shot pulse rifle is free. Marker lights are at 3 points, missile pod is 24 points, a neutron blaster is free, and photon grenades are free. A plasma rifle is 11 points, pulse blast cannon are 43 points, pulse blasters are free, pulse bombs are free, and pulse carbines are free. Pulse driver cannon is 97 points, pulse pistols free, pulse rifles are free, a quad ion turret is 45 points, a rail rifle is 22 points, a rail gun is 38 points, seeker missiles are 5 points, and smart missile systems are 20 points, a supremacy rail gun is 69 points. So remember, those are per model costs if you're equipping an entire unit. Uh, melee weapons. Equalizers are 1 point, an honor blade is free, crew rifle is free, crew tox fists are free, Ripping Fangs are free, and Ritual Blade is free. So, when you're not very good with them, they're free. I'm joking, Tau, Tau players, but you know what you are. <laughs> Nothing against Tau players. Uh, Tau's kind of cool, just not my play style. Uh, other war gear include uh, Advanced Targeting Systems for 8 points per system. All these costs are per system. So Advanced Targeting Systems, 8 points. Counter Fire Defense System is 5 points. Drone Controller is 5 points. Early Warning Overrides, 8 points. Homing Beacon is 20 points. Multi Tracker uh, on a Ghost Keel and Storm Surge is 10 points. A Multi Tracker on all other units is 2 points. A Riptide Shield Generator is free. A Shield Generator on Ghost Keel and Storm Surge is 40 points. A Shield Generator for all other units is 8 points. A Stimulant Injector is 5 points. Target Lock on a Ghost Keel, Riptide, and Storm Surge is 12 points. And Target Lock on all, of the, all other units is 6 points. A Velocity Tracker on a Ghost Kill, Riptide, and Storm Surge is 10 points, and a Velocity Tracker for all other units is 2 points. So now we'll get into the details of some of the Tau Empire War Gear, and some of the shooting and how powerful it can be. Alright, right there seems good. Um, air Bursting Fragmentation Projectors, 18 inch range, Assault D6, Strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage, this weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. A burst cannon is 18 inch range, assault 4, strength 5, AP nothing, 1 damage. A cluster rocket system is 48 inch range, heavy 46, strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A cyclic ion blaster, when it attacks, choose one, as a, one of these profiles. Standard is 18 inch, assault 3, strength 7, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. Overcharge is strength 18, or sorry, <laughs> range 18 inches, assault D3, strength 8, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. 
If you make one or more hit rolls of one, the bearer suffers a mortal wound after all of the weapon's shots have been resolved. A cyclic ion raker. When attacking with this weapon, choose one of the profiles below. Uh, standard is 24 inch range, heavy 6, strength 7, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. Overcharge is 24 inch range, heavy D6, strength 8, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. Again, if you make one or more hit rolls of one, the bear suffers a mortal wound after the shots have been resolved. A destroyer missile, 60 inch range, heavy 1, and a unit by, uh, hit by this weapon suffers D3 mortal wounds. Each destroyer missile can only be used once per battle. This weapon only hits on a roll of 6, regardless of the firing model's ballistic skill or any modifiers. A flamer is an 8 inch range, assault D6, strength 4, AP nothing and 1 damage, and it automatically hits its targets. A fusion blaster is 18 inch range, assault 1, strength 8, AP negative 4, and D6. When you're within half range, roll 2 dice for damage and discard the lowest. A fusion collider is 18 inch range, heavy D3, strength 8, AP negative 4, and D6 damage. If you're within half range, roll 2 dice for damage and discard the lowest. A heavy burst cannon has two, pro two profiles. Uh, choose one of the profiles below. You may only use the Nova Charge setting uh, in accordance with the Riptide uh, Shaz Vray's Nova Reactor ability. A standard, 30 standard profile is a 36 inch range, heavy 8, strength 6, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. A Nova Charge version is 36 inch range, heavy 12, strength 6, AP negative 2 and 1 damage. So four more shots and better AP. A heavy rail rifle is 60 inches, heavy 2, strength 8, AP negative 4 and D6 damage. For each roll wound of 6 plus, the target unit suffers a mortal wound in addition to their normal damage. High output burst cannons, 18 inch range, assault 8, strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. High yield missile pods are 36 inch range, heavy 4? Picture's a little messed up, but I'm calling that a 4. Um, strength 7, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. An ion accelerator, when attack this weapon, choose one of the profiles below. You can only use a Nova Charge setting in accordance with the uh, Riptide Shaz Vray's Nova Reactor ability. Standard is 72 inch range, heavy 3, strength 7, AP negative 3, and 1 damage. Overcharge is 72 inch range, heavy D6, strength 8, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. If you roll one or more hit rolls of 1, the bear suffers a mortal wound after the shots have been resolved. Nova Charge version is 72 inch range, heavy D6, strength 9, AP negative 3, and 3 damage. An ion cannon, uh, when you fire it, choose one of the profiles below. Has standard, 60 inch range, heavy 3, strength 7, AP negative 2, and 2 damage. Overcharge is 60 inch range, heavy D3, strength 8, AP negative 2, and 3 damage. Change the type to heavy D6 against units containing 10 or more models. If you roll one or more hit rolls of 1, the bear suffers a mortal wound after its shots have been resolved. An ion rifle has two profiles, choose one when firing. Standard is 30 inch range, rapid fire 1, strength 7, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. Overcharge is 30 inch range, heavy D3, strength 8, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. If you make one or more hit rolls of 1, the bear suffers a mortal wound after its shots have been resolved. A Krut gun is 48 inch range, rapid fire 1, strength 7, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. Uh, Krut rifle in shooting is 24 inch range, rapid fire 1, strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A long shot pulse rifle is uh, 48 inch range, rapid fire 1, strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. This weapon may target a character even if they are not the closest enemy unit. A marker light is strength 30, uh, 36 inch range, heavy 1, and we will check out their more specific rules later, they're kind of cool. Um, missile Pod is 36 inch range, Assault 2, Strength 7, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. A neutron Blaster is 80, 18 inch range, Assault 2, Strength 5, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. Photon Grenades are 12 inch range, Heavy D6. This weapon does not inflict any damage. Your opponent must subtract 1 from any hit rolls made for infantry units that have suffered any hits from Photon Grenades until the end of the turn. Plasma Rifles, 24 inch range, Rapid Fire 1, Strength 6, AP negative 3, and 1 damage. A Pulse Blast Cannon uh, has three profiles. When attacking with it, choose one of the profiles below. Close Range is a 10 inch range, heavy 2, strength 14, AP negative 4, and 6 damage. Medium Range is 20 inch range, heavy 4, strength 12, AP negative 2, and 3 damage. And Long Range is 30 inch range, heavy 6, strength 10, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Pulse Blaster also has three, pro three profiles. When attacking with it, choose one of the profiles below. Close range is a 5 inch range, assault 2, strength 6, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. Medium range is a 10 inch range, assault 2, strength 5, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. Long range is a 15 inch range, assault 2, strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. And a pulse bomb, we will find out later. A pulse carbine is an 18 inch range, assault 2, strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A pulse driver cannon is a 72 inch range, heavy D3, strength 10, AP negative 3, and D6 damage. When attacking a unit with 10 or more models, this weapon's type changes to heavy D6. 
A pulse pistol is a 12 inch range pistol 1, strength 5, AP nothing and 1 damage. A pulse rifle is a 30 inch range rapid fire 1, strength 5, AP nothing and 1 damage. A quad iron turret, uh, when attacking with this weapon, choose one of the profiles below, add one to hit rolls for this weapon against target units that can fly, or sorry, that can't fly. A standard profile is a 30 inch range, heavy 4, strength 7, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. Overcharge is a 30 inch range, heavy D6, strength 8, AP negative 1 and D3 damage. If you make one or more hit rolls of one, the bear suffers a mortal wound after all his weapon's shots have been fired. A rail rifle is a 30 inch range, rapid fire one, strength six, AP negative four, and D3 damage. For each wound roll of six for this weapon, target suffers a mortal wound in addition to other damage. A rail gun, when attacking this weapon, choose one of the profiles below. A solid shot is a 72 inch range, heavy one, strength 10, AP negative four, and D6 damage. Each time you make a wound roll of six for this weapon, the target unit suffers D3 mortal wounds in addition to the normal damage. A, and sub ammunition is 72 inch range, heavy D6, strength 6, AP negative 1, uh, and 1 damage. A seeker missile is a 72 inch range, heavy 1. A unit hit by this weapon suffers a mortal wound. Each seeker, seeker missile can only be used once for battle. This weapon only hits on a roll of 6, regardless of the firing model's bliss skill or any modifiers. A smart missile system is 30 inch range, heavy 4, strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Smart missile systems can target units that are not visible to the bearer. In addition, units attacked by this weapon do not gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. A Supremacy Railgun is a 72 inch range, heavy 2, strength 10, AP negative 4, and D6 damage. Each time you make a wound roll of 6 plus for this weapon, target unit suffers D3 mortal wounds in addition to the normal damage. For the Tau Empire melee weapons details, a Dawn Blade is strength user, AP negative 4, and D3 damage. Equalizers are a strength user, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. Model armed with equalizers increases its attack characteristic by 1. An Honor Blade is strength plus 2, AP nothing and 1 damage. A Crute Rifle and Melee is strength plus 1, AP nothing and 1 damage. Krutox Fists are strength user, AP nothing and 2 damage. Ripping Fangs are strength user, AP negative 1 and, two and 1 damage. A Ritual Blade is Strength User, AP nothing and 1 damage. If any enemy models are destroyed by this weapon, friendly Kroot units within 6 inches of the bearer do not have to take a morale test until uh, tests at the end of the turn. For Support Systems, we have Advanced Targeting System. Its effect is a model equipped with an Advanced Targeting System increases the AP characteristic of all its weapons by 1. So a AP nothing becomes an AP negative 1. A counterfire defense system, a model equipped with a counterfire defense system, rerolls failed hit rolls when firing Overwatch. A drone controller, friendly uh, Sept, Sept is kind of like Chapter or uh, Chaos God, that kind of thing. Uh, drone within six inches of this model, equipped with a drone commander, sorry, a drone controller, uh, add one to any hit rolls. Early warning override, if an enemy unit is set up within 12 inches of a model equipped with an early warning override as a result of any ability that allows them to arrive mid-battle, i.e. teleporting to the battlefield, this model may immediately shoot at that unit as if it were shooting as if it were your shooting phase. So something to uh, deter your opponents from coming in near you. A multi-tracker, a model equipped with a multi-tracker, can reroll hit rolls of one if it is firing all of its weapons at the same target. A shield generator, a model with a shield generator has a 4-up invuln save, you cannot take the support system on a riptide battlesuit. A stimulant injector, roll a dice each time a model with a stimulant injector suffers a wound or a mortal wound on a roll of 6, ignore it. Uh, target lock, a model with a target lock does uh, target lock does not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons or for advancing and firing assault weapons. The model can also advance and fire rapid fire weapons, but must subtract one from the hit rolls when doing so. Velocity tracker, add one to hit rolls for the unit when it shoots a unit that can fly. All right, so I think, yeah, that was all the details for our Tau units. So now we are on to our Tyranid point values. As a um, Necron player, whenever I played against Tau, or not Tau, uh, Tyranids in kind of a competitive uh, area, I always had trouble against them. Uh, I always liked them because they remind me of StarCraft. I know they came first, don't get me wrong. Uh, but they always remind me of the Zerg from StarCraft, and they were one of my favorites, so I, I like Tyranids. But I've never played them. Again, just my, I'm, uh, Necrons are, and Chaos are kind of my style, personally. Uh, so Tyranids point values. So the following models do not include the cost of war gear, and the cost I list is per model that you take without the cost of any other war gear. So Biovores, in unit 1 to 3 are 24 points each. A Broodlord is 162 points. Carnifex is in unit 1 to 3 are 67 points each. An Exocrine is 150 points. Gargoyles, in unit of 10 to 30, are 6 points each. 
Gene Stealers, a unit of 5 to 20, are 10 points each. A Harpy is 78 points. A Haraspex is 267 points. A Hive Crone is 92 points. Hive Guarded, a unit of 1 to 3, are 18 points each. A Hive Tyrant is 143 points. Hive Tyrant with Wings is 170 points. Hormigons, a unit of 10 to 30, are 5 points each. A Lictor is 41 points. Malceptor is 162 points. A Moloch is 104 points. Mucolid Spores, a unit of 1 to 3, are 20 points. Pyrovores, a unit of 1 to 3, are 23 points. Raveners, a unit of 3 to 9, are 23 points. Ripper Swarms, a unit of 3 to 9, are 11 points. Skylasher Swarms, a unit of 3 to 9, are 11 points. Spore Mines, a unit of 3 to 6, is 10 points each. Spore Assist is 79 points. A unit of 10 to 30 Termagons is 4 points each. A Turvagon is 217 points. A Toxicrine is 135 points. Trigon is 103 points. Trigon Prime is 128 points. And a Tyranid Prime is 100 points. Tyranid, Stru Tyranid Shrikes in a unit of 3 to 9 are 26 points each. Tyranid Warriors are 3 to 9 uh, in a unit and 20 points each. A Tyrannocyte is 98 points. A Tyrannofex is 174 points. Tyrant Guard are 35 points each in a unit of 1 to 3. 3 to 6 Venomthropes are 25 points each. And 3 to 6 Zoanthropes are 40 points each. Now again, none of those previous models included the cost of their warrior in their points cost. The following units, however, do. Um, so they will include the cost of all their war gear in their points cost, their basic war gear that their data sheet says they're equipped with. Um, so a Death Leaper is 90 points, Old One Eye is 140 points, the Red Terror is 75 points, and a Swarm Lord is 300 points. Now the cost of their ranged weapons uh, is as follows. Remember though, if you're equipping a unit with these or more than one model, the cost is points per weapon you equip. So if you're equipping a unit of 10 Hormagons with something, you have to times it by 10, right? Uh, so Acid Spray is 31 points, Barb Strangler is 15 points, Bioelectric Pulse is 11 points. Bioelectric Pulse with Containment Spines, uh, uh, yeah, Containment Spines is 21 points, Bioplasma is 9 points, Bioplasmic Cannon is 66 points, Choking Spores are 13 points, a Death Spitter is 8 points, Death Spitter with Slimer Maggots is 10 points, Devourer is 4 points, Devourer with Brain Leech Worms is 7 points, a Drool Cannon is 16 points, Flame Spurt is 15 points, Flesh Hooks are 2 points, a Flesh Borer is free. Flesh Borer Hive is 28 points. Grasping Tongue is 11 points. Heavy Venom Cannon is 30 points. Impaler Cannon is 30 points. Massive Toxic Lashes are 17 points. A Rupture Cannon is 46 points. A Shock Cannon is 21 points. A Spike Rifle is free. Spine Fists on a Ravener are 3 points. Spine Fists on a Termagant are free. Spine Maws are 2 points. Uh, Spore Mine Launcher is 12 points. Stinger Salvo is 11 points. Stranglethorn Cannon. Stranglethorn cannon is 38 points. Strangle Web is free. Tentaclids are 24 points. Toxic Lashes are 6 points. And a Venom Cannon is 9 points. Uh, now the cost of their melee weapons. Remember these are costs per model that you equip them on. An Acid Claw is 4 points. A Biostatic Rattle is 5 points. Blinding Venom is free. A Bone Mace is 2 points. Bone Swords are 4 points. Claws and Teeth are free. 24 points for Crushing Claws. Distendable Jaws are free. Grasping Talons are free. Lash Whip and Bone Sword is 2 points. Lash Whip and Monstrous Bone Sword is 25 points. Massive Crushing Claws are 25 points. Massive Scything Talons on Turvagon and Maliceptor are 22 points. Massive Scything Talons, two or more pairs on a Trigon and Trigon Prime are 60 points. Massive Toxic Lashes are free. Monstrous Bone Swords are 35 points. Monstrous Crushing Claws are 15 points. Monstrous Rending Claws are free. Monstrous Scything Talons on a Carnifex are 14 points. Monstrous Scything Talons on a Hive Tyrant are 31 points. Monstrous Scything Talons, two pairs on a Carnifex are 20 points. Monstrous Scything Talons, two pairs on a Hive Tyrant are 41 points. Powerful Limbs are 12 points. Prehensile Pincer Tail is 1 point. Ravenous Maw is free. Rending Claws are 2 points. Shoveling, yeah, shoveling Claws are free. Scything Talons are free. Scything Wings are 13 points. Thresher Scythe is 7 points. Toxic Lashes are free. Toxin Spike is 1 point, And a Wicked Spur is free. Uh, other war gear include Adrenal Glands on monsters are 5 points, Adrenal Glands on other units are 1 point, Toxin Sacks on a Hormagant are 2 points, Toxin Sacks on Hive Guard, Gargoyles, Molex, Termagant, Turvagon, and Tyrant Guard are 1 point, Toxin Sacks on a Trigon and Trigon Prime are 8 points, and Toxin Sacks on a Carnifex, Gene Stealers, Hive Tyrant, looks like Tyrant Guard, Tyranid, or sorry, Tyranid Warrior maybe, uh, Tyranid Shrike, and a Tyrant Guard, possibly. Uh, we already had that, our four points, sorry, just the guy's fingers in the way there a little bit. So let's get on to some of the details about the Tyranid Warrior. 
So Tyranin's Warrior, uh, there's uh, ranged weapons. Acid Spray is an 18 inch range, heavy D6, strength user, AP negative 1 and D3 damage. It automatically hits its target. Uh, Barb Strangler, 36 inch range, assault D6, strength 5, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. You can add 1 to hit rolls for this weapon when attacking a unit with 10 or more models. Bioelectric Pulse is 12 inch range, assault D6, strength 5, AP nothing and 1 damage. Bioelectric Pulse with Containment Spines is 12 inch range, assault 12, strength 5, AP nothing and 1 damage. Bioplasma is a 12 inch range, assault D3, strength 7, AP negative 3 and 1 damage. Bioplasmic Cannon is 36 inch range, heavy 6, strength 7, AP negative 3 and 2 damage. Choking Spores are 12 inch range, assault D6, strength 3, AP nothing and D3 damage. You can reroll failed wound rolls to this weapon. In addition, units attacked by this weapon do not gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. A Death Spitter is 18 inch range, assault 3, strength 5, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. Death Spitter with Slimer Baggots is 18 inch range, assault 3, strength 7, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. A Devourer is 18 inch range, assault 3, strength 4, AP nothing, 1 damage. Devourer with Brain Leech Worms is 18 inch range, assault 3, strength 6, AP nothing, 1 damage. Drool Cannon is 8 inch range, assault D6, strength 6, AP negative 1 and 1 damage, automatically hits its target. A Flame Spurt is 10 inch range, assault D6, strength 5, AP negative 1 and 1 damage, and it automatically hits its target. Flesh Hooks are 6 inch range, assault 2, strength user, AP nothing, and 1 damage. It can be fired within 1 inch of an enemy unit, and can target enemy units within 1 inch of friendly units. Flesh Bore is a 12 inch range, assault 1, strength 4, AP nothing, 1 damage. Flesh Bore Hives, 18 inch range, heavy 20, strength 5, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Grasping Tongue is 12 inch range, assault 1, strength 6, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. This weapon can be fired within 1 inch enemy unit, and can target enemy units within 1 inch friendly units. In addition, when a model is slain by this weapon, the bear gains, regains one lost wound. Heavy Venom Cannon is 36 inch range, Assault D3, Strength 9, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. An Impaler Cannon is 36 inch range, Heavy 2, Strength 8, AP negative 2, and D3 damage. This weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. In addition, units attacked by this weapon do not gain any bonus to the saving throws for being in cover. Massive Toxic Lashes in shooting are at 8 inch range, Assault D6, Strength User, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. This weapon can be fired within 1 inch of an enemy unit, and can target enemy units within 1 inch friendly units. You can reroll all failed wound rolls when attacking with this weapon. A Rupture Cannon is a 48 inch range, heavy 2, strength 10, AP negative 1, and 2 damage. If both of this weapon's shots hit, the AP of the attacks is negative 4, and the damage is D6. A Shock Cannon is 24 inch range, assault D3, strength 7, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. If the target is a vehicle, and you make a wound roll of 4 plus, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any other damage. If you make a wound roll of 6+, plus, inflict D3 mortal wounds instead. A Spike Rifle is 18 inch range, Assault 1, Strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Spine Fists are a 12 inch range, Pistol, Star, uh, Strength 3, yep, Strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. When a model fires this weapon, it makes a number of shots equal to its attacks characteristic. Uh, spine Maws are 6 inch range, Pistol 4, Strength 2, AP nothing, 1 damage. Spore Mine Launcher is 40 inch range, Heavy 1, and we'll see more details later on. A Stinger Salvo is 18 inch range, Assault 4, Strength 5, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. A Strangthor ca Strangle Thorn Cannon is 36 inch range, Assault D6, Strength 7, AP negative 1, and 2 damage. You can add 1 to hit rolls to this weapon when attacking a unit with 10 or more models. Strangle Web is 8 inch range, Assault D3, Strength 2, uh, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Tentaclid. Uh, or tentaclids are 36 inch range, assault 2, strength 5, AP nothing and 1 damage. You may reroll failed hit rolls for this weapon against units that can fly. In addition, if the target is a vehicle, you can make a wound roll and you make a wound roll of 4 plus, it suffers one mortal wound in addition to any other damage. If you make a wound roll of 6 plus, inflict D3 mortal wounds instead. Toxic lashes and shooting are 6 inch range, assault 2, strength user, AP nothing and 1 damage. This weapon can be fired within 1 inch of an enemy unit, and can target enemy units within 1 inch of friendly units. In addition, you can reroll failed wound rolls when attacking with this weapon. A Venom Cannon, 36 inch range, Salt D3, Strength 8, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. The Tyranid Melee Weapons in Acid Maw is Strength 5, AP negative 3, and 1 damage. Uh, Bone Biostatic Rattle sorry, is Strength User, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. If a unit suffers any unsaved wounds from this weapon, add one to any morale tests uh, they take at the end of the turn. Blinding Venom, Venom is strength 3, AP nothing, 1 damage. If a unit suffers any unsaved wounds from this weapon, uh, your opponent must subtract 1 from hit rolls for that unit until the end of turn. 
A bone mace is strength 8, AP negative 1, and D3 damage. Each time the bearer fights, a one and only one of its attacks must be made with this weapon. Bone sabers are strength user, AP negative 3, and D6 damage. Bone swords are strength user, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. A model armed with bone swords can make one additional attack with them in the fight phase. Claws and teeth are strength user, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Crushing claws are strength times 2, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. When attacking with this weapon, you must direct one from the hit roll. Uh, distensible jaws are strength user, AP nothing, and D6 damage. Each time the bearer fights, one and only one of its attacks must be made with this weapon. Grasping talons are strength user, AP negative 1, and 2 damage. Lash whip and bone sword are strength user, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. Lash whip and monstrous bone sword are strength user, AP negative 2, and 3 damage. Of both of those lash whip combos, if the bearer is slain in the fight phase before it has made its attacks, leave it where it is. When this unit is chosen to fight in that fight phase, the bearer can do so as normal before being removed from the battlefield. Monstrous Bone Swords are strength user AP negative 2 and 3 damage. A model with Monstrous Bone Swords can make one additional attack with them in the fight phase. Massive Crushing Claws are strength times 2 AP negative 3 and D6 damage. And Monstrous Crushing Claws are strength times 2 AP negative 3 and 3 damage. When attacking with these weapons, you must subtract one from the hit roll. Monstrous Rending Claws are strength user AP negative 3 and D3 damage. You can reroll failed wound rolls when attacking with this weapon. In addition, each time you make a wound roll of 6+, plus, the hit is resolved with an AP of negative 6 and damage of 3. Massive Scything Talons are strength user AP negative 3 and D6 damage, and Monstrous Scything Talons are strength user AP negative 3 and 3 damage. You can reroll hit rolls of 1 when attacking with this weapon. If the bearer has more than one pair of Monstrous or Massive Scything Talons, it can make one additional attack with this weapon each time it fights. Massive Toxic Lashes in melee are strength user AP negative 3 and D3 damage. You can reroll failed uh, wound rolls when attacking with this weapon. A model armed with this weapon always fights first in the fight phase, even if it didn't charge. If the enemy has units that have charged or have the, a similar ability, then alternate choosing who to fight with, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. Powerful Limbs are strength user AP negative 2 and 2 damage. Prehensile Pincer Tail is strength user AP nothing D3 damage. Each time the bearer fights, one and only one of its attacks must be made with this weapon. A Ravenous Maw is strength user AP negative 1 and D3 damage. Make D3 hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of 1. Re uh, Rending Claws are strength user AP negative 1 and 1 damage. Each time you make a wound roll of 6 with this weapon, that hit is resolved with an AP of negative 4. Shoveling Claws are strength times 2, AP negative 3 and D6 damage. Scything Talons are strength user AP nothing and 1 damage. You can reroll hit rolls of 1 when attacking with this weapon. If the bearer has more than one pair of Scything Talons, it can make one additional attack with this weapon each time it fights. Scything Wings are strength user AP negative 2 and D3 damage. You can reroll hit rolls of 1 when attacking with this weapon. A Thresher Scythe is strength 4, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. Make D3 hit rolls for each attack uh, made with this weapon instead of 1. Toxic Lashes in melee are strength user AP nothing and 1 damage. You can reroll failed wound rolls when attacking with this weapon. A model armed with this weapon always fights first in the fight subphase, even if it didn't charge. If the enemy has unit has charged uh, or has a similar ability, then alternate uh, choosing units to fight, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. A toxin spike is strength 1, AP nothing, and D3 damage. Each time the bearer fights, one and only one of its attacks may be made with this weapon. The weapon always wounds targets other than vehicles on a 2+. Wicked Spur is strength 8, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. Each time the bearer fights, one and only one of its attacks may be made with this weapon. Other war gear includes the Adrenal Glands. Uh, if a unit has Adrenal Glands, add 1 inch to the distance it can move when it advances or charges. Toxin Sacks, any wound rolls of a 6 plus in the fight phase for a model with uh, Toxin Sacks, cause 1 additional damage. And last but not least for our uh, points values and descriptions, are Gene Steeler Cults. Uh, so for Gene Steeler Cults, none of the models that are listed uh, include War Gear. Uh, I don't know if this is because they have no like, named characters. I'm guessing that's probably why. But uh, and so none of the models about to be listed include the cost of their War Gear. Uh, and don't forget to multiply the models per unit by the cost per model, of course. So Aberrants in a unit of 4 to 8 are 17 points each. Acolyte Hybrids in a unit of 5 to 20 are 11 points each. Acolyte Icon Ward is 53 points. 1 to 3 Cult Armored Sentinels are 40 points each. A Cult Chimera is 75 points. A Cult Lehman Russ is 132 points. Cult Scout Sentinels in unit 1 to 3 are 35 points. Familiars not taken on their own are 12 points each. 
and Goliath Rock Grinder is 94 points. Goliath Truck is 66 points. Hybrid Metamorphs are in a unit of 5 to 10 or 13 points. A Magus is 73 points. Neophyte Hybrids in a unit of 10 to 20 are 5 points each. A Patriarch is 150 points. A Primus is 71 points. Pure Strain Gene Stealers in a unit of 5 to 20 are 18 points each. Uh, also, guys, remember, if you want to see the details of this war gear and these units, uh, they will be timestamped in the description below if you want to see the actual data cards for everybody. Other melee weapons, remember these are points per weapon, so if you're equipping an entire unit, and multiply these points by the number of units you're uh, upgrading them with. A bone sword is 5 points, chain sword is free, cultist knife is free, a drill dozer blade is free, a force stave is free, heavy rock cutter is 23 points, a heavy rock drill is 30 points, heavy rock saw is 24 points, lash whip and bone sword is 7 points, metamorph claw is 6 points, metamorph talon is 5 points, metamorph whip is 2 points, monstrous running claws are free. Power Hammer is 24 points. Power Mall is 13 points. Power Pack is 16. Power Pick, sorry, is 16 points. Pure Strain Talons are 3 points. Rending Claws are free. Sentinel Chainsaw is 2 points. And Toxin Injector Claw is free. As far as the ranged weapons goes, same thing for melee weapons. Multiply it by how many units are taking it. An Auto Cannon is 15 points. Auto Gun is free. Auto Pistol is free. Battle Cannon is 22 points. A blasting Charge is free. Bolt Pistol is 1 point. Cache of Demolition Charges is 12 points. Clearance Incinerator is 22 points. Demolition Charges are 10 points. Eradicator Nova Cannon is 46 points. Exterminator Auto Cannon is 25 points. Flamer is 7 points. Grenade Launcher is 5 points. Hand Flamer is 8 points. Heavy Bolter is 8 points. Heavy Flamer is 19 points. Heavy Mining Laser is 25 points. Heavy Seismic Cannon is 25 points. And the Heavy Stubber is 8 points. Uh, Hunter Killer Missile is 9 points. Last Cannon is 20 points. Last gun is free, last gun array is free, and last pistol is free. Mining laser is 14 points, missile launcher is 20 points, a mortar is 5 points, multi laser is 10 points, a multi melter, multi melta is 20 points, a needle pistol is free, plasma cannon is 15 points, seismic cannon is 17 points, shotgun is free, storm bolter is 6 points, twin auto cannon is 33 points, a vanquisher battle cannon is 25 points, and a web pistol is 3 points, a weber is 5 points. Now, as far as the details for some of their warrior goes, uh, the Gene Stealer Cult's ranged weapons are as follows. A auto cannon is 48 inch range, heavy 2, strength 7, AP negative 1, and 2 damage. An auto gun is 24 inch range, rapid fire 1, strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Auto pistol is 12 inch range, is pistol 1, strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A battle cannon is 72 inch range, heavy D6, strength 8, AP negative 2, and D3 damage. A blasting charge is 6 inch range, grenade D6, Strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Bolt Pistol is 12 inch range, Pistol 1, Strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Cache of Demolition Charges is a 6 inch range, Assault D6, Strength 8, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. This weapon can only be fired if a unit embarked upon the vehicle equipped with it. A Clearance Incinerator is 12 inch range, Assault D6, Strength 5, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. This weapon automatically hits its target. Demolition Charges are 6 inch range, Assault D6, Strength 8, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. The bearer can only use this weapon once per battle. Incinerate, a, sorry, an Eradicator Nova Cannon, 36 inch range, heavy D6, strength 6, AP negative 2, and D3 damage. Units in cover do not receive any bonus to their saving throws but from wounds caused by this weapon. An Exterminator Auto Cannon is 48 inch range, heavy 4, strength 7, AP negative 1, and 2 damage. A Flamer is strength 8, Assault D6, strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage, so weapon automatically hits its targets. Grenade Launcher has two possible, possible profiles to choose from. Frag Grenade is 24 inch range, Salt D6, Strength 3, AP nothing and 1 damage. A Crack Grenade is 24 inch range, Salt 1, Strength 6, AP negative 1 and D3 damage. Hand Flamer is 6 inch range, Pistol D3, Strength 3, AP nothing and 1 damage, and it automatically hits its target. Heavy Bolter is 36 inch range, Heavy 3, Strength 5, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. Heavy Flamer is 8 inch range, Heavy D6, Strength 5, AP negative 1 and 1 damage, so weapon automatically hits its target. Heavy Mining Lasers, 36 inch range, Heavy 1, Strength 9, AP negative 3, and D6 damage. A Heavy Seismic Cannon, when attacking this weapon, choose one of the profiles below. All wound rolls of 6 plus have an AP of negative 4. Long Wave is a 24 inch range, Heavy 4, Strength 4, AP negative 1, and 2 damage. Short Wave is 12 inch range, Heavy 2, Strength 8, AP negative 2, and 3 damage. A Heavy Stubber is 36 inch range, Heavy 3, Strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Hunter Killer Missile is 48 inch range. Heavy 1, Strength 8, AP negative 2, and D6 damage. Each Hunter Killer Missile can only be used once per battle. A Laz Cannon is a 48 inch range, Heavy 1, Strength 9, AP negative 3, and D6 damage. A Laz Gun is 24 inch range, Rapid Fire 1, Strength 3, AP nothing and 1 damage. 
a Laz Gun Raise, 24 inch range, Rapid Fire 3, three uh, Strength 3, AP nothing, uh, 1 damage, and this weapon can only be fired if a unit is embarked upon the vehicle equipped with it. Uh, Laz Pistols, 12 inch range, Pistol 1, Strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Mining Lasers, 24 inch range, Heavy 1, Strength 9, AP negative 3, and D3 damage. A Missile Launcher, has two possible profiles uh, to choose from. A Frag Missiles, 48 inch range, Heavy D6, Strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Crack Missiles, a 48 inch range, Heavy 1, Strength 8, AP negative 2, and D6 damage. A Mortars, 48 inch range, Heavy D6, Strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Mortars can target units that are not visible to the firing model. Multi-lasers, 36 inch range, heavy 3, strength 6, AP nothing and 1 damage. A multi-melta is a 24 inch range, heavy 1, strength 8, AP negative 4 and D6 damage. If the targeting unit is within half range, roll 2 dice for damage and discard the lowest. A needle pistol is a 12 inch range, pistol 1, strength 1, AP nothing and 1 damage. So it can always wounds targets other than vehicles on a roll of 2+. plus. A plasma cannon has two possible profiles you can choose from. Standard is 36 inch range, heavy D3, strength 7, AP negative 3, and 1 damage. Supercharged is 36 inch range, heavy D3, strength 8, AP negative 3, and 2 damage, but on a hit roll of 1, the bearer is slain after all those shots have been resolved. A seismic cannon, when attacking this weapon, choose one of the profiles below, and all wounds of 6 plus have an AP of negative 4. Has long wave, 24 inch range, heavy 4, strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage, or short wave, 12 inch range, heavy 2, strength 6, AP and negative 1, and 2 damage. A shotgun has 12 inch range, salt 2, strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. If the targets within half range add 1 to this weapon's strength. A storm bolter is 24 inch range, rapid fire 2, strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. So let's finish off our range weapons on the next page. Uh, so a twin auto cannon, so the last of our range weapons, is a 48 inch range, heavy 4, strength 7, AP negative 1, and 2 damage. Vanquisher Battle Cannon is a 72 inch range, heavy 1, strength 9, AP negative 3, and D6 damage. Roll 2 dice when inflict damage on this weapon and discard the lowest. A Web Pistol is 12 inch range, pistol D3, strength 3, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Weber is a 18, uh, 16 inch range, assault D3, strength 4, AP nothing, and 1 damage. For both web weapons, when making a shooting attack with a web weapon, you can use either the strength or the toughness characteristic of the target to determine the wound roll, whichever is lowest. Uh, for the Gene Stealer Cult melee weapons, some of these may be familiar. Kind of a that's kind of a cool thing with Gene Stealers. Uh, they're kind of a cross between Tyranids, uh, Astra Militarum, and just their own thing. Because that's what Gene Stealers are. Uh, Bone Sword is Strength User AP negative two and one damage. A Chain Sword is Strength User AP nothing and one damage. But each time a bearer fights, it can make one additional attack with this weapon. A Cultist Knife is Strength User AP nothing and one damage. Each time a bearer fights, it can make one additional attack with this weapon. A Drill Dozer Blade is Strength plus three AP negative two and D3 damage. Model equipped with a Drill Dozer Blade can make D3 additional attacks on a turn in which it charged. A Force Stave is Strength plus two AP negative one and D3 damage. A heavy rock cutter is strength times 2, AP negative 4, and 2 damage. Roll a d6 each time a model, other than vehicle, suffers damage from the weapon. If you roll higher than the model's remaining number of wounds, it is instantly slain. A heavy rock drill is strength times 2, AP negative 3, and 1 damage. Roll a d6 each time a model suffers damage from this weapon. On a 2+, plus, the model suffers a mortal wound, and you can roll another d6. This time, the model suffers a mortal wound on a 3+. Plus. Keep rolling a d6, increasing the score required to cause a mortal wound by 1 each time until the model is slain or the roll has failed. That seems really good. Um, a heavy rock saw is strength times 2, AP negative 4, and 2 damage. Lash whip and bone sword is strength user, AP negative 2, and 1 damage. If the bearer is slain in the fight phase, uh, before it has made its attacks, leave it where it is. When it's chosen to fight in the phase, the bear can do so as normal before removing it from the battlefield. A Metamorph Claw is strength plus 2, AP nothing, and 1 damage. A Metamorph Talon is strength user, AP nothing, and 1 damage. Add 1 to all hit rolls for this weapon. Metamorph Whip is strength user, AP nothing, and 1 damage. If the bear is slain in the fight phase before it's made its attacks, leave it where it is. When the unit is chosen to fight in the phase, uh, the bear can do so as normal before being removed from the battlefield. A Monstrous Rending Claws, or Strength User, AP negative 3 and D3 damage. You may reroll failed wound rolls for this weapon. In addition, each time you make a wound roll of 6+, plus, this weapon, uh, with this weapon, that hit is resolved with an AP of negative 6 and a damage of 3. A Power Hammer, Strength times 2, AP negative 3 and 3 damage. When attacking this weapon, you must subtract 1 from the hit roll. A Power Maul, Strength plus 2, AP negative 1 and 1 damage. A Power Pick is Strength User, AP negative 2 and D3 damage. 
Pure Strain Talons are Strength User, AP nothing, and 1 damage. When attacking with this weapon, you can reroll hit rolls of 1. Rending Claws are Strength User, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. Each time you make a wound roll of 6 plus, uh, that hit is resolved with an AP of negative 4. A Sentinel Chainsaw is Strength User, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. And finally, a Toxin Injector Claw is Strength User, AP negative 1, and 1 damage. With this weapon allows wounds, sorry, always wounds targets other than vehicles on a roll of 2 plus. Furthermore, each time you make a wound roll of 6 plus with this weapon, then it is resolved with an AP of negative 4. So that's the end of our War Gear descriptions. Now we're going to head back to the top of the book, very first page, to go over our actual unit data cards. Oop, back to the top of the page. Take a look at the actual unit data cards and army lists, starting with the orcs. Right, so let's take a look at our orcs. Uh, now the orcs have a clan keyword that's similar to the Space Marine Chapter or um, Homunculus Covens, things like that, uh, where their bracket can be they can, for in the writings here they have an example of they can be a part of the evil sons. Uh, some of the characters will belong to certain clans and anything with the keyword clan you can make belong to any clan. And the other abilities they have are Here We Go. A unit with this ability can reroll failed charge rolls and Mob Rule. Mob Rule is really good when you think about it. A unit with this ability can use a number of models in their unit as their leadership characteristic. In addition, a unit with this ability can use the leadership characteristic of any friendly orc unit within six inches. So you can bring a unit of 30 boys, and your leadership is 30. That seems good. Uh, power of the Wah, Discipline. Again, you can pick powers or real, roll d3 for your psychers. An Ed Banger uh, has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, roll a d6 and compare it to the toughness characteristic of the closest visible enemy model within 9 inches of the psyker. If the result is higher than the model's toughness, it is slain. Uh, Warpath has a charge value of 7. If manifested, select a friendly orc unit within 6 inches of Psyker. Increase the unit's attack characteristic by 1 until the uh, your next Psychic phase. The Jump has a warp charge value of 7. If manifested, select a friendly orc infantry unit within 6 inches of Psyker. Remove this unit from the battlefield, and then set it up anywhere on the battlefield more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. This unit counts as having moved for the purposes of any rules. Example, firing heavy weapons. Uh, some of their war gear. Uh, are as follows. So when it says pick from one of these tables, these are those tables. Uh, shooty weapons are shooter, custom shooter, combi weapon with rocket launcher, uh, combi weapon with scorcha. Sorry, rocket launcher. Don't want to mispronounce these orc weapons. A souped up weapon table includes combi weapon with rocket launcher, custom mega blaster, rocket launcher, combi weapon with scorcha, and custom mega slugger. Heavy weapons are big shooter and rocket launcher. Uh, choppy weapons are Big Chopper and Power Claw. So let's start checking out our uh, data cards. So a War Boss, your vanilla War Boss, can move 5 inches, hits weapon skill on 2s, bliss skill on 5s, strength 6, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 4 up save. Uh, a War Boss is a single model armed with a custom shooter, a Big, chop, big Chopper, and Stick Bombs. War Gear Options, this model may replace its custom shooter with one item from the shooty weapons or choppy weapons lists. This model may replace its big chop with one item from the choppy weapons list. This model may take an attack squig. It has Here We Go and Mob Rule. has WA, friendly orc infantry units within 6 inches of this model at the start of the charge phase, can charge even if they advance this turn. Break and Eds, if a clan unit fails a morale test within 3 inches of a friendly clan war boss, they can restore... Uh, order with a brutal display of violence. If they do, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, but the morale test is then cons uh, considered to have been passed. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Character, Infantry, and War Boss. War Boss and Mega Armor can move 4 inches, weapon skill hitting on 2s, both skill hitting on 5s, strength 6, toughness 5, and 7 wounds. 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 2 up save. War Boss and Mega Armors are single model armed with a custom shooter and power claw. Uh, small Mayor places custom shootout with one item from the shooty weapons or choppy weapons lists. Has Here We Go and Mob Rule, has WA and Breakin' Eds. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Character, Infantry, Mega Armor, and War Boss. War Boss on a War Bike can move 14 inches. Weapon skill hits on 2s, Bliss skill hits on 5s. Strength toughness 6, 7 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 4 up save. Is a single model armed with a big chop and stick bombs. The war Bike is equipped with two DACA guns. It can replace this big chop with one item from the choppy weapons list. Can it may take one item from the shooty weapons list, and it may take an attack squig. As here we go, mob rule, wa, and breaking heads. Faction keywords are orc and clan. Keywords are biker, character, and war boss. A weird boy can move five inches. 
Hits with weapon skill on 3s, bliss skill on 5s, strength 5, toughness 4, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. Abilities are Here We Go and Mob Rule, and has Wah Energy. Add 1 to any psychic rolls made for this model for every 10 friendly orc models within 10 inches. However, the total result of this of the test is 12 plus, this model immediately suffers Perils the Warp, exactly as if you had rolled a double 1 or a double 6. And so you'd, if you're too crowded around the, the weird boy, you could roll over 12, right? Uh, faction keywords are Orc and Clans, keywords are Character, Infantry, Psyker, and Weird Boy. I uh, Big Mech. Uh, so it's Big Mech, and they come with a Grot Oiler. The Big Mech can move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, Bliss skill hitting on 5, Strength 5, Toughness 4, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, Leadership 7, and a 4 up save. The Grot Oiler moves 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, Bliss skill hitting on 4s, Strength Toughness 2, 1 wound, 1 attack, Leadership 4, and a 6 up save. It's a single model armed with a Slugger, Chopper, and Stick Bombs, and may be accompanied by Grot Oiler. Uh, this model can replace the Slugger with one item from the souped up weapons or choppy weapons list, or either a custom force field or a shock attack gun. This model may replace its Chopper with one item from the souped up weapons or choppy weapons lists, or a kill saw. As Here We Go and Mob Rule, a custom force field. This model is equipped with a custom force field. Friendly orc units that are entirely within 9 inches have a 5 up invuln save against ranged weapons. Uh, if a Big Mech is embarked, the vehicle transporting it has a 5 up invuln save against ranged weapons instead. As a big mechanic, I believe, I can't quite make that out, but I believe that's what that says. Uh, at the end of your movement phase, this model can repair a single friendly clan vehicle, other than the model that can fly, within 3 inches. That model regains D3 wounds lost earlier in battle. A vehicle can only be repaired once each turn. The Grot Oiler, once per game, a Grot Oiler can assist its master in making repairs. When it does so, the vehicle the mech is repairing regains one additional wound. When rolling to wound, this unit always uses the mech's toughness while it is on the battlefield. The death of a Grot Oiler is ignored for the purposes of morale. The Grot Oiler is considered to have the character keyword for the purposes of shooting attacks. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keyword for the Big Mech are Character, Infantry, and Big Mech. Keywords for the Grot Oiler are Infantry, Gretchen, and Grot Oiler. Uh, Big Mech in Mega Armor. It moves 4 inches, has a, hits on 3s in weapon skill, 5s less skill, strength 5, toughness 4, 5 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, and 2 up save. The Grot Oiler has 5 inches movement, uh, hitting on 5s for bliss skill, f sorry, hitting on 5s for weapon skill, 4s for bliss skill, strength, toughness 2, 1 wound, 1 attack, 4 up leadership, and a 6 up save. It is a single uh, model armed with a custom Mega Blaster and Power Claw. It may be accompanied by Grot Oiler. As here we go, custom force field, big. Mechaniac, I think that's actually how it is, Mechaniac, has Grot Oiler. Uh, faction keywords are Orc and Clan, keywords are Big Mech, Character, uh, keywords for the Big Mech are Character, Infantry, Mega Armor, and Big Mech. Uh, keywords for the Grot Oiler are Infantry, Gretchen, and Grot Oiler. So with a Big Mech on a war bike, you can move 14 inches, uh, hits with weapon skills on 3s, bliss skill on 5s, strength 5, toughness 5. Five wounds, three attacks, leadership seven, and a four up save. He's a single model armed with a slugger, chopper, and stick bombs. War, guy, war bike is equipped with two daca guns. This model may take a slugger, uh, may replace its slugger with one item from the souped up weapons list or choppy weapons list, or either a custom force field or shock attack gun. It may replace its chopper with one item from the souped up weapons or choppy weapons list, or a kill saw. Has here we go, uh, custom force field, and big bike mechaniac. Uh, at the end of your movement phase, I sorry I can't quite make that out, guys. I apologize. Uh, faction keywords are orc and clan. Keywords are biker, character, and big mech. Gazgul Thraka. I'm gonna try to make this out uh, out this much as much as I can because this is a big guy for them. Uh, moves five inches. Weapon skill hitting on twos. Bliss skill on fives. Strength six. Toughness six. Uh, looks like eight wounds, five attacks, leadership eight, and eight two up save. Single model armed with a big shooter, custom claw, and stick bombs, and only one can be in your army. As here we go, mob rule, Great Wah. Uh, Great Wah is friendly orc infantry units within six inches of Gazgul Thraka. At the start of the charge phase, can charge even if they advance this turn. Furthermore, uh, friendly orc infantry models add one to their attacks characteristic if they charged this turn, and Gazgul Thraka is within six inches of their unit when they fight. A prophet of Gork and Mork, Gazul Thraka has a 4-up invuln save, and the boss is watching. If a friendly orc unit fails a morale test and they are within 6 inches of Gazul Thraka, he can restore order of the brutal display of violence. If he does, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, but the morale test is considered to have been passed. Factions are orc, faction keywords are orc and goth. 
Keywords are character, infantry, mega armor, war boss, and Gazgul Thraka. Captain Badruck uh, can move 5 inches, hits on 2s in weapon skill, force bliss skill, strength 5, toughness 4, 6 wounds, leadership 4, eight leadership, uh, four attacks, leadership 8, and a 3-up save. An ammo runt that he comes with can move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill hitting on 4s, strength toughness 2, 1 wound, 1 attack, 4 leadership, and a 6-up save. He's a single model armed with a slugger and chopper, stick bombs, and a ripper. He may be accompanied by up to 3 ammo runts, and you can only have 1 in your army. Has Erigo and Mob Rule, an ammo runt. Each time Captain Badruck shoots, when making his hit rolls, uh, you can re-roll one dice for each ammo runt accompanying him. When rolling to wound this unit, use Badruck's toughness uh, while he is on the battlefield. Then the ammo runt is ignored for the purposes of morale. The ammo runt is considered to have a character uh, for the purposes of shooting attacks. He has flash flashiest gets. You can reroll... So I'm just trying to really try to make this out, guys. It's a really blurry picture here. Uh, flashiest gets. You can reroll rolls of one in the shooting phase for friendly units of flash gets within six inches of him. And gold tooth armor. Uh, he has a four up... four up or five up invuln save. Uh, boss zag struck. He move 12 inches. Hits on two's weapon skill, five less skill. Strength six, toughness four, six wounds... See, it looks like eight attacks, but it seems like too much, but... Uh, leadership seven and a four-up save. Single model armed with the Witch's Claw, a Slugger, a Choppa, and Stick Bomb, so you can only take one per army. Has Here We Go, Mob Rule, Full Throttle. He can advance and charge in the same turn, but if he does, roll a d6 after any Overwatch has been resolved on a roll of a one. He suffers a mortal wound. Has a Cyborg Body. Each time this model loses a wound, roll a d6 on a five or six. The wound is not lost. You cannot make a... Docks tools or biker docks tools roll for this model if you do so. As is a drill boss, friendly units of orc storm boys within six inches of him automatically pass morale tests. So hopefully this is the worst picture of the bunch. Uh, faction keywords are orc and goth. Keywords are character, infantry, storm boy, jump pack, fly, and boss zag struck. There we go, much better. Uh, boss snickrot can move six inches. Weapon skill hitting on twos, bliss skill hitting on fives. Strength 6, toughness 4, 6 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 7, and a 6-up save. Boss Snickrod is a single model armed with Mork's teeth and stick bombs, and only one can be taken in your army. As here we go in Mob Rule, as the sneakiest get, when he is in cover, add 3 instead of 1 to the saving throws. Uh, Cunning Infiltrator, during deployment you can set up Boss Snickrod in hiding instead of placing him on the battlefield. At the end of any movement phases, he can, uh, he can stalk from his hiding place. Set him up anywhere on the battlefield is more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. Red Skull Commandos. You can reroll hit rolls of one in the fight phase for units of Blood Axe Commandos within six inches of him. As a terrifying killer, enemy units taking a morale test within six inches add one to the result. Faction keywords are Orc and Blood Axe. Keywords are Character, Infantry, Commando, and Boss Snickrot. A Mech is a single model armed with a Slugger, Choppa, Stick Bombs, and it can be accompanied by Grot Euler. The Mech can move five inches, weapon skill hitting on threes, Bliss skill hitting on fives. Strength and toughness four, three wounds, two attacks, leadership six, and a six up save. Grot Euler moves five inches, weapon skill hitting on fives, Bliss skill hitting on fours. Strength and toughness two, one wound, one attack, leadership four, and a six up save. This model can replace its chopper with a kill saw, and can replace its slugger with one item from the souped up weapons list. Has here we go on mob rule, has Mechaniac, I, yeah, that. He can fix vehicles, uh, and Grot Euler. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords for the mech are Character, Infantry, and Mech. Keywords for the Grot Euler are Infantry, Gretchen, and Grot Euler. A Pain Boy can move 5 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, Bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength 5, Toughness 4, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, Leadership 6, and a 6 up save. A Grot Orderly can move 5 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 5s, Bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength 2, Toughness 2, 1 wound, 1 attack, Leadership 4, and a 6 up save. His single, single model, armed with an Erdy syringe and a power claw. It can be accompanied by a Grot Euler. Has Here We Go on Mob Rule. Uh, Grot Orderly. If this model is accompanied by a Grot Orderly once per game, when the Pain Boy is attempting to heal a model using the Doc's tools, you may reroll the dice, either when determining uh, if the surgery is successful or when calculating the number of wounds regained. Uh, has Doc's tools. Roll a d6 each time a clan infantry or clan biker unit loses a wound while within three inches of any friendly clan Pain Boy. On a roll of 6, that unit does not lose that wound. In addition, at the end of your movement phase, a pain boy can attempt to heal a single clan infantry or clan biker model within 1 inch. Roll a d6. On a 1, the model you are attempting to heal loses a wound, but on any other result, that model gains d3 wounds. 
lost earlier in the battle. You can make you can only make one attempt to heal a given model with the Doc's Tools or Biker Doc's Tools ability in each turn. The action keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are pain for the Pain Boy are Character, Infantry, and Pain Boy. Keywords for the Grot Orderly are Infantry, Gretchen, and Grot Orderly. A Pain Boy on a Warbike can move 14 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, Bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength and toughness 5 with 5 wounds. 4 attacks, Leadership 6, and a 4 up save. He's a single model armed with an Erdy Syringe and a Power Claw, and it rides a Warbike equipped with 2 Daka Guns. It can replace this Power Claw with a Kill Saw. Has Erigo and Mob Rule. Biker Docks Tools. Roll a d6 each time a friendly clan infantry or clan biker unit loses a wound while within 3 inches of any clan pain boy on a 6 that unit does not lose that wound. In addition, at the end of your movement phase, you can attempt to uh, if it didn't move more than 5 inches, this model can attempt to heal a single clan infantry or clan biker model within 1 inch. Roll a d6. On a 1, the model you're attempting to heal loses a wound, but on any other roll, the model regains d3 wounds lost earlier in the battle. You can only make an attempt to heal a given model with the Doc's Tools or Biker Doc's Tools ability in once each turn. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Biker, Character, and Pain Boy. Mad Doc Grotznik can move 5 inches, as weapon skill hits on 2s, blitz skill hits on 5s. Strength and toughness 5, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 4 up save. He is a single model armed with a slugger, a power claw, and erdy syringe, and only one can be taken in your army. Has ear we go and mob rule, has a dox tools, has a super cyborg body. Each time this model loses a wound, roll a d6, on a 5 or 6, it's not lost. Has one scalpel short of a med pack. If at the start of charge phase there are no friendly orc infantry units within 3 inches of mad doc grotsnick, he will attempt to charge the nearest enemy unit. If there is one within 12 inches, he will do this even if he advanced or fell back this turn, but not if he is already within one inch of enemy unit. I just love the some of the names for the orc special rules. One scalpel short of a med pack. That's great. Uh, unit of boys. Good old boys. New order boys. Uh, so they can move five inches, the orc boy and the boss knob. They can move five inches, weapon skill hitting on threes, blitz skill hitting on fives. An orc boy has strength four, toughness four, one wound, two attacks, leadership six, and a six up save. A boss knob has strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 6 up save. This model contains 10 orc boys. You can include up to 10 or 20 additional. Each model is armed with a slugger, chopper, and stick bombs. A boss knob may take the place of one orc boy. Warrior options. Any orc boy may replace his chopper with slugger with a shooter. The boss knob may replace his chopper with one item from the choppy weapons list. The boss knob may replace his slugger with one item from the shooty weapons list. For every 10 models in the unit, one orc boy may replace his chopper and slugger with one item from the heavy weapons list. They have Here We Go and Mob Rule and Green Tide. If this unit includes 20 or more models, add one to the attacks characteristic of each model in the unit. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Infantry and Boys. So I just want to point out one thing. For um, 15 power points, I can bring 30 boys, and they pretty much aren't going to fail leadership, basically. Uh, because their leadership, unless they lose 15 in a turn, they can't really fail leadership, or they can, but it's really hard to do. Um, and they're just going to be resistant getting across the field and getting in with a bunch of attacks. I just, green tide, please, I just, I've never played orcs, but I just really like orcs, and I want them to be to be competitive again. I want to see orcs on tables again. Uh, Gretchen can move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill hitting on 4s, strength toughness 2, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 4, and a 6 up save. You contains 10 Gretchen, it contain 10 or 20 additional. Each model is equipped with a Grot Blaster. They are surprisingly dangerous in large numbers. <laughs> if a unit of Gretchen includes 20 or more models, you can add 1 to their hit rolls. So that means weapon skill would on 4s and bliss skill on 3s. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Infantry and Gretchen. They run uh, They move 5 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength toughness 4, 4 wounds. 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 6 up save. Run is a single model armed with a slugger, grab a stick, and stick bombs. It may replace its grab a stick with a Grot Prod. This model may take either a Grot Lash or Squig Hound. It has Ear Ego and Mob Rule. Squig Hound. If a unit comprised entirely of Gretchen fails a morale test and is within 3 inches of any friendly Run Turds with a Squig Hound, ignore the result. D3 models from the unit are slain instead. Grot Leash. Uh, sorry, Grot Lash. If a unit com comprised entirely of Gretchen is within 3 inches of any Run Turds with a Grot Lash, you can reroll hit rolls of 1 for them in the fight phase. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Character, Infantry, and Run Turd. Burna Boys. These are going to be popular going forward with the new flamer rules, I think. Uh, so a Burna Boy moves 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill on 5s, strength toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. A Spanner is the exact same stat line. Uh, this unit contains 5 Burna Boys. It can include up to 5, 10, uh, 
five or up to ten additionals, total fifteen, up to three spanners can each take the place of a burner boy. Each burner boy is armed with a burner and stick bombs. Each spanner is armed with a slugger, chopper, and stick bombs. Any spanner may replace this chopper with a kill saw. Any spanner may replace this slugger with whatever one item from the souped up weapons list. They have Here We Go and Mob Rule, Me Mechaniac, uh, I'm butchering that and I apologize, and Pyromaniacs. Uh, if this unit destroys an enemy unit in the shooting phase, it automatically passes the morale tests until the start of your next turn. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan, keywords are Infantry and Burna Boys. Tank Busters. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So, regular Tank Buster can move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s. For strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. A boss knob, move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 6 up save. And a bomb squig can move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 2s, bliss skill hitting on 2s. Strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 4, and a 6 up save. This unit contains 5 tank busters. You can include up to 5 or 10 additional for every 5 tank busters or, or boss knobs in the unit. Uh, it may be accompanied by up to two bomb squigs. A boss knob can take the place of one tank buster. Each tank buster and boss knob is armed with a rocket launcher, stick bombs, and tank buster bombs. Each bomb squig carries a squig bomb. Or your options, the boss knob may replace his rocket launcher with one item from the choppy weapons list. Up to two tank busters may replace their rocket launcher with a tank hammer. Uh, for every five models in the unit, not counting bomb squigs, one tank buster may replace their rocket launcher with a pair of rocket pistols. They have Here We Go on Mob Rule and Tank Hunters. You can reroll failed hit rolls for attacks made by this unit that target vehicles. Bomb Squigs. The death of a bomb squig is ignored for the purposes of morale. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Infantry and Tank Busters. Uh, that are knobs. So one of your main leaders. Uh, a knob can move 5 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s. Bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. When I say leader, I kind of mean like elite infantry roll. A boss nub, boss knob, make me careful, moves 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 4 up save. An ammo runt can move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill on 4s. Strength 2, toughness 2, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 4, and a 6 up save. So you contains 1 boss knob and 4 knobs. It can include up to 5 additional knobs. Each knob and boss knob is armed with a slugger, chopper, and stick bombs. Any knob or boss knob may be, be, may be accompanied by an ammo runt. Any model may replace its slugger with one weapon from the shooty weapons list. Any model may replace its chopper with a kill saw, power stabber, or one item from the choppy weapons list. For every five models in the unit, excluding ammo runts, one may have a cyborg body. They have Irigo and Mob Rule, Keep in Order, and roll a d6 for each model that flees from a clan unit that is within three inches of any clan uh, unit that with this ability on a six that model doesn't uh, flee. So that's after you're rolling your morale test. Okay, I'm gonna have two flee. Oh wait, did it? Oh, only one flees. Cyborg body. Each time a model with a cyborg body it loses a wound, roll a d6. On a six, that wound is not lost. Uh, you cannot make a docks tools or biker tools roll for this model if you do so. An ammo runt. Each time this unit shoots, when making hit rolls, you can re-roll one dice for each ammo runt accompanying it. When rolling to wound this unit, use the knob's toughness while they are on the battlefield. The death of an ammo runt is ignored for the purposes of morale. The action keywords are orc and clan. Keywords for knobs are infantry and knobs. Keywords for the ammo runt are infantry, Gretchen, and ammo runt. Knob with wah banner. Uh, move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength 5, toughness 4, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. A knob with wah banner is a single model. It is armed with a wah banner, uh, a custom shooter, and stick bombs. Abilities has here we go in mob rule, a wah banner. You know, it's in 6 inches of any friendly wah banner. Add 1 to the to their hit rolls in the fight phase. They have keep in order. Faction keywords are orcs and clan. Keywords are character, inventory, and knob. Knobs on war bikes. They can move 14 inches, weapon skill hitting on threes, bliss skill hitting on fives, strength and toughness five, three wounds, three attacks, leadership six and a four up save. A boss knob on a war bike moves 14 inches, weapon skill hitting on threes, bliss skill hitting on fives, strength and toughness five, three wounds, three attacks, leadership seven, and a four up save. This unit contains one boss knob on a war bike and two knobs on war bikes. It can include up to three or up to six additional uh, knobs on war bikes. Each model is armed with a slugger, choppa, and stick bombs. Rider's war bike is equipped with two DACA guns. Any model may replace its slugger with one item from the shooty weapons list. Any model may replace its choppa with one item from the choppy weapons list. They have Here We Go, Mob Rule, and Keep in Order. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Biker and Knobs. Mega Knobs. 
can move four inches. Weapon skill hitting on threes, plus skill hitting on five, strength five, toughness four, three wounds, three attacks, leadership six, and a two-up save. And boss mega knob is the same stat line, but with leadership seven. This unit contains one boss mega knob and two mega knobs. It can contain up to seven additional mega knobs. Each model is armed with a custom shooter, a power claw, and stick bombs. Any model may replace its custom mega shooter with a power claw and two kill saws. Sorry, may replace its custom mega shooter and power claw with two kill saws. Any model may replace its custom shooter with combi weapons with Scorcha or combi weapon with rocket launcher. They have Irigo and Mod Rule and Keep in Order. The action keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Infantry, Mega Armor, Knobs, and Mega Knobs. Commandos. They move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, plus skill hitting on 5s. Strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. A boss knob for the commandos has 6 inch movement, weapon skill hitting on 3s, plus skill hitting on 5s. Strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 6 up save. So you contains 5 commandos, it can contain up to 5 or 10 additional commandos. A boss knob can take the place of 1 commando. All models are armed with a slugger, choppa, and stick bombs. Or your options, up to two commandos may replace their slugger with a big shooter, burner, or rocket launcher. The boss knob may replace his choppa with one item from the choppy weapons list. They have here we go and mob rule. They are sneaky gits. When they are in cover, add two instead of one to their saving throws for being in cover. They are cunning infiltrators. During deployment, you may set them up in hiding instead of placing them on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phase, they can stalk from their hiding place, set them up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Infantry and Commandos. I just want to share a quick little story. Uh, one of my favorite things I've ever seen with Commandos is a guy bought a Rhino model, uh, built it, or maybe he built it, I didn't see, but it looked like he built it and then cut it apart. He then took a unit of Commandos, attached the pieces of Rhino to the Commandos, so then all the Commandos were together, it looked like a Rhino, but painted on the Rhino in giant orky letters was Not Orcs. So when they were all standing together, it looked like a rhino with not orcs painted on it going across the battlefield because they were sneaky gits. That was just one of my favorite things uh, about commandos that I've ever seen. About orcs in general, really. About 40k in general, really. Uh, an orc truck starts at 12 wounds, sorry, 10 wounds, and from 6 to 10 wounds it moves 12 inches, strength, is strength 6 and has 3 attacks. From 3 to 5 wounds it moves 8 inches, is strength 5 and has d3 attacks. From 1 to 2 wounds remaining it moves 6 inches, is strength 4 and 1 attack. Weapon skill is 5 plus. Yeah, 5 plus. Bliss skill is 5 plus. Toughness 6, 10 wounds. Leadership 6, and a 4 up save. Is a single model equipped with a big shooter. This model can replace its big shooter with a rocket launcher, and it may take a wrecking ball. It is ramshackle. Roll a d6 each time this model suffers damage from an attack that has a damage characteristic of more than 1. On a roll of 6, replace the damage caused by attack to 1. Uh, open topped. Models embarked on this model can attack in their shooting phase. Uh, measure the range and draw line of sight from any point on this model. When they do so, restrictions or modifiers that apply to the model also apply to its passengers. For example, passengers cannot shoot if the model has fallen back in the same turn, cannot shoot except with pistols if this model is within one inch of enemy models, and so on. Explodes. If it explodes uh, with units within six inches, suffers d3 mortal wounds, is a transport, and can transport 12 orc infantry models each Mega Armor or Jump Pack model takes the space of two other models. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Vehicles, Transport, and Truck. Storm Boys. Can move 12 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s, strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. The Boss Knob can move 12 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s, strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, uh, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 6 up save. So it contains five storm boys. It can contain five, fifteen, or twenty-five additional storm boys. A boss knob can take the place of one storm boy. Each one is equipped with a slugger, choppa, and stick bombs. The boss knob may replace his choppa with the one item from the choppy weapons list. They have here we go and full throttle. Full throttle. This unit can advance and charge in the same turn. But if it does so, roll a d6 for each model. After any Overwatch has been resolved for each roll of one, the unit suffers a mortal wound. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Infantry, Jump Pack, Fly, and Storm Boys. Defcoptas can move 14 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, Bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength 4, Toughness 5, 4 wounds, 2 attacks, Leadership 6, and a 4 up save. So it contains 1 Defcopta, can, can contain 2 or 4 additional. Each model is equipped with Spin and Blades and Copta Rockets. Any Defcopta may replace a Copta Rocket with a custom Mega bla Blaster or 2 Twin Big Shooters. Or with a Twin Big Shooter. Twin big shooter. 
Any Death Copter may take a Big Bomb. Any Death Copter may take a Kill Sob. They have Eerie Go and Mob Rule, Turbo Boost. Uh, so when they advance, they just move 6 inches instead of D6. They have Scout in Ahead. During deployment, you can set up a unit of Death Copters behind enemy lines instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phase, Death Copters can swoop around to ambush the foe. Set them up anywhere on the battlefield as more than 9 inches away from any enemy models and within 14 inches of a battlefield edge. The Big Bomb, a Death Copter equipped with a Big Bomb, can drop it as it flies over enemy units as in movement phase. After the Death Copter has been moved, pick one enemy unit that it flew over. Then roll a d6 for each model in the enemy unit, up to a maximum of 5 dice. For each roll of 3+, plus, the target suffers one mortal wound. It can only do this once per battle. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Vehicle, Fly, and Death Copters. The Jet comes in starting at 12 wounds. From 7 to 12 wounds, it can move 20 to 60 inches, plus skill hitting on 5s, and 3 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, it can move 20 to 40 inches, plus skill hitting on 6s, and D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds, it can move 20 to 25 inches, plus skill hitting on 6s, and 1 attack. It is a single model equipped with 4 Super Shooters. This model may take 2 additional Super Shooters. It has Airborne, so all cannot charge, can only be charged by units that can fly, can only attack or be attacked in the fight phase by units that can fly. It's a hard hit, your opponents must subtract one from hit rolls attacks for attacks that target this unit in the shooting phase. As Supersonic, each time this model moves, it must it first can pivot up to 90 degrees on the spot, it doesn't count how far the model moves, and then moves straight ahead in a line. Note that this that it cannot uh, pivot again after the initial pivot. When this model advances, increase move characters by 20 until the end of the phase. Do not roll a die. Has Daka Daka Daka, my favorite rule so, so far. Uh, if Daka Jet targets the same unit with all of its super shooters, you can add one to all of those hit rolls. That's pretty good. Uh, crash and Burn. If it explodes, uh, each unit within six inches suffers D3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Orc, Clan. Keywords are Vehicle, Fly, and Daka Jet. A Burn Obama. Uh, starts with 12 wounds, and at 7 and 12 wounds it can move 20 to 50 inches, plus skill hitting on 5+, plus, 3 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds it can move 20 to 30 inches, plus skill hitting on 6s in D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds it can move 20 to 25 inches, plus skill on 6+, plus, and 1 attack. This model may take, uh, it has weapon skill hitting on 5s, strength 6, toughness 6, leadership 6, and a 4-up save. Uh, is a single model equipped with a twin big shooter, two super shooters, and two burner bombs. This model may take scorcher missiles. Burner bombs. A burner bomb can be dropped over... A burner bomber can drop one burner bomb as it flies over enemy units in its movement phase. After the burner bomber has moved, pick one enemy unit that it flew over and roll a d6 for each unit, uh, each model that is in that unit, up to a maximum of 10. Add one to the dice if the enemy unit is infantry. For each roll of a 5+, plus, the unit being bombed suffers a mortal wound. Uh, as Supersonic Explosive Demise, if this model is reduced to zero wounds, roll a d6 before moving from the battlefield on a 4+, plus, it crashes and explodes, and all units within 6 inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. Has a Grot Gunner, when Burn Obama attacks with its twin Big Shooter, add 1 to the hit rolls. It is airborne and hard to hit. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Vehicle, Fly, and Burn Obama. A Blitz Obama. Blitz a bomber. Uh, has uh, 12 wounds to start with. From 7 to 12 wounds, it can move 20 to 50 inches. Bliss skill hitting on 5s and 1 attack. From 4 to 6 wounds remaining, it can move 20 to 30 inches. Bliss skill hitting on 6s with D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it can move 20 to 25 inches. Bliss skill hitting on 6s and 1 attack. Weapon skill is 5 plus. Strength toughness 6. Leadership 6 and a 4 up save. So a single model equipped with a big shooter, two super shooters, and two boom bombs. A boom bomb. It can drop one boom bomb as it flies over an enemy in its movement phase. After the blitz bomber has moved, pick one enemy unit that it flew over. And then roll a d6 for each model in there in the unit, up to a maximum of 10 dice. Roll three dice instead for each vehicle or monster in the unit. For each roll of a 4+, plus, the unit being bombed suffers a mortal wound. A grot gunner. It has a grot gunner, crash and burn, airborne, hard to hit, and supersonic. Faction keyword are orc and clan. Keywords are vehicle, fly, and blitz bomber. A Waz Bomb blast a jet uh, starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds, it can move 20 to 60 inches, plus skill hitting on 5s, and 3 attacks. Uh, from 4 to 6 wounds remaining, it can move 20 to 40 inches, plus skill hitting on 6s and D3 attacks, and from 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it can move 20 to 25 inches, plus skill hitting on 6s, and 1 attack. 
A Waz Bomb Blaster Jet is a single model equipped with two Waz Bomb Mega Cannons, a Smasher Gun, and a Stick Bomb Finger. It has weapon skill of 5, strength toughness 6, 12 wounds, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. And this model may replace both Waz Bomb Mega Cannons with two Teleport Mega Blasters. This model may take two Super Shooters. This model may replace its Stick Bomb Flinger with a custom force field. It is airborne, hard to hit, supersonic, uh, mech brain enhanced weapon sights. A WAS bomb blaster jet does not suffer the penalty to hit rolls for the moving and firing heavy weapons. In addition, this model can choose a single enemy unit each shooting phase. Add one to all hit rolls for attacks made against the unit with this model smash a gun. Custom force field. This model is armed with a custom force field. All friendly orc units that are entirely within nine inches have a five of invuln save against ranged weapons as Crash and Burn, with each unit within 6 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan, keywords are Vehicle, Fly, and Waz Bomb Blast Jet. War Bikers. They can move 14 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, both skill hitting on 5s, strength 4, toughness 5, 2 attacks, 2 wounds, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. A boss knob is 14 inches movement, weapon skill hitting on 3s, both skill hitting on 5s, strength 5, toughness 5, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 4 up save. This unit contains three war bikers. It can contain up to three, uh, six, or nine additional. A boss knob can take the place of one war biker. Each model is armed with a slugger, a chopper, and stick bombs, and it rides a war bike equipped with two DACA guns. The boss knob can replace his chopper with one item from the choppy weapons list. They have Here We Go and Mob Rule. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Biker and War Bikes. War Tracks can move 12 inches, Bliss Skill hitting on threes, uh, Bliss Skill hitting on fives, Weapon Skill hitting on threes. Strength 4, Toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. A unit of war tracks consists of a single model that can include up to 2 additional or 4 additional war tracks. Each is armed with a twin big shooter. Any model may replace its twin big shooter with a rack of rockets. They have Eerie Go and Mob Rule, and Outriders. During deployment, you can set up a unit of war bikes uh, on the army's flanks instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phase, the war tracks can race into in to encircle the foe, let them set them up so that each model is touching a battlefield edge and is more than 9 inch away from any enemy models. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan, keywords are Vehicle and War Tracks. Scorches are 12 inch movement, weapons skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s, strength 4, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. It consists of a single model, can include 2 or 4 additional Scorches, each is equipped with a Scorcha. Fancy that. They have Eerie Go and Mob Rule and Outriders. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Vehicle and Scorcha. War Buggies can move 14 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, Bliss skill hitting on 5s. Strength 4, Toughness 5, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, Leadership 6, and a 4 up save. Unit consists of a single model. It can include up to 2 or 4 additional War Buggies. Each is equipped with a Twin Big Shooter. You can replace its Twin Big Shooter with a Rack of Rockets. They have Eerie Go, Mob Rule, and Outriders. Faction keywords are Orc, Clan. Keywords are Vehicle and War Buggies. Under the big guns. A big gun can move 3 inches, weapon skill hitting on 6s, bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength 3, toughness 5, 3 wounds, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 5 up save. A grok gunner can move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength 2, toughness 2, uh, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 4, and a 6 up save. This contains 1 big gun uh, accompanied by 2 grok gunners. It can include up to five additional big guns, each of which is accompanied by two Grok Gunners. Each gun is equipped with a cannon, a lava, or a zap gun. Uh, abilities are Grok Crew. A unit of big guns and its accompanying Grok Gunners must be deployed with each model within three inches of at least one other model from their unit. From that point on, each big gun and each two-model group of Grok Gunners acts as a single unit. They have Take Cover. Grok Gunners can only be targeted in the shooting phase if they are the closest enemy unit. Uh, artillery, a big gun can only fire its ranged weapon if friendly clan Grok Gunner is within 3 inches. A single Grok Gunner cannot operate multiple big guns in the way, in this way in a single turn. If all Grok Gunners within 6 inches of a big gunner slain, it immediately shuts down and is removed from play. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords on the big gun are Vehicle, Artillery, and Big Guns. Keywords for the Grok Gunner are Infantry, uh, Gretchen, and Grok Gunners. Mech guns can move 3 inches, weapon skill hitting on 6s, bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength 3, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 5 up save. A grok gunner can move 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength toughness 2, 1 wound, 1 attack, 4 leadership 4, and a 6 up save. So it contains 1 mech gun and 5 grok gunners. 
It can include up to five additional mech guns, each of which is accompanied by five Grok gunners. Each mech gun is equipped with a bubble chukka, a custom mega cannon, a smasher gun, or a tractor cannon. They have Grok crew, they can take cover, and artillery. The action keywords are orc and clan. Keywords for the mech gun are vehicle, artillery, and mech guns. Keywords for the Grok gunners are infantry, Gretchen, and Grok gunners. There we go, our battle wagon. It starts at 16 wounds. Movement 12 inches, strength 8, with 6 attacks. From 4 to 7 wounds remaining, it has 9 inch movement, strength 6, and d6 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it has movement 6, strength 4, and d3 attacks. It is a single model. This model may take a kill cannon, it may take a cannon, lava, or zap gun. It may take up to 4 big shooters and or rocket launches. It may take a death roller, an ard case, and grab and claw, and or a wrecking ball. It explodes with units within 6 inches, suffering d6 mortal wounds. It's ard case. Uh, a battle wagon with an ard case has a toughness characteristic of 8, but loses the open topped ability. Uh, mobile fortress. A battle wagon ignores the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons, and has open topped. A transport. A battle wagon can transport 20. Uh, so the rest of its stat line, I apologize. Uh, weapon skill hitting on 5s, blitz skill hitting on 5s, toughness 7, 16 wounds, leadership 7 and a 4 up save. A battle wagon can transport 20 orc infantry models. Each mega armor or jump pack model takes the space of two other models. A battle wagon equipped with a kill cannon can only transport 12 models. Faction keywords are orc and clan. Keywords are vehicle, transport, and battle wagon. Hear me out. Again, I don't play orcs, but battle wagon full of burner boys. Mm, seems good. Uh, very least you get them up there. Death dreads. You can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 5s, strength 5, toughness 7, 8 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7 and a 3 up save. So it contains 1 death dread. It can include 1 additional or 2 additional death dreads. Each is equipped with 2 big shooters and 2 dread claws. Any model may replace uh, any of its big shooters with a rocket launcher, custom mega blaster, scorcher, or dread claw. They have Here We Go, Dread Mob, a unit of death dreads must be deployed as a single group, with each model within 6 inches of at least 1 other model from their unit. From that point on, each Death Dread acts as a single unit, and explodes with units within 3 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. The action keywords are Orc and Clan, keywords are Vehicle and Death Dreads. Killicans can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, blitz skill hitting on 4s, strength 5, toughness 5, 5 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 6, and a 3 up save. This unit contains 1 Killican, it can include up to 2 or 5 additional. Each Killican is equipped with a Big Shooter and Clan Claw. Clan Claw. Um, any model may replace its big shooter with a rocket launcher, custom mega blaster, a scorcher, or grot zooka. It explodes with each unit within three inches, suffering one mortal wound, and scrag them. While a unit of kill a clans contains kill a cans contains three or more models, add one to their attacks characteristic. Faction keywords are orc and clan, keywords are vehicle and kill a can. We have our Morkonaut, the big guys. Morkonaut. Uh, starts at 18 wounds. From 10 to 18 wounds, moves 8 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s and 4 attacks. From 5 to 9 wounds, it moves 6 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 4s and 3 attacks. From 1 to 4 wounds, movement is 4 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 5s and 2 attacks. Uh, its plus skill is 5 plus. Strength and toughness 8. 18 wounds. Leadership 7 and a 3 up save. Morkonaut is a single model equipped with a custom mega blaster. Two twin big shooters. Two rocket launches. A custom mega cannon. And a claw of Mork or possibly Gork. This model may take a custom force field. As here we go, explodes with units within 9 inches suffering d6 mortal wounds. A custom force field, it's big and stompy. This model can fall back in your movement phase and still shoot and or charge during its turn. In addition, it can move and fire heavy weapons without suffering the penalty to hit rolls. This model only gains a bonus to its saving throws for being in cover if at least half the model is obscured from the firer. It is a transport and can transport 6 orc infantry models. Each mega armor or jump pack model takes the place of 2 other models. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Vehicle, Transport, and Morkonaut. A Gorkonaut. Uh, has 18 wounds to start. Movement is 8 inches from 10 to 18 wounds. Weapon skill hitting on 3s and 6 attacks. From 5 to 9 wounds, it can move 6 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 4s with 5 attacks. From 1 to 4 wounds remaining, it moves 4 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 5s with 4 attacks. And its blitz skill is 6 plus. Strength toughness 8. 18 wounds. Leadership 7 and a 3 up save. Is a single model equipped with a Death Storm Mega Shooter, two twin shooters, two rocket launches, a Scorcher, and a Claw. Uh, claw of Gork, or possibly Mork. They have Here We Go and Explodes, with each unit within 9 inch suffering D6 mortal wounds. It is also big and stompy. It can transport uh, six Im Orc infantry models, 
Each Mega Armor or Jump Pack model takes the space of two other models. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan, keywords are Vehicle, Transport, and Gorkonaut. Ludas uh, can move 5 inches, weapons hitting on 3s, blitz skill hitting on 5s, strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. A spanner can move 5 inches, weapons skill hitting on 3s, blitz skill hitting on 5s, strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. So you contains 5 Ludas. It can clean up to f can contain up to 5 or 10 additional. Uh, up to 3 spanners can take the place of a Luda. Each Luda is armed with a Def Gun and Stick Bombs. Each Spanner is armed with a Slugga, Choppa, or Stick Bombs. Sorry, and Stick Bombs. Any Spanner may replace his Choppa with a Kill Saw. Any Spanner may replace his Slugga with one item from the souped up weapons list. They have Irigo, Mob Rule, and Mechaniac. Uh, faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Infantry and Ludas. We okay, left Flash Gets. Ooh, and the Big Stompa. Well, geez, okay, we'll get that in a second. But anyway, flash gets. Uh, regular one can move five inches. Weapon skill hitting on threes, blitz skill hitting on fours. Strength five, toughness four. Two wounds, three attacks, leadership six, and a six up save. A captain, with a K, of course, moves five inches. Weapon skill hitting on threes, blitz skill hitting on fours. Strength five, toughness four. Two wounds, three attacks, leadership six, and a six up save. A ammo run can move five inches. Weapon skill hitting on fives, blitz skill hitting on fours. Strength two. Toughness 2, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 4, and a 6 up save. So it contains 4 ga flash gits and 1 captain. It can contain up to 5 additional flash gits. Any flash gits or captain may be accompanied by an ammo runt. Each flash git and captain is armed with a snaz gun and stick bombs. War gear options the captain may take a choppa or slugga. They have ear we go and mob rule. They have an ammo runt. They are gun crazy show offs. After this unit has shot in the shooting phase, roll a d6. On a 6, all models in the unit must immediately shoot again, but can only target the nearest enemy unit. They have faction keywords are Orc. Keywords for the flash kits are Infantry and flash kits. Keywords for the ammo runs are Infantry, Gretchen, and ammo runs. The Stompa, holy cow, uh, starts at 40 wounds. <laughs> um, has 49 power points. First of all, that's how much it costs, so you can take 7 units of flash kits or a Stompa. Um, the Stompa from 31 to 40 wounds remaining moves 12 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, strength 10. From 21 to 30 wounds remaining uh, moves 9 inches, weapon skill hitting on 4s, and 9 strength. From 11 to 20 wounds remaining, it's movement is 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, and strength 8. From 1 to 10 wounds remaining, it moves 4 inches, weapon skill hitting on 6s, and strength 7. Bliss skill hits on 5s, toughness 8, starts at 40 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3-up save. A Stompa is a single model equipped with a Def Cannon, a Super Gatler, three Big Shooters, a Twin Big Shooter, uh, three Super Rockets, a Scorcher, and a Mega Choppa. This model may take up to two additional Super Rockets. Has Here We Go, explodes each unit within 2d6 inches, suffering d6 mortal wounds. It has Bigger and Stompier. This model can fall back in the movement phase and still shoot or charge in that turn. When a Stompa falls back, it can move over enemy infantry models. Uh, though at the end of its move, it must be more than one inch away from enemy models, a Stompa does not suffer the penalty for firing, for moving and firing heavy weapons. This model gains a bonus to its saving throws for being in cover only if half the model is obscured from the firer. It has Psycho Daka Blasta. A, stomper, a Stompa can fire its Supa Gatler more than once in your shooting phase. To fire the Supa Gatler a second time, roll a d6. On 2+, plus, you can make the attack. On a 1, the weapon's ammo has been expended and it can no longer be used the rest of the battle. To fire the Super Gatler a third time in your shooting phase, roll a d6. On a 3+, plus, you can make the attack. On a 4 or less, uh, sorry, on a 5+, plus, you can make the attack. On a 4 or less, the weapon's ammo has been expanded and can no longer be used for the rest of the battle. Um, Effigy Orc, units within 6 inches of a friendly Stompa can reroll failed morale tests. Transport, a Stompa can transport 20 Orc infantry models. Each Mega Armor or Jump Pack model can take the space of two other models. Faction keywords are Orc and Clan. Keywords are Vehicle, Transport, Titanic, and Stompa. So that's the big finish to our Orc list. Next up we have the Tau. So quite the switch from Orcs to Tau, uh, army theme-wise, I realize. So uh, just like Orcs have the Clan keywords, Space Marines have the Chapter keyword, Tau have the Sept. Um, and the other abilities that are common for them are, of course, the Greater Good. The Greater Good. Please, please go and watch Hot Fuzz. Pause this even right now. I'd be happy with that. And go watch Hot Fuzz. Uh, great movie. Uh, when an enemy unit declares a charge, a unit that it, with this ability that is within six inches of one of the charging unit's targets may fire Overwatch as if they were also targeted. A unit that does, that does not 
uh, that does so, sorry, cannot fire Overwatch again in this turn. So it's kind of like supporting fire. So if I charge Unit A, Unit B here within six inches can also Overwatch, but then if Unit B becomes a target of a charge later on, it can't Overwatch this same turn. Marker Lights. If a model other than a vehicle fires a Marker Light, it cannot fire any other weapons in that phase. When a unit is hit by a Marker Light, place a counter next to it for the remainder of the phase. The table below describes the benefits of Tau Empire models have when shooting a unit that has Marker Light counters. All benefits are cumulative. So Tau players, shoot your Marker, light for marker Lights first. I know you usually did before, but just keep it, keep it up. Um, so with one Marker Light, and remember these are cumulative, so they all add on to each other, you can reroll hit rolls of one for Tau Empire models attacking this unit. Seems good already. Destroyer and Seeker missiles fired at this unit for two Marker Lights. Uh, use the firing model's ballista skill and any, mod any modifiers, rather than only hitting on a six. On three Marker Lights, Tau Empire models attacking this unit do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons or advancing and firing assault weapons. So if you have an assault weapon equipped on something, it can advance, and then if something's been Marker Lighted, can fire at it. Uh, the target unit, for four Marker Lights, does not gain any bonus to its saving throws for being in cover, and for five or more Marker Lights, add one to hit rolls for Tau Empire models attacking this unit. So it kind of negates the first one because, you know, your misses of two, you're, if you roll a one, you add two to it, right? So you have no hits of one, essentially. So mm -hmm. uh, I'd even be happy with one marker light, honestly. War gear. Uh, so when they refer to uh, ranged and support systems list going forward, these are the things we're talking about. For ranged weapons, we have air bursting fragmentation projector, burst cannon, cyclonic ion blaster, flamer, fusion blaster, missile pod, and plasma rifle. For support systems, there are advanced targeting systems, counter fire defense systems, drone controller, early warning override, multi tracker, shield generator, stimulant injector, target lock, and velocity tracker. So I get to the actual data cards here. So our Tau commander can move 8 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, blitz skill hitting on 2s, strength 5, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, and a 3 up save. A commander is a single model equipped with a burst cannon and a missile pod. It may be accompanied by up to 2 tactical drones. War gear options. This model may replace its burst cannon and missile pod with 2 items from the range, range weapons and or support systems lists. This model may also take 2 additional items from the range, weapon, range weapons and or support systems lists. It has for the greater good. As a master of war, once per battle at the beginning of your turn, a single friendly commander can declare either Kaoyan or Montka. Kaoyan, until the end of the turn, you can reroll failed hit rolls for friendly sept units within six inches, but these units cannot move for any reason. Montka, for friendly sept units within six inches, can both advance and shoot as if they didn't move this turn. And so those are the two abilities you have from that. And Manta Strike, during deployment, you may set up a commander in a Manta hold instead of being placed. Instead of placing them on the battlefield, at the end of any movement phase, they can arrive, they can use Manta Strike to enter the fray, set them up anywhere in the battlefield is more than 9 inches from any enemy models. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Battlesuit, Character, Jetpack, Fly, and Commander. A commander in an XV-86 Cold Star Battlesuit can move 20 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, blitz skill hitting on 2s, Strike and Thumbness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9 and a 3 up save. He's a single model, equipped with a high output burst cannon and a missile pod, it may be accompanied by up to two tactical drones. It may take up to two items from the support weapons list. Has for the greater good, is a master of war, has manta strike, and cold star. When this model advances, add 20 to its move characteristic for that movement phase instead of rolling a d6. So if it advances, it can move 40 inches. And keep in mind with uh, the Montka master of war, it can move 40 inches and then fire its, all its weapons as if it hadn't. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Battlesuit, Character, Jetpack, Fly, and Commander. In Ethereal, you can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, plus skill hitting on 4s. Strength 3, Toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, Leadership 9, and a 5 up save. In Ethereal is a single model, armed with a Honor Blade. It may be accompanied by up to 2 tactical drones. War gear options. This model may replace its Honor Blade with Equalizers, and it may... Uh, take a hover drone increasing its move characteristic to 8 inches and giving it jetpack and fly keywords. Has failure is not an option. Friendly Tau Empire units within 6 inches of an ethereal may use the ethereal's leadership characteristic instead of their own when taking morale tests. It has invocation of the elements. In your movement phase, an ethereal may invoke one of the elemental powers below. All friendly Tau Empire infantry and battle suit units within 6 inches of any ethereal invoking an elemental power gain that power's benefit until the end of Sorry, until the start of your next turn. Calm of Tides. Subtract one from any morale test made for affected units. 
Storm of Fire. You may reroll hit rolls 1 in the shooting phase for affected units that remain stationary in the movement phase. Sense of Stone. Whenever an affected unit suffers an unsaved wound, roll a d6 on a 6 that wound is ignored. And Zephyr's Grace. You can reroll the dice for affected units when they advance. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Character, Infantry, and Ethereal. A Cadra Fireblade. You can move 6 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, blue skill hitting on 2s. Strength 3, toughness 3. 5 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8 and a 4 up save. It is a single model equipped with a marker light, pulse rifle, and photon grenades. It can be accompanied by up to 2 tactical drones. It has for the greater good and volley fire, stating models in sept units within 6 inches of any friendly sept cadre fire blade may fire an extra shot with pulse pistols, pulse carbines, and pulse rifles when shooting a target within half the weapon's range. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Character, Infantry, and Cadre Fireblade. Commander Farsight. You can move 8 inches, weapon skill hitting on 2s, bliss skill hitting on 2s, strength 5, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, a 3 up save. He's a single model equipped with a plasma rifle and the Dawn Blade. Only one of this model can be included in your army. He has for the greater good, Master of War, uh, Ma Manta Strike, and Genius of Montka. Once per battle, Commander Farsight can declare Montka even if Kalyan or Montka has already been declared. Montka and Kalyan cannot both be declared in the same turn. Way of the Short Blade. You can reroll hit rolls of one for friendly Farsight enclaves within six inches of Commander Farsight in the fight phase or any phase if the target is an orc unit. If shield generator, Commander Farsight has a four up invuln save. Faction keyword is Tau Empire and Farsight enclaves. Keywords are Faction Battlesuit, Character, Commander, Jet Pack, Fly, and Farsight. Commander Shadow Sun. He can move 8 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, blitz skill hitting on 2s, strength toughness 4, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, a 3 up save. An MV52 shield drone can move, this is with him, uh, can move 8 inches, weapon skill and blitz skill hitting on 5s, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6 and a 4 up save. An MV62 command link drone with him can move 8 inches, hits on 5s, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attacks, leadership 6 and a 4 up save. He's a single model equipped with 2 fusion blasters. She is accompanied by up to three command drones, one MV-62 command link drone, and up to two MV-52 shield drones, and only one unit can be included in your army. As she has for the greater good, Master of War, Genius of Kao Yan, once per battle, Commander Shadow Sun can declare Kao Yan even if Kao Yan or Mont Ka has already been declared. Mont Ka and Kao Yan cannot both be declared in the same turn. Camouflage Fields. Your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls that target Commander Shadow Sun or her command drones. As Infiltrator, during deployment, Commander Shadow Sun can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is not within your opponent's deployment zone and is more than 12 inches from any enemy unit. An XV-22 Stealth Battlesuit, Commander Shadow Sun has a 5-up invuln save. Defender of the Greater Good, roll a d6 each time Shadow Sun loses a wound while she is within 3 inches of a unit or a friendly XV-25 Stealth Battlesuits. On a 2+, a model from that unit can intercept that hit. Shadow Sun does not lose a wound, but that unit suffers a mortal wound. Drone support. When Commander Shadow Sun is set up on the battlefield, her accompanying drones are set up in a unit coherency with her. From that point onwards, the drone are treated as a separate unit. Savior protocols. If drone unit is within three inches of a friendly Tau Empire infantry or battlesuit unit, you can choose to allocate any wounds to the drones instead of the target unit. So that's just if you have Shadow Sun in your list, it seems like. Drones get a lot better if you just have Shadow Sun. That's kind of cool. Uh, MV-52 shield generator. Uh, MB-52 shield drones have a 3-up invuln save. Command link. If a friendly command link drone is within 3 inches of Commander Shadow Sun at the start of any of your shooting phases, uh, nominate a single Tau Empire unit within 12 inches of the drone. You can re-roll hit rolls of 1 inch for that unit until the end of the phase. Faction keywords are Tau Empire, Tau Sept. Uh, keywords for Shadow Sun are Infantry, Battlesuit, Character, Commander, Jetpack, Fly, and Shadow Sun. Keywords for the drones are Drone, Fly, and Command Drones. Uh, Aun Shi, I apologize if I'm butchering these town names, I'm trying my best. Aun Shi can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 2s, plus skill hitting on 4s, strength and toughness 3, 5 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 9. Is a single model armed with an honor blade. Only one of this model can be included in your army. Uh, has failure is not an option. Shield generator is a blade master. At the beginning of each t fight phase, choose one of the following effects to last until the end of the phase. Aun Shi's close combat attacks have AP of negative 2. You may reroll failed invulnerable saves for Aun Shi as Invocation of the Elements as well. Faction keywords are Tau Empire, Viorla Sept. Keywords are Character, Infantry, Ethereal, and Aun Shi. 
Aunva, there we go, can move six inches, weapon skill hitting on six, bliss skill hitting on fours, strength two, toughness three, six wounds, one attack, leadership nine, and a five up save. An ethereal guard can move six inches, weapon skill hitting on threes, bliss skill hitting on threes, strength three, toughness three, two wounds, three attacks, leadership nine, and a five up save. This unit contains Aunva and two ethereal guards. The ethereal guards are each armed with an honor blade. Uh, only one of this unit can be included in your army. Has failure and is not an option. Paradox duality. When this unit is attacked during the shooting phase, it may add, rather than subtract, the AP of the attack to its save characteristic. For example, an AP of negative one would it provide a plus one bonus to its saves. Supreme loyalty. Whilst Aunva is on the battlefield, you may reroll morale tests for all friendly Tau Empire units. Grand invocation of elements. In your movement phase, Aunva. Uh, is, so it's different from the invocation of elements. This is grand. In your movement phase, Aunva may invoke up to two elemental power powers, all Tau inf Empire infantry and battle suit units within six inches of any ethereal invoking an elemental power, gain the relevant benefits until the start of your next turn, calm the tides, subtract one from any morale tests made for affected units, storm of fire, you may reroll hit rolls of one in the shooting phase for any affected units that remain stationary in the movement phase, sense of stone, whenever an affected unit suffers an unsaved wound, roll a d6, on a six the wound is ignored, and Zephyr's Grace, you can reroll the dice for affected units when they advance. Faction words are Tau Empire and Tau Sept. Keywords for Aunva are Character, Infantry, Ethereal, and Aunva. Keywords for the Ethereal Guard are Character, Infantry, and Ethereal Guard. Dark Strider. Can move 7 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s. Bliss skill hitting on 2s. Strength 3, Toughness 3, 5 wounds, 3 attacks, Leadership 8, and a 5 up save. Dark Strider is a single model armed with a Marker Light, Pulse Carbine, and Photon Grenades. Only one can be included in your army. As for the greater good, Vanguard, at the start of the first battle round, but before the turn begins, you can move Dark Strider up to 7 inches. He cannot end this movement phase within 9 inches of enemy enemy units. If both players have units that can do this, the player who's taking the first turn moves theirs first. Structural Analyzer. In your shooting phase, choose a friendly Tau Sept infantry unit within 6 inches and an enemy unit visible to Dark Strider. The enemy unit's toughness is considered to be 1 point lower when the Tau Sept infantry unit targets them with a shooting attack. This ability cannot be used when firing Overwatch. Fighting Retreat. Friendly Tau Sept infantry units within 6 inches of Dark Strider in the shooting phase may attack with ranged weapons even if they fell back this turn. Faction keywords are Tau Empire, Tau Sept. Keywords are Character, Infantry, and Dark Strider. We have the Strike Team getting into our regular units now. Uh, Fire Warrior can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill hitting on 4s, strength 3, toughness 3, 1 wound, 1 attack, six, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. The Fire Warrior Shazui can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, will skill hitting on 4s, strength up to 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 7, and a 4 up save. A D58 tactical support turret uh, has bliss skill hitting on 4s, strength up to 3, 1 wound, no attacks, leadership 4, and a 4 up save. And the Guardian Drone has an 8-inch move, weapon skill and bliss skill hitting on 5s, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. So it contains 5 Fire Warriors. It can include up to 5, up to 7, uh, or up to five or up to seven additional fire warriors. A fire warrior Shazui can take the place of one fire warrior. Each fire warrior and fire warrior Shazui is armed with a pulse rifle and photon grenades. This unit may be accompanied by two tactical drones or one tactical drone and one MV36 guardian drone. Uh, warrior options. Any fire warrior or Shazui may replace their pulse rifle with a pulse carbine. A fire warrior Shazui may take a mark light and or pulse pistol. Their the unit may take a D-58 tactical support turret equipped with either a missile pod or a smart missile system. They have for the greater good, Bonding Knife Ritual. If you roll a 6 when taking a morale test for this unit, the test is automatically passed. A Drone Support. When a strike team is set up on the battlefield, any accompanying drones set up in the unit, coherency with it. From that point onward, the drones are treated as a separate unit. They have Savior Protocols. Uh, guardian Fields, or Guardian Drones have a 5 invuln save. Strike teams within 3 inches of any friendly Guardian Drones have a 6 up invuln save. And D58, or D, DS8, sorry, Tactical Support Turret. Tactical Support Turrets are not set up when their unit is set up. Instead, once per game, at the end of any of your movement phases, you may set up the Tactical Support Turret within coherency of its unit and more than 2 inches away from any enemy models. The turret cannot move for any reason and is destroyed if the strike team moves out of coherency with it. Destruction of a tactical support turret is ignored for the purposes of morale tests. Faction keywords are Tau, Empire, and Sept. Keywords are strike for the strike team are infantry and strike team. Keywords for the guardian drone are drone, fly, and guardian drone. A breacher team. Uh, the fire warriors can move six inches, weapon skill hitting on fives, build skill on fours, strength down to three, one wound, one attack, six up leadership, and a four up save. 
This shot is weak, move six inches. Weapon skill hitting on fives. Blitz skill hitting on fours. Strength toughness three. One wound, two attacks, leadership seven, and a four up save. The tactical support turret uh, has blitz skill hitting on fours. Strength toughness three. One wound, no attacks, leadership four, and a four up save. The MV36 Guardian drone uh, can move eight inches. Uh, hits on fives. Strength three, toughness four. One wound, one attack, leadership six, and a four up save. It contains five, four, five fire warriors. It included an additional five. Uh, a Shazui can take the place of a Fire Warrior. Each Fire Warrior and Shazui is armed with a Pulse Blaster and Pulse Grenades. Uh, sorry, and Photon Grenades. This unit may be accompanied by two Tactical Drones, or one Tactical Drone and one MV-36 Guardian Drone. Uh, the Shazui may take a Marker Light and or Pulse Pistol. The unit may take a DS-8 Tactical Support Turret equipped with either a Missile Pod System or Smart Missile System. They have for the Greater Good, Bonding Knife Ritual, Drone Support, Savior Protocols, Guardian Field, DS8 Tactical Support Team. Faction keywords are Tau, Empire, and Sept. Keywords for the Breacher Team are Infantry and Breacher Team. Keyword for the Guardian Drone are Drone, Fly, and Guardian Drone. Crude Carnivores. Can move 7 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill on 4s. Strength and toughness 3, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. So you contains 10 Crude, it can include up to an additional 10. Each model is armed with a Crude Rifle. There are stealthy hunters. At the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn begins, you can move this unit up to seven inches. It cannot end this move more uh, sorry, within nine inches of enemy models. If both players have units that can do this, the player who's taking the first turn moves theirs first. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Crute. Keywords are infantry and Crute carnivores. Crutex Crutox Riders can move seven inches, weapon skill hitting on threes, plus skill on fours, strength six, toughness five, three wounds, two attacks, leadership six, and a six up save. So unit contains one Crutox Rider, it can include one or two additional. Each Rider fires a Crute Gun, and each Crutox attacks with its fists. Abilities, it is an Agile Brute. When this unit advances, add 6 to its move for that movement phase instead of rolling a d6. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Crute. Keywords are Cavalry Crutox Rider. Crute Hounds can move 12 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, strength 3, toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 5, sorry, and a 6 up save. This unit contains four Crude Hounds. It can include up to four additional or eight additional Crude Hounds. Each is armed with Ripping Fangs. Abilities, they are voracious predators. You may reroll charge rolls for this unit when targeting a unit that has suffered uh, any unsaved wounds this turn. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Crute. Keywords are Beasts and Crude Hounds. A Crude Shaper can move seven inches. Weapon skill hitting on threes, bliss skill on fours. Uh, strength three, toughness three, five wounds, three attacks, leadership seven, and a six up save. Is a single model armed with a Crute Rifle and Ritual Blade. This model can replace its Crute Rifle with a Pulse Rifle or Pulse Carbine. The Shaper Commands. You may re-roll wound rolls of one made for friendly Crute units within 6 inches of this model. Uh, wisest of their kind. Crute units within 6 inches of a friendly Crute Shaper may use the Crute Shaper's leadership characteristic instead of their own when taking morale tests. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Crute. Keywords are Character, Infantry, and Crute Shaper. How many I am Crute jokes do you think have been made over the last couple years? Uh, I'm sorry for making that one. XV-25 Stealth Battle Suits. Uh, the Shazui can move 8 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, plus skill on 4s, strength toughness 4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7, and 3 up save. The Shazvray can move 8 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, plus skill on 4s, strength toughness 4, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3 up save. So you can contain 3, three Stealth Shazui and to 3 additional Stealth Shazui. A Shazvre can take the place of one Stealth Shazui. Each Stealth Shazui and Stealth Shazvre is equipped with a burst cannon. This unit can be accompanied back to two tactical drones. Any Shazui or Shazvre may take a single item from the support systems list. One Stealth Shazui or Shazvre may replace their burst cannon with a fusion blaster. If the unit numbers six models, one addi additional Shazui may do this. The Shazvre may take a marker light and target lock. The unit may take a homing beacon. They have for the greater good, bonding knife ritual, infiltrators. Uh, during your deployment, this unit can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is not within your enemy's deployment zone as more than 12 inches from an enemy t unit. And target lock. A model with target lock does not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons or for advancing and firing assault weapons. This model can also advance and fire rapid fire weapons, but you must subtract one from its hit rolls when it does so. Camouflage fields, your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for attacks that target this unit. And homing beacon. A homing beacon may be used during your movement phase by placing uh, it within one inch of its unit. If there are any friendly homing beacons on the battlefield at the end of your movement phase, one of your sept units that has been set up in a manta hold can perform a low altitude drop instead of a manta strike. 
Set up the unit wholly within 6 inches of the homing beacon. The homing beacon then shorts out and is removed from the battlefield. Homing beacons are deactivated and are removed from the battlefield if an enemy is ends of movement within 9 inches of it. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Battlesuit, Infantry, Jetpack, Fly, XV-25, Stealth, Battlesuits. XV-8, Crisis Battlesuit. Shazui, move 8 inches. Weapon Skill Hail 5s, Bliss Skill Hail 4s, Strength 5, Toughness 5, 3 Wounds, 2 Attacks, Leadership 7, and a 3-up save. The Shah's Vray has 3 Attacks, Leadership 8, and a 3-up save as well. This unit contains 3 Shazui, and can, up to, can contain up to 3 uh, or 6 additional Shazui, and a Shah's Vray can take the place of 1 Shazui. Each Crisis Battlesuit is equipped with a Burst Cannon and may be accompanied by up to 2 Tactical Drones. Any Shazui or Shazray may replace their burst cannon with up to three items from the ranged weapons and or support systems list. They have for the greater good, Bonding Knife Ritual and Mantis Strike. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Battlesuit, Jetpack, Fly, XV-8, Crisis Battlesuits. The XV-8 Crisis Bodyguards can uh, move eight inches, Weapon Skill hitting on fives, Bliss Skill on fours, Strength five, Toughness five, three wounds, three attacks, Leadership eight, and a three up save. It contains three bodyguards. It can include an additional three or six bodyguards. Each is equipped with a burst cannon and can be accompanied by up to two tactical drones. Uh, any crisis bodyguard may replace their burst cannon with up to three items from your ranged, ranged and or support systems list. They have for the greater good, Bonding Knife Ritual, Sworn Protectors, roll a d6 each time a friendly Sept character loses a wound whilst they are within three inches of this unit. On a 2+, plus, a model from this unit can intercept that hit. The character does not lose a wound, but this unit suffers a mortal wound. And they have Mantis Strike. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Battlesuit, Jetpack, Fly, and XV-8 Crisis Bodyguards. The XV-95 Ghost Kill Battlesuit uh, starts at 10 wounds. It can move 12 inches from 6 to 10 wounds. Bliss Skill hitting on 4s, 3 attacks. From 3 to 5 wounds, it can move 8 inches. Bliss Skill hitting on 5s and 2 attacks. From 1 to 2 wounds, it can move 4 inches. Bliss Skill hitting on 5s and 1 attack. It has weapon skill hitting on fives, strength and toughness six, ten wounds, leadership eight, and a three up save. The stealth drones can move twelve inches, hit on fives, strength and toughness four, one wound, one attack, leadership six, and a four up save. Uh, a ghost kill, it is, sorry, an each XV95 ghost kill battle suit consists of one Shazray accompanied by two MV20, two MV5 stealth drones. The Shazray is equipped with a fusion collider and two flamers. The Shah's Ray may replace its Fusion Collider with a Cyclic Ion Raker. It can replace both its Flamers with two Burst Cannons or two Fusion Blasters, and it may take up to two items from the Support Systems list. It has for the Greater Good, Infiltrator, Ghost Keel, Electro, Electro Warfare Suite. Your opponent must subtract one from the hit rolls made from models attacking Ghost Keel Shah's Ray from more than 12 inches away. It has Savior Protocols, a Stealth Field, so models shooting a stealth drone or a ghost kill battle suit within three inches of a friendly stealth drone subtract one from their hit rolls. This is a cumulative with ghost kill electro warfare suite ability and drone support. Uh, faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords for the ghost kill are battle suit, monster, jetpack, fly, XV-95, and ghost kill battle suit. Keywords for the stealth drone are drone, fly, MV-5 stealth drones. An XV-104 Riptide Battle Suit starts at 14 wounds, can move 12 inches with Bliss Skill of 4 plus and 4 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, it can move 8 inches, Bliss Skill hitting on 5s and 3 attacks. Uh, from 1 to 3 wounds, it can move 4, 4 inches, Bliss Skill hitting on 5s and 2 attacks. Its weapon skill is 5 up, Strength 6, Toughness 7, 14 wounds, Leadership 8 and a 2 up save. The Shielded Missile Drone can move 12 inches, hits on 5s, Strength Toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, Leadership 6 and a 4 up save. It is a single model, equipped with a heavy burst cannon and two smart missile pods. It can be accompanied by up to two uh, shielded missile drones, each equipped with a missile pod. A, Shaz, a Riptide Shazray may replace both its smart missile systems with two plasma rifles or fusion blasters, may replace its heavy burst cannon with an ion accelerator, and may take up to two items from the support systems list. It has for the greater good, Riptide Shield Generator, giving a 5-up invuln, Savior Protocols, Shield Generator, giving a if it takes one, gives it a 4-up invul, has drone support, and a Nova Reactor. In your movement phase, you can choose to use a Riptide Shaw's Ray's Nova Reactor. If you do, the Riptide suffers a mortal wound. Choose one or more of the following effects to last until the beginning of your next turn. Sorry, choose one of the following effects, not one or more. Uh, so it has Nova Shield, gains a 3-up invul and save. Boost, it can move 2d6 in your charge phase, even if it doesn't declare a charge. And Nova Charge, the Riptide Shazray's Ion Accelerator or Heavy Burst Cannon can fire using its Nova 
charge profile. Uh, faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords for the Riptide are Battlesuit, Monster, Jetpack, Fly, XV-104, Riptide, Battlesuit. And keywords for the Missile Drones are Drone, Fly, MV-84, Shield, and Missile Drones. The Pathfinder team. Uh, the Pathfinder can move 7 inches, weapon skill hitting up 5s, bliss skills on 4s. Strength and toughness 3, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 5 up save. The Shazui can move 7 inches, weapon skill and bliss skill, sorry, weapon skill hitting up 5s, bliss skill on 4s. Strength toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, and leadership 7, and a 5 up save. The Pulse Accelerator drone can move 8 inches, hits on 5s. Strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. Uh, the Grav Inhibitor drone has the exact same stat line. The MB3 Recon Drone can move 8 inches, hitting on 5s, strength 4, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 4-up save. This unit contains 5 Pathfinders. It can contain up to 5 additional. A Pathfinder Shazui can take the place of a Pathfinder. Each Pathfinder in Shazui is armed with a Marker Light, Pulse Carbine, and Photon Grenades. This unit may be accompanied by up to 2 Tactical Drones, and or an MB3 Recon Drone equipped with a Burst Cannon, and up to 2 Support Drones, one MB3 Pulse Accelerator Drone and or an MV33 Grav Inhibitor Drone. Nor your options, up to three Pathfinders may replace their Marker Lights and Pulse Carbine uh, with an Ion Rifle or a Rail Rifle. The Pathfinder Shazui may take a Pulse Pistol. Abilities are, for the greater good, Drone Support, Save Your, protofi save your Protocols, Vanguard, Recon Strike, Pulse Accelerator, Tau Empire Infantry, so units within three inches of uh, friendly Pulse Accelerator Drone have the range of their Pulse Pistols, Pulse Carbines, and Pulse Rifles increased by 6 inches. Bonding Rifle, so remember if you increase your range by 6 inches, you increase your Rapid Fire range by 3 inches. Bonding Knife Ritual and Gravity Wave Projector. Enemy units beginning a charge move within 12 inches of a Grav Inhibitor Drone reduce their charge distance by D3. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords for the Pathfinders are Infantry, Pathfinder, and... Sorry, Infantry and Pathfinder Team. Keywords for the support drones are drone, fly, and support drones, and keywords for the recon drone are drone, fly, and recon drone. Uh, TX War Piranhas can move 16 inches, weapon skill hitting on 6s, but skill hitting on 4s, strength 4, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. The gun drones that are with them can move 8 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, but skill hitting on 5s. Strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. So the unit contains one Piranha, accompanied by two Gun Drones. It can include the four additional Piranhas, each of which is accompanied by two Gun Drones. Each Piranha is equipped with a Burst Cannon, and each Gun Drone is equipped with two Pulse Carbines. Any Piranha may replace its Burst Cannon with a Fusion Blaster and take up to two Seeker Missiles. As explodes, the units within three inches suffering a mortal wound. It has Savior Protocols, Threat Identification pro Protocols, so in the shooting phase, Gun Drones can only target the nearest visible enemy unit. If two units are equally close, you may choose which is targeted. The uh, drones are attached. When a prana is set up, uh, its accompanying gun drones are attached and are treated as being embarked. Whilst the gun drones remain attached, the prana is considered to be equipped with the drone's weapons in addition to its own. Both drones can attach at the start of any of your movement phases by disembarking. From, the point, from that point onwards, the drones are treated as separate unit. Uh, they cannot reattach during the battle. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords for the Piranha are Vehicle, Fly, and TX4 Piranha. For the Drone, they are Drone, Fly, and Gun Drones. The TV4 Devilfish uh, starts at 12 wounds. From 7 to 12 wounds remaining, it can move 12 inches. Weapon skill hitting, sorry, Bliss skill hitting on 4s, 3 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds remaining, it moves 6 inches, Bliss skill hitting on 5s, and D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it moves 3 inches, with Bliss skill hitting on 6s, and 1 attack. Uh, the weapon skill of it, the Devilfish is 6+, plus, Strength 6, Toughness 7, 12 Wounds, Leadership 8, and a 3-up save. The Gun Drone can move 8 inches, hitting on 5s, Strength 3, Toughness 4, 1 Wound, 1 Attack, Leadership 6, and a 4-up save. It is a single model armed with a Burst Cannon, it's accompanied by two Gun Drones, each equipped with two Pulse Carbines. Instead of being accompanied by two Gun Drones, this model may take two Smart Missile Systems. This model may take up to two Seeker Missiles. It has Hover Tank, so distances to and from it are measured from the hull rather than its base. It explodes with the units within 6 inches, suffering D3 mortal wounds. It is turret mounting. Units attacked by Devilfish with an MB3 recon drone embarked within it do not gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. Threat and identification protocols, savior proto protocols, and attached gun drones. Uh, transport it is a Devilfish can transport up to 12 sept infantry or drone models. It cannot transport battle suits. It can transport only a single MB3 recon drone, but it does not count towards the total number of models embarked on the Devilfish. 
Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords for the Devilfish are Vehicle, Transport, Fly, TV7, Devilfish. Keywords for the Gun Drones are Drone, Fly, and Gun Drones. Sorry, TY7, Devilfish. The AX3 Razor Shark Strike Fighter uh, starts at 12 wounds. It can move 20 to 50 inches, bliss skill hitting on 4s and 3 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, it moves 20 to 30 inches, bliss skill hitting on 5s and D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it can move 20 to 25 inches, bliss skill hitting on 5s and 1 attack. Weapon skill is on 6, uh, strength and toughness 6, 12 wounds, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. An AX3 Razor Shark Strike Fighter is a single model equipped with a burst cannon, a quad ion turret, and two seeker missiles. This model may replace its burst cannon with a missile pod. It has airborne, so this model cannot charge, it can only be charged by units that can fly, and can only attack or be attacked in the fight phase by units that can fly. It has supersonic. Each time this model moves, first pivot it on the spot up to 90 degrees, and then move the model straight forward. It cannot pivot again after the initial pivot. This model advances, increase the movement characteristic by 20 inches until the end of the phase, do not roll a die. Uh, it's hard to hit. Your opponents must subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target, uh, that target this model in the shooting phase, and has crash and burn with units within six inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Vehicle, Fly, AX3, Razor Shark, Strike, Fighter. I thought we had another flyer for the Tau. The AX-39 Sun Shark Bomber uh, starts at 12 wounds, can move 20 to 50 inches, plus skill hitting on 4s and 3 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, it moves 20 to 30 inches, plus skill hitting on 5s and D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds, it moves 20 to 25 inches, plus skill hitting on 5s and 1 attack. From weapon skill hitting on 6s, strength and toughness 6, 12 wounds, leadership 6, and a 4-up save. And it comes with an MV-17 Interceptor Drone. It can move 20 inches, hits on 5s, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 4-up save. A Sun Shark Bomber is a single model equipped with a Marker Light, a Missile Pod, and two Seeker Missiles. It is accompanied by two MV-17 Interceptor Drones, each equipped with an Ion Rifle. It may take a second Missile Pod. It is airborne, supersonic, hard to hit, has Pulse Bombs. A Sun Shark Bomber may drop one Pulse Bomb as it flies over enemy units in its movement phase. To do so, after the model has moved, target one enemy, model, uh, enemy unit that it flew over. Then roll a d6. For each model in that unit, up to a maximum of 10, adding one to the result of enemy units... Uh, adding one to the result if enemy unit is infantry. For each roll of five, the target unit suffers one mortal wound. Has crash and burn with units within six inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Has attached drones and savior protocols. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are for the Sunshark Bomber are Vehicle, Fly, and AX39 Sunshark Bomber. Keywords for the Interceptor Drones are Drone, Fly, and Interceptor Drones. The Tactical Drones can move, so we have several different drones here. Uh, they all move 8 inches, they all hit on 5s, all have strength of 3, all have toughness 4, all have 1 wound, all have 1 attack, all have leadership 6, and all have a 4-up save. So that includes the gun drone, shield drone, and marker drone. This unit contains 4 tactical drones. It can include up to 4 additional or 8 additional drones. Each unit, uh, each drone in the unit must be either a gun drone armed with 2 pulse carbines, a shield drone, or a marker drone armed with a marker light. Note that this data sheet is also used for tactical drones that accompany Tau Empire units. Uh, abilities are for the greater good and drone support. Drone support says tactical drones often accompany other Tau Empire units. In such instances, a unit's data sheet will instruct you if and how many tactical drones accompany it. Uh, tactical drones included in your army in this way have the battlefield role of unit of the unit they accompany. When a unit is set up, any accompanying drones must be placed in unit coherency with it. From that point onwards, the accompanying drone are treated as a separate unit. They have savior protocols, threat identification protocols, shield generator, shield, generator, shield drones have a 4-up invuln save, and stable platform. Marker drones do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are drone, fly, and tactical drones. Vespid Stingwings can move 14 inches. Weapon skill and bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 5, and a 4-up save. The Strain Leader can move 14 inches, weapon skill, bliss skill, hitting on 4s, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, and leadership 8. Uh, so from 5 of the regular guy to 8 with the leader, and a 4-up save. This unit contains 4 Stingwings. They can include up to 4 or 8 additional Stingwings. A Vespid Strain Leader can take the place of a Vespid Stingwing. Each model is equipped with a uh, Blaster, a Neutron Blaster. Plunge from the sky. During deployment, you can set them up high in the sky instead of placing them on the battlefield. If you do, they can plunge at the end of your movement phase. Set them up anywhere more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. Faction keywords are Tau, Empire, and Vespid. Keywords are Infantry, Fly, and Vespid Stingwings. We have Firesight Marksman. 
Uh, you can move five inches. Weapon skill hitting on fives, blitz skill on three. Strength toughness three. Three wounds, two attacks, leadership seven and a four up save. This is a single model armed with a marker light and pulse pistol. As for the greater good, drone uplink. You can add one to the hit rolls for SEPT MV-71 sniper drones in the shooting phase when they attack a unit visible to a friendly SEPT far fire sight marksman. Marksman stealth field, he adds two to rather than one to his saving throws from benefiting from cover. Faction keywords are Tal Empire and Sept. Keywords are character, infantry, and fire sight marksman. MV-71 sniper drones. Uh, can move 8 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill on 5s. Strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6 and a 4 up save. So it contains 3 sniper drones. It can include up to 3 uh, or 6 sn additional sniper drones. Each uh, sniper drone is equipped with a long shot pulse rifle. Now for the greater good, save your protocols and sniper drone stealth field. So you must subtract 1 from the hit rolls your uh, enemy units... Sorry, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls for units attacking the sniper drones, unless the sniper drones are the closest enemy unit. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Drone, Fly, MV-71, and Sniper Drones. The TX-78 Skyray Gunship starts with 13 wounds, can move 12 inches, plus skill hitting on 3s and 3 attacks from 7 to 13 wounds. From 4 to 6, it can move 6 inches, plus skill hitting on 4s and D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds, it can move 3 inches, plus skill hitting on 5s and 1 attack. Uh, it is a single model equipped with two marker lights and six seeker missiles. It is accompanied by two gun drones, each equipped with two pulse carbines. Instead of being accompanied by two gun drones, this model may take two burst cannons or two start smart missile systems. It is a hover tank, explodes with units within six inches suffering D3 mortal wounds, has savior protocols, threat identification protocols, and attached drones. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords for the Skyray are Vehicle, Fly, TX-78 Skyray Gunship. Keywords for the gun drones are Drone, Fly, and Gun Drones. Do uh, long strike. Long strike starts at 13 wounds, and from 7 to 13 wounds, he can move 12 inches. Uh, Bliss skill hitting on twos and three attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, he moves 6 inches, hitting on threes, D3 attacks. And from 1 to 3 wounds, he moves 3 inches, hitting on fours with one attack. Weapon skill hitting on sixes, strength 6, toughness 7, 13 wounds, leadership 8, and a 3 up save. His gun drone moves 8 inches, hits on fives, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. He is a single model equipped with a railgun. It is accompanied by two gun drones, each equipped with two pulse carbines. Only one can be in your army. Uh, you can replace his railgun with an ion cannon. Scroll down all the way bottom here. Uh, this model may take up to two seeker missiles. Instead of being accompanied by two gun drones, this model may take up to two burst cannons or smart missile systems. As for the greater good, hover tank explodes with the units within six inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Tank ace. You can add one to wound rolls for long strikes gunship when it shoots at a vehicle or monster. Fire cast ex exemplar. You can add one to hit rolls in the shooting phase for friendly Tau Sept TX7 hammerhead gunships within six inches. Threat identification protocols, savior protocols, and attached drones. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Tau Sept. Keywords are long strikes gunship, character, uh, are sorry, keywords for long strikes gunship are character, vehicle, TX7 hammerhead gunship, fly, and long strike. And for the gun drone are drone, fly, and gun drone. A regular TX-7 hammerhead gunship starts at 13 wounds, moves 12 inches, uh, has bliss skill 3 up and with 3 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds it moves 6 inches, bliss skill hitting on 4s with D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds it moves 3 inches, hitting on 5s and 1 attack. Weapon skill hits on 6s. Strength 6, toughness 7, 13 wounds, leadership 8 and a 3 up save. The gun drone moves 8 inches, hits on 5s. Strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6 and a 4 up save. The Hammerhead Gunship is a single model equipped with a railgun that is accompanied by two gun drones, each equipped with two pulse carbines. This model can replace the railgun with an ion cannon. This model can take up to two seeker missiles. Instead of being accompanied by two gun drones, this model may take two burst cannons or the two smart missile systems. Has hover tank, explodes with models within, or sorry, units within six inches, suffering D3 mortal wounds. Savior protocols, threat identification protocols, and attached drones. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are for the Hammerhead are Vehicle, Fly, TX-7, Hammerhead Gunship. Keywords for the Gun Drones are Drone, Fly, and Gun Drones. Alright. Broadsides. One of those popular things, um, I think, <laughs> from Tau. Uh, the Broadside Shazui can move 5 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 4s. Blitz skill hitting on... Oh, sorry, weapon skill hitting on 5s. Blitz skill hitting on 4s. Strength 5, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7, and a 2 up save. A Shazray 
You move five inches, weapon skill hitting on fives, bill skill on fours, strength toughness five, six wounds, three attacks, leadership eight, and a two up save. A missile drone can move eight inches, hits on fives, strength three, toughness four, one wound, one attack, leadership six, and a four up save. It contains one Shah's Wii, can include one additional Shah's Wii, or two additional. A Shah's Ray can take the place of one Shah's Wii. Each battlesuit is equipped with a heavy rail rifle and two smart missile systems. The unit may be accompanied by two missile drones, each equipped with a missile pod, or up to two tactical drones. Any Shah's Wii or Shah's Ray may replace their heavy rail rifle with two high yield missile pods. Any Shah's Wii or Shah's Ray can replace both smart missile systems with two plasma rifles. Any Shah's Wii or Shah's Ray may take a seeker missile. Any Shah's Wii or Shah's Ray may take one item from the support systems list. Now, for the greater good, bonding knife ritual, drone support, and savior protocols. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords for the broadsides are Battlesuit XV88, broadside Battlesuit. Keywords are for the missile drones are Drone, Fly, and Missile Drones. The KV-128 Storm Surge starts at 20 wounds and can move from 11 to 20 wounds, can move, sorry, but has Bliss Skill of 4+, plus, Strength 8, and 3 attacks. From 6 to 10 wounds, has a Bliss Skill of 5+, plus, Strength 7, and D3 attacks. From 1 to 5 runes remaining, has a bliss skill hitting on 6s, strength 6, and 1 attack. It can move 6 inches, weapon skill of 5, toughness 7, 20 wounds, leadership 8, and a 3 up save. It is a single model equipped with a cluster rocket system, 4 destroyer missiles, 2 flamers, a pulse blast cannon, and 2 smart missile systems. It can replace both its flamers with 2 burst cannons or 2 air bursting fragmentation projectors. It can replace its pulse blast cannon with a pulse driver cannon, and it may be equipped with up to 3 items from the support systems list has explodes with each unit within 6 inches suffering d6 mortal wounds, stabilizing anchors. A storm surge may deploy its anchors at the end of your shooting phase. While its anchors are deployed, it may not move for any reason, and it cannot pile in an attack in the fight phase, but you can add one to its hit rolls. Storm surge can retract its anchors at the beginning of any of your movement phases, and can then move, shoot, and fight normally. Walking Battleship. This model can fall back in the movement phase and still shoot and or charge that turn and does not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. This model can only benefit from cover when making saves if it's at least half, cover half covered from the firer. The action keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are Vehicle, Titanic, and KV-128 Storm Surge. The Tidewall Drone Port, kind of the, all the Tidewall cards here. The Tidewall Drone Port can move 6 inches as Toughness 7, 10 Wounds, and... 4 up save. It is a single model. It is fitted with up to 4 tactical drones. It is a fortification. A Tidewall drone port cannot move independently, uh, see below, nor can it fight in the fight phase. Enemy models automatically hit this model in the fight phase. Do not make hit rolls, however. Uh, do not make hit rolls. However, friendly units can still target enemy units that are within 1 inch of this model. It's a mobile defense platform. If a friendly Tau Empire infantry unit is embarked on a Tidewall drone port at the beginning of your movement phase, you may move it in the movement phase. A Tidewall drone port cannot advance or charge. It is open-topped. Models embarked on this model can attack in their shooting phase, measure the range, and draw a line of sight from any point on this model. When they do so, any restriction or modifiers that apply to this model can also apply to its passengers. For example, the passenger cannot shoot if this model has fallen back in the same turn. Passenger cannot shoot except with pistols if models within one inch of an enemy unit, and so on. There's drone control systems. When you set up a tidewall drone port, you can also set up a unit of up to four tactical drones in the slots on the drone port. These drones begin the battle fully automated. They automatically shoot in each of your shooting phases if there's a friendly Tau Empire infantry unit embarked on the drone port at the beginning of your movement phase. You can take control of the drones, which then detach from the drone port and act as a separate unit that is part of your army in addition. While a friendly Tau Empire infantry unit is embarked on the drone port, the tactical drones activated in this way can use that unit's ballistic skill instead of their own, making shooting attacks. If the drone port is destroyed before the drones are activated, they are destroyed as well. It has explodes with each unit within 6 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. The Tidewall Shield Line can move 6 inches, has toughness 6, 10 wounds, and a 4 up save, and the Tidewall, Tidewall Defense Platform can move 6 inches, toughness 7, 10 wounds, and a 4 up save. It's a single model, it can also include a Tidewall defense platform. It's a fortification, uh, Tidewall network. When a Tidewall shield line that includes a Tidewall defense platform is set up on the battlefield, both models are placed within one inch of each other. Uh, from that point onward, both are treated as separate units. It is a mobile defense platform. If a friendly Tau Empire infantry is embarked on a Tidewall shield line or a Tidewall defense platform at the beginning of your movement phase, you may move it in the movement phase. Neither a Tidewall shield wall 
uh, sorry, shield, shield line or tide wall defense platform can advance or charge. It's open topped has a tide wall field. A tide wall shielding can reflect shots back at the enemy. For each save roll of 6 plus you make in the shooting phase for a tide wall shield line, the attacking unit suffers one mortal wound after they have finished shooting. And if it explodes, units within 6 inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. It is a building. A tide wall shield line and tide wall defense platform can each transport any number of Tau Empire infantry characters and one other Tau Empire infantry unit, but each can transport no more than 10 models in total. Faction keywords are Tau, Empire, and Sept. Keywords are Building, Vehicle, Transport, Tidewall, and Shield Line. And the last one, the Tidewall, Tidewall Gun Rig. Can move 6 inches, plus skill hitting on 5s. Toughness 7, 10 wounds, and a 4-up save. Single model equipped with a Supremacy Railgun. It's a fortification, open-topped, mobile defense platform, automated weapon. So, you, unless a friendly Tau Empire infantry unit is embarked on the model, its supremacy railgun can only target the nearest visible enemy. If two units are equally close, you may choose which is targeted. And if it explodes, each unit within D6 inches suffers D3 mortal wounds. Uh, as a building, this model can transport any number of Tau Empire infantry characters and one other Tau Empire infantry unit, but no more than 10 models in total. Faction keywords are Tau Empire and Sept. Keywords are building, vehicle, transport, and tidewall gun rig. Alright. Next up, we have the Tyranids army list. So, t uh, keywords for Tyranids, uh, just like Space Marines have Chapter, uh, Tau have Sept, is Hive Fleet. So they have bracket Hive Fleets, which, for example, you could use Kraken. Uh, abilities they have, other ones are Synapse. Synapse uh, is different now a little bit. Hive Fleet units that automatically pass morale tests if they are within 8 inches of any friendly Hive Fleet units with this ability. Uh, so that means no models will flee. Basically, you just plain old don't have to take that test. They have an instinctive behavior. Unless a high fleet unit with this ability is within range of the synapse ability, see above, of any friendly high fleet units, it can only target the nearest visible enemy unit if it shoots, and if it charges, it can only declare a charge against the nearest visible enemy. So not near as bad uh, as instinctive behavior used to be. They can't eat themselves anymore. They have Shadow in the Warp. For enemy psychers must subtract one from any psychic test they make if they are within 8 inches of any units with this ability. Tyranid psychers are not affected. They have the Hive Mind Discipline. So again, you can pick or roll D3 to choose your powers. They have the Horror. The Horror has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select a unit within 24 inches that is visible to the psyker. Until the start of your next uh, psychic phase, the unit must subtract one from their hit rolls and leadership characteristic. Catalyst. Catalyst is a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select a friendly Tyranids unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, each time a model from the unit suffers a wound or mortal wound, roll a d6. On a roll of 5 or 6, the model does not lose a wound. An Onslaught. Onslaught has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select a friendly Tyranids unit within 18 inches of Psyker. This unit can advance and shoot this turn without suffering any penalties or to ballistic skill, removing and shooting heavy weapons or advancing and shooting assault weapons. In addition, this unit can also charge this turn. So it can, you know, move and advance, shoot any weapon it wants, and then charge. That seems pretty good for your tier, your tier players out there. Uh, so for war gear, so going forward, whenever we refer, refer to a weapons list, these are lists we're talking about. So for basic bioweapons, we have Scything Talons, Spine Fists, and Death Spitters. Basic bio cannons are Barb Strangler, Venom Cannon, Melee bioweapons are Rending Claws, Bone Swords, Lash Whip, and Bone Sword. Monstrous bioweapons are Monstrous Rending Claws, Monstrous Bone Swords, and Lash Whip, and Monstrous Bone Sword. And Monstrous Bio Cannons are two Death Spitters and uh, Slimer Maggots, two Devourers and Brain Leech Worms, Strangle Thorn Cannon, and Heavy Venom Cannon. A model cannot be armed with more than one uh, Strangle with more than one cannon, so you can't take a, two Strangle Thorns or a Heavy Venom and a Strangle Thorn Cannon. Alright, our Hive Tyrant. Let's see if the Flyerants make a comeback again in 8th edition. Uh, so they start at 10 wounds, and they can move from 9 or 16 inches. Uh, weapon skill hitting on 2s, bliss skill hitting on 3s. From 3 to 5 wounds remaining, they can move 7 or 12 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 3s. For 1 to 2 wounds, they can move 5 or 8 inches. Weapon skill uh, hitting on 4s, and bliss skill hitting on 4s. The rest of the stat line is Strength 6, Toughness 6, 10 Wounds, 5 Attacks, Leadership 10, and a 3-up save, with a single model armed with two pairs of monstrous Scything Talons and a Prehensile Pincer Tail. A Hive Tyrant may replace one of its monstrous Scything Talons with one item from the monstrous Bio Cannons or monstrous Bio Weapons list. A Hive Tyrant may replace both pairs of monstrous Scything Talons with two items from the monstrous Bio Cannons or two items from the monstrous Bio Weapons list, 
or with one item from each list. This model may have wings. If it does, it uses the second set of move characteristic in the damage table above, and it gains the fly keyword. This model may have toxin sacs and or adrenal glands. It has shadow in the warp and synapse. It has the will of the hive mind. The range of a hive tyrant synapse and shadow in the warp abilities is 12 inch rather than 8 inch. Uh, death rows. If this model is reduced to zero wounds, roll a die. Uh, if it's a six, units within, each unit within three inches suffer D3 mortal wounds. Psychic barrier. A hive tyrant has a five up invuln save. It is a psyker, can attempt to manifest two, and attempt to deny one power. It knows smite and two powers from the hive mind discipline. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Character, Monster, Psyker, and Hive Tyrant. The Swarm Lord starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds moves 9 inches, strength 8, and 7 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds it moves 7 inches, strength 7, and 6 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds it moves 5 inches, strength 6, and 5 attacks. Its weapon skill hits on 2s, bliss skill on 3s. Toughness 6, 12 wounds, leadership 10, and a 3 up save. It's a single model armed with bone sabers a, and a prehensile, prehensile pincer tail and only one may be included in your army. It has Shadow in the Warp and Synapse, it is Psychic Barrier, a Blade Parry, add one to the Swarm Lord's Invuln saves against wounds caused by melee weapons, so it has a 4-up. It has Hive Commander, in each of your shooting phases you can pick one friendly Hive Fleet unit within 6 inches of the Swarm Lord. That unit can move and advance, if you wish, as if it were the movement phase instead of shooting. Uh, the Will of the Hive Mind, the range of Swarm Lord's Synapse and Shadow of the Warp abilities is 12 inch rather than 8. And Death Rows, if it dies, roll a dice on a 6, units within 3 inches suffer D3 mortal wounds. It is a Psyker, and can attempt to manifest 2 and nigh 2 powers in each enemy Psychic phase, it knows Smite, and 2 powers from the Hive Mind Discipline. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Hive Fleet, keywords are Character, Monster, Hive, hive Tyrant, uh, Psyker, and the Swarm Lord. Old One-Eye, uh, kind of the character Carnifex. Uh, starts at 10 wounds, weapon skill hitting on 3s, strength 7, and 5 attacks, from 6 to 10 wounds that is. From 3 to 5 wounds, it uh, has weapon skill hitting on 3s, strength 6, and 3 attacks. From 1 to 2 wounds, weapon skill hits on 4s, strength 5, and d3 attacks. Move 7 inches, has no ballista skill, toughness 7, 10 wounds, leadership 7, and a 3 up save. It's a single model armed with monstrous crushing claws, monstrous scything talons, and a thresher scythe. Only one of this model can be included in your army. Has instinctive behavior, is immoral in a mortal battering ram. Rolled one eye finishes a charge move. Roll a dice on a four plus. One enemy unit within one inch suffers d3 mortal wounds. As an alpha leader, you can add one to hit rolls in the fight phase for friendly hive fleet carnifex units that are within six inches of this model. As berserk rampage, each time you make a successful hit roll for old one eye, except for thresher scythe attacks, you may immediately make one additional attack with the same weapon against the same unit. These additional attacks do not confer extra attacks. It has regeneration. At the beginning of each of your turns, this model uh, regains one wound that it lost earlier in the battle. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Character, Monster, Carnifex, and Old One Eye. Uh, Broodlord. Can move 8 inches. Weapon skill hits on 2s. No bliss skill. Strength 5, Toughness 5, 6 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 10 and a 4 up save. It has Synapse and Shadow in the Warp. Lightning Reflexes it has a 5 up invuln. Swift and Deadly. This model can charge even if it advances this turn. Brood Telepathy. You can add one to hit rolls in the fight phase for High Fleet Gene Stealer units within six inches of any High Fleet Brood Lords. A Brood Lord can attempt to manifest one and attempt to deny one power. It knows Smite and one power from Hive Mind. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Character, Infantry, Gene Stealer, Psyker, and Brood Lord. A Tyranid Prime <coughs> sorry, uh, can move six inches, weapon skill hitting on twos, bliss skill on threes, strength five, toughness five, six wounds. 4 attacks, leadership 10, and a 3-up save. It's a single model armed with Scything Talons and a Devourer. This model may replace its Devourer with one weapon from the basic bioweapons list. This model may replace its Scything Talons with one weapon from the melee bioweapons list. This model may have Flesh Hooks. This model may have Toxin Sacks and Adrenal Glands. Has Shadow and the Warp and Synapse. As an Alpha Warrior. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Character, Infantry, and Tyranid Prime. Our Turvagon. Starts at 14 wounds, and from 8 to 14 wounds, it can move 8 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 4s, bliss skill hitting on 4s. From 4 to 7 wounds, it moves 6 inches and hits on 5s. And from 1 to 3 wounds, it moves 4 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill hitting on 6s. It's strength 7, toughness 8, 14 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 3 up save. It's a single model armed with massive scything talons. It can also fire stinger salvos. This model may replace its massive scything talons with massive crushing claws. This model may have toxin sacs and or adrenal glands. 
has Shadow and the Warp and Synapse, is a Brood Progenitor. You can reroll hit rolls of one in the shooting phase for all, all friendly Hive Fleet Termagant units within six inches of it. It has Synaptic Backlash. If a Termagant is reduced to zero wounds, roll a d6 before removing the model from the battlefield. Each friendly Hive Fleet Termagant unit within six inches of the Termagant immediately suffers that number of wardal wounds equal to the result. It can spawn Termagants. Uh, at the end of your movement phase, a Termagant can replace Termagants. Sorry, can spawn Termagants. If it does so, add a new unit of 10 Termagants to your army and set it up on the battlefield that is wholly within 6 inches of a Termagant and more than 1 inch from any from the enemy. All these models are armed with flesh borers. Alternatively, you can replace up to 10 models lost earlier in the battle in an existing unit of Termagants from your army that is within 6 inches of a Termagant. Models placed in this way must be 6 inches must be within 6 inches of the Turbagon and more than 1 inch from the enemy. You can only replace models armed with flesh bores. If you cannot place some of the models, the excess is discarded. Um, so there's no more rolling for that. You just get it, it seems like. Uh, Psyker, Turbagon can manifest 1, uh, attempt to deny 1 power. It knows Smite and 1 power from Hive Mind. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Hive Fleet. Keywords are Character, Monster, Psyker, and Turbagon. You have Tyranid Warriors. Uh, they can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill on 4s, strength toughness 4, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, a 4 up save. This model contains 3 Tyranid Warriors. It can include up to 3 additional Warriors, or up to 6 additional Warriors. Each model is armed with a pair of Scything Talons and a Devourer. Any model may replace its Devourers with one weapon from the basic bioweapons list. Any model may replace its Scything Talons with one weapon from the melee bioweapons list. For every 3 models in the unit, one model may replace its Devourer with one weapon from the basic biocannon list. All weapon models in the unit may have flesh books. All models in the unit may have toxin sacs and or adrenal glands. Abilities are Synapse and Shadow and the Warp. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry and Tyranid Warriors. Gene Stealers can move 8 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s. Strength 4, Toughness 4, 1 wound, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 5 up save. This unit contains 5 Gene Stealers. It can include up to 5, 10, or 15 additional. Each model is armed with Rending Claws. All models may also have a pair of Scything Talons. All models in the unit may have Toxin Sacks. A Flurry of Claws. Gene Stealers have four attacks instead of three, whilst their unit has ten or more models. They have Lightning Reflexes for five up Invuln. Uh, they're Swift and Deadly. Gene Stealers can charge, even if they advance this turn. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry and Gene Stealers. Termagants can move six inches. Weapon skill hitting on four. Bliss skill hitting on four. Strength three. Toughness three. One wound. One attack. Leadership five. And a six up save. This unit contains ten Termagants. It can include ten or twenty additional. Each is armed with a Flesh Borer. Any model can replace its Flesh Borer with a Devourer, Spine Fists, or a Spike Rifle. For every ten models in the unit, one model may replace its Flesh Borer with a Strangle Web. All models in the unit may have Toxin Sacks and or Adrenal Glands. And they have Instinctive Behavior and a Hall of Living, uh, living Ammunition. If this unit contains twenty or more models, you can reroll Wounds of One when it shoots. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry and Termagants. Hormagants can move 8 inches, weapon skill and bliss skill hitting on 4s, strength 3, toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 5, and a 6 up save. This unit contains 10 Hormagons. It can include 10 additional or 20 additional Hormagons, each is armed with a pair of Scything Talons. All models can take Toxin Sacks and or Adrenal Glands. They have Instinctive Behavior, Bounding Leap. Whenever this unit piles in in consolidation, it can move up to 6 inches. They have Hungering Swarm. If this unit contains 20 or more models, you can reroll Wound Rolls of 1 when it fights. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry and Hormagons. Next we have our Ripper Swarm. Can move 6 inches, hits on 5s, strength and toughness 3, 3 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 4, and a 6 up save. This unit contains 3 Ripper Swarms. It can include the 3 additional Ripper Swarms, or up to 6 additional Ripper Swarms. Uh, each model is armed with teeth, claws, and teeth. All models may t also take Spine Maws. They have Instinctive Behavior and Burrowers. During deployment, you can set them up underground. At the end of your movement, they can tunnel up, set up them up anywhere that is more within uh, that is more than nine inches away from enemy models. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Swarm and Rippers. Tyrant Guard can move seven inches. Weapon skill hitting on threes, bliss skill hitting on fours. Strength toughness five. Three wounds, two attacks, leadership six out of three up save. So you contains three of Tyrant Guard. It can include with three additional. Each is armed with Rending Claws and Scything Talons. Any model may replace its Scything Talons with Crushing Claws or a Lash Whip and Bone Sword. All models in the unit may have uh, Toxin Sacks and or Adrenal Glands. They have Instinctive Behavior, Blind Rampage. If a friendly Hive Fleet Hive Tyrant is killed within 6 inches of this unit from the end of, e from the end of that 
turn, each Tyrant Guard's attacks characteristic is increased by one for the rest of the battle. Shield Wall. Roll a dice each time a friendly Hive Tyrant, uh, sorry, Hive Fleet Hive Tyrant, loses a wound while stay within three inches of this unit. On a two plus, uh, from, on a two plus, a model from this unit intercepts that hit. The Hive Tyrant does not lose a wound, but this unit loses a mortal wound. Uh, faction keywords are Tyranids and Hive Fleet. Keywords are Infantry and Tyrant Guard. The Hive Guard can move five inches. Weapon skill hitting on fours, bliss skill hitting on threes. Strength four, toughness five, three wounds, two attacks, leadership seven, and a four up save. So you contain three Hive Guard and contain up to three more. Each model is armed with an Impaler Cannon. Any model may replace its Impaler Cannon with a Shock Cannon. All models in this unit may, may have Toxin Sacks and or Adrenal Glands. Abilities are Instinctive Behavior. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Hive Fleet. Keywords are Infantry and Hive Guard. Next we have the Lictor. Can move 9 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 2s, bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength 6, toughness 4, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 5 up save. A Lictor is a single model armed with flesh hooks, grasping talons, and rending claws. Has instinctive behavior, chameleonic skin. Your opponent must subtract 1 from their hit rolls for attacks that target this model. In addition, uh, add 2 instead of 1 to saving throws from this model when it's in cover. Hidden Hunters. During your deployment, you can set up a Lictor in hiding instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phase, the Lictor can spring from its hiding place, set up anywhere more than 9 inches away from enemy models. Uh, you can reroll the Lictor's charge distance in the turn in which it uses this ability to arrive on the battlefield. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry and Lictor. A Malice Scepter starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds, it has weapon skill hitting on 4s, strength 7, and has psychic overload of 6 units. From 4 to 6 wounds remaining, it has weapon skill hitting on 5s, uh, strength 6, and has psychic overload of 3 units. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it has weapon skills hitting on 6s, strength 5, and has psychic overload hitting on D3 units. Uh, has Shadow on the Warp and Synapse, Psychic Overload. Instead of manifesting any psychic powers in your psychic phase, a Malice Scepter can unleash brain bursting psychic tendrils. If it does so, roll a dice for each enemy unit within 6 inches to a maximum number of units shown in the damage table above. So D3, 3, or 6. On a 2 plus, the Malice Scepter deals 1 mortal wound to that unit. Psychic Barrier, a Malice Scepter has a 5 up invuln save. This model may take Adrenal Glands. A Malice Scepter can attempt to manifest one psychic power in each friendly psychic phase and attempt to deny one. Uh, it knows the smite power and one power from the hive mind discipline. Whenever Malice Scepter attempts to manifest psychic power, add one to its psychic test. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Hive Fleet. Keywords are Monster, Psyker, and Malice Scepter. Uh, Zoanthropes can move five inches. Weapon skill hitting on fours, bliss skill on threes. Strength four, toughness four, three wounds, one attack, leadership nine, and a five up save. For the Zoanthrope and Neurothrope stat lines the same. Uh, this unit contains three Zoanthropes. They can include up to three additional. A Neurothrope may take the place of one Zoanthrope. Each is armed with uh, claws and teeth. Abilities are Shadow in the Warp, Spirit Leech. A unit that includes a Neurothrope regains D3 wounds lost earlier in this battle whenever it slays an enemy model with a Smite Psychic Power. Warp Blast. Whenever this model manifests a Smite Psychic Power, it inflicts D3 additional wounds if the unit contains, a, contains four or more models. In the Warp Field, the models in this unit have a three-up invuln save. Psyker, even of zone tropes can attempt to manifest one psychic power in each friendly phase and attempt to deny one in each enemy phase. Uh, a zone trope unit of four or more can instead attempt to manifest two psychic powers in each friendly psychic phase and attempt to deny one. A zone trope uh, unit knows a smite psychic power and one power from the hive mind discipline. When manifesting or denying a psychic power with zone trope unit, first select a model in the unit. Measure range, visibility, etc. from this model. If the unit suffers the perils of the warp, it suffers D3 mortal wounds as described in the core rules, but units within 6 inches only suffer damage if the perils of the warp causes the last model in the zone trope unit to be slain. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry, Fly, Psyker, and Zone Thropes. We have Venom Thropes. They can move 5 inches, hit on 4s, Strength 4, Toughness 4, 3 wounds, 2 attacks, Leadership 5, and a 5 up save. So it contains three Venomthropes, it can include the three additional, and each is armed with Toxic Lashes. They have Instinctive Behavior, Shrouding Spores. Your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls for ranged weapons that target High Fleet infantry units within three inches of any friendly High Fleet Venomthropes. They have Toxic Miasma. At the end of the fight phase, roll a d6 for each enemy unit within one inch of any Venomthropes. On a 5+, plus, that unit suffers a mortal wound. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry, Fly, and Venomthropes. Pyrovores. Uh, they can move 5 inches, hit on 4, strength and toughness 4, 4 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 5, and a 4 up save. 
Soon it contains one Pyrovore, it can include one and or two additional. Each is armed with a Flame Spurt and Acid Maw. They have instinctive behavior and acidic blood. Each time this model loses a wound in the fight phase, roll a dice. On a 6+, the unit that inflicted the damage suffers a mortal wound after all the attacks have been resolved. Volatile. When a Pyrovore is slain, roll a dice. On a 4+, it bursts into a shower of acid. The nearest enemy unit within 3 inches, if any, suffers a mortal wound. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Faction uh, so regular keywords are Infantry and Pyrovores. A har Haru Specs starts at 13 wounds, and from 8 to 13 wounds, it uh, has weapon skill and the skill hitting on 4s. Strength 7, from 4 to 7 wounds, it has weapon skill hitting on 4s, but the skill hitting on 5s, and strength 6, from 1 to 3 wounds, it uh, has hits on 5s and strength 5. It can move 7 inches, toughness 8, 13 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 6, and a 3 up save. It is a single model armed with Grasping Tongue, a Ravenous Maw, and Shoveling Claws. has instinctive behavior, Acid Blood, Rapacious Hunger. Each time a Harspec slays an enemy model with its Ravenous Maw, it can immediately make one extra attack with its, sho with its Shoveling Claws. In addition, at the end of a fight phase, in which a Harspec slew any enemy models with its Ravenous Maw, it regains one wound lost earlier in the battle. It has Frenzied Death Rose. When it dies, roll a dice on a 6. Uh, each unit within 3 inches suffers 3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monster and Harspecs. Death Leapers. Can move 9 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 2s. Bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength 6. Toughness 4. Uh, 6 wounds. 4 attacks. Leadership 10 and a 5 up save. Death Leaper is a single model armed with flesh hooks, grasping talons, and rending claws, and only one can be in your army. Has instinctive behavior. Superior chameleonic skin. Your opponent must subtract 2 from their hit rolls for attacking... Uh, for attacks that target a Death Leaper. In addition, add two instead of one saving throws for Death Reaper for Death Leaper when it is in cover. It's after me. During deployment, you can set up Death Leaper in hunt of a victim instead of placing it on the battlefield. If you do so, at the start of the first battle round or before the first turn begins, pick a character from the opposing army. At the end of your movement phases, Death Leaper can pounce upon its victim. Set it up anywhere in the battlefield just within six inches, within six inches, of the enemy character you chose, but more than one inch away from any enemy models. Uh, faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Character, Imagery, Lictor, and Death Leaper. That's why you can only have one in your army right there. Uh, the Red Terror can move 12 inches, weapon skill hitting on 2s, bliss skill hitting on 4s, strength and toughness 5, 6 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 7, and a 4 up save. It's a single model armed with a prehensile pincer tail and two pairs of scything talons, and only one can be in your army. It has instinctive behavior, death from below, during deployment set up underground instead of placing on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, uh, set it up anywhere in the battlefield that is more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. Feeding Frenzy. You can add one to the hit rolls for the fight phase for friendly high fleet raveners, uh, units that are within six inches of this model, and swallow whole. If four or more of the Red Terror's Scything Talons attacks hit, instead of causing damage normally, the Red Terror can attempt to swallow a victim whole. Roll a d6, and if the result, roll result is equal to, or higher than the highest wounds characteristic of the unit, one model from that unit is slain. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet, keywords are Character, Imagery, and the Red Terror. Tyranid Shrikes can move 12 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, blitz skill hitting on 4s, strength and toughness 4, uh, 3 wounds, four, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 4 up save. Uh, this unit contains 3 Shrikes, it can include up to 3 or 6 additional, each is armed with Devourer and Scything Talons. Warrior Options. Any model may replace its Devourer with one weapon from the basic bioweapons list. Any model may replace Scything Talons with one weapon from the melee bioweapons list. For every 3 models in the unit, one may replace its Devourer with one weapon from the biocannon list. All models in the unit have flesh hooks, may have flesh hooks. All models in the unit may have toxin sacks and or adrenal glands. Abilities are Synapse, Shadow, and Warp. Faction keywords are Tyranids, High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry, Fly, and Tyranid Shrikes. Uh, Raveners move 12 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength toughness 4, 3 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 5, and a 5 up save. So you contains 3 Ravenors, and can contain up to 3 or 6 additional. Each is armed with 2 pairs of Scything Talons. Any enemy models replace one of its pairs of Scything Talons with Rending Claws. Any models may have Spine Fists, a Devourer, or a Death Spitter. Instinctive Behavior and Death from Below are its uh, abilities. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry and Raveners. So we have the Sky Slasher Swarm. Uh, can move 12 inches, hits on 5s, Strength Toughness 3, 3 wounds, 4 attacks, Leadership 4, and a 6 up save. This model contains 3 Sky Slasher Swarms. It can include up to 3 or 6 additional. Each is armed with claws and teeth. Warrior options, all models in the unit may also take spine maws. Abilities are instinctive behavior. 
Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Swarm, Fly, and Skylashers. Gargoyles can move 12 inches. Weapon skill hitting of 4s, Bill skill hitting of 4s. Strength 3, Toughness 3, 1 Wound, 1 Attack, Leadership 5, and a 6-up save. This unit contains 10 Gargoyles. It can include up to 10 uh, additional or 20 additional. Each model is armed with a Flesh Bore and Blinding Venom. All models in the unit can have Toxin Sacks and or Adrenal Glands. It has Instinctive Behavior and Hall of living, li Hail of Living Ammunition. Uh, faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Infantry, Fly, and Gargoyles. A Harpy starts at 12 wounds. And from 7 to 12 wounds, it can move 10 to 30 inches. Weapon skill hitting of 4s, Blitz skill hitting of 4s. From 4 to 6 wounds, it moves 10 to 20 inches. Weapon skill hitting of 4s, Blitz skill hitting of 5s. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it moves 10 to 15 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 5s and Blitz skill hitting on 5s. His strength 6, toughness 6, 12 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 4 up save. It is a single model armed with 2 Stranglethorn cannons and Scything wings. It can also uh, have Stinger salvos. This model may replace both its Stranglethorn cannons with two heavy Venom cannons. It has instinctive behavior, Death Rose, uh, with models within 3 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds, Sonic Screech. When a Harpy successfully charges until the end of the turn, units within 1 inch cannot be chosen to fight until all other eligible units have done so. It has Spine Mine Cysts, no, sorry, Spore Mine Cysts. A Harpy can drop Spore Mine Cysts as it fly over, flies over enemy units in movement phase. To do so, after the Harpy has moved, pick one enemy unit that it flew over and roll a d6 for each model in the unit, up to a maximum of 3 dice. Each time you roll a 4+, plus, a Spore Mine has hit the target and, explode, and explodes. Roll a d6 to find out how much damage is inflicted on the unit. On a 1, Spine More fails to inflict any damage. On a 2 to 5, it inflicts 1 mortal wound. On a 6, it inflicts d3 mortal wounds. Each time a Spore Mine misses its target, set up a single Spore Mine anywhere within 6 inches of the target unit and more than 3 inches from any enemy model. If the Spore Mine cannot be placed, it is destroyed. Uh, this then follows... Oh, sorry. This then follows the rules for Spore Mines, page 103, that are part of your army, but it cannot move or charge during the turn it was set up. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monsters, Fly, and Harpy. Or we have our Hive Crone. Starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds, moves 10 to 30 inches and hits on 4s. From 4 to 6 wounds, it moves 10 to 20 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 4s, Blitz skill hitting on 5s. From 1 to 3 wounds, it moves 10 to 15 inches. Weapon skill and Blitz skill hitting on 5s. From str it's Strength 6, Toughness 6, 12 wounds, 4 attacks, Leadership 9, and a 4 up save. A Hive Crone is a single model armed with a Drool Cannon, Tentaclids, Scything Wings, and a Wicked Spur. It can also fire Stinger Salvos has instinctive behavior, and death throws with each unit within 3 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords, keywords are Monster, Fly, and Hive Crone. Uh, Mucolid Spores can move 3 inches, Strength 1, Toughness 3, 3 wounds, 1 attack, Leadership 10, and a 6 up save. So unit contains 1 Mucolid Spore. It can include 1 or 2 additional. has instinctive behavior, Float Down. During deployment, you can set up a Mucolid Spore in the upper atmosphere instead of on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phase, it can float down the battlefield, set up anywhere that is more than 12 inches from any enemy models. It is floating death. A Mucolid spore, spore explodes if it is within 3 inches of any enemy units at the end of any charge phase. Each time a Mucolid Spore explodes, roll a d6. On a 1, it fails to inflict any harm. On a 2 to 5, it inflicts d3 mortal wounds on the nearest enemy unit. On a 6, it inflicts d6 mortal wounds on that unit. The Mucolid Spore is then destroyed. Faction, or sorry, uh, Living Bombs, also, they have... Mucolid spores automatically pass morale tests. Furthermore, mucolid spores are, dis are discounted for the purposes of any victory conditions. Their destruction never awards victory points. They do not count towards the number of models controlling any objective. They do not count when determining if a player has any models left on the battlefield. If you are playing a match play game, the creation of new mucolid spores, e.g. from a sporocyst, spore node ability, is free, and the mucolid spores point cost does not uh, come out of your pool of reinforcement points. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Fly and Mucolid Spores. Spore Mines move 3 inches. Strength 1, Toughness 1, 1 Wound, 1 Attack, Leadership 10, and a 7-up save. They have Instinctive Behavior, Float Down, Floating Death, and Living Bombs. Keywords are Tyranid and High Fleet. Keywords are Fly and Spore Mines. Uh, a Tyrannocyte starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds, it can move 6 inches, Strength 5, and has D6 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, it can move 4 inches, Strength 4, and D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds, it can move 2 inches, Strength 3, and 1 attack. Has weapon skill, bliss skill, hitting on 5s. Toughness 6, 12 wounds. Leadership 7, a 4-up save. 
is a single model armed with five death, sp death spitters. This model may replace all of its death spitters with either five barbed stranglers or five venom cannons. It has instinctive behavior, invasion organism. During deployment, you can set up a Tyrannocyte in its hive ship instead of placing it on the battlefield. If you do, the hive ship can launch the Tyrannocyte at the end of any movement phases. Set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. Any models that are inside the Tyrannocyte, see right, must immediately disembark in the same manner as the unit disembarking from a transport, except that they must be set up more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. Any models that cannot be set up in this way are destroyed. Transport Spore. You can set up a Tyrannocyte in its Hive Ship. You can also set up High Fleet Infantry units of 20 models, or a High Fleet Monster within, uh, with a Wounds characteristic of 14 or less in, inside it. This cannot be another Tyrannocyte or a Sporocyst. They have Death Rows, with units within 3 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monster, Fly, and Tyrannocyte. So we have Carnifexes. You can move 7 inches, hit on 4s, strength 6, toughness 7, uh, 8 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 6, and a 3-up save. So it contains 1 Carnifex. It contain, can contain 1 or 2 additional. Each model is armed with 2 pairs of monstrous Scything Talons and a Thresher Scythe. Any model may replace one of its pairs of monstrous Scything Talons with an item from the monstrous Biocannon list. Any model may replace both of its uh, pairs of monstrous Scything Talons with 2 items from the monstrous Biocannon's list. Any model may replace one of its pairs of monstrous scything talons with monstrous cut monstrous crushing claws. Any model may replace its special scythe with a bone mace. Any model may have toxin sacs and or adrenal glands. Any model may also be armed with bioplasma. Has instinctive behavior, living battering ram. When a carnifex finishes a charge move, roll a dice on a 4+, plus, one enemy unit within one inch suffers a mortal wound. Has monstrous brood. The first time this unit is set up on the battlefield, all of its models must be placed within 6 inches of at least one other model in the unit. From that point on, each uh, operates independently and is treated as a separate unit. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monstrous, uh, Monster, and Carnifex. Biovores can move 5 inches, hit on 4s, Strength 4, Toughness 4, 4 wounds, 2 attacks, Leadership 5, and a 4-up save. So unit contains 1 Biovore, and can contain up to 1 or 2 additional. Each model is armed with a Spore Mine Launcher. They have instinctive behavior, a spore mine launcher. Each time a spore mine launcher hits the target, roll a d6 to find out how much damage is inflicted on the target. On a 1, the spore mine fails to inflict any harm. On a 2 to 5, it inflicts 1 mortal wound. On a 6, it inflicts d3 mortal wounds. Each time a spore mine launcher misses the target, set up a single spore mine model anywhere within 6 inches of the target until a uh, target unit and more than 3 inches from any enemy models. If the spore mine cannot be placed, it is destroyed. This then follows the rules for a spore mine uh, that is part of your army but cannot move or charge during the turn it was set up. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet, keywords are Infantry and Biovores. A Trigon Prime starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds, it can move 9 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill on 4s. Uh, from 4 to 6 wounds, it can move 7 inches, weapon skill hitting on 4s, bliss skill on 5s. From 1 to 3 wounds, it moves 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, bliss skill on 6. This model may replace its Biostatic Rattle with a Prehensile Pinsir Tail or Toxin Spike. This model may have toxin sacs and or adrenal glands, has shadow in the warp and synapse, has subterranean assault. During deployment, you can set up a Trigon Prime underground instead of placing it on the battlefield. At that time, you can set up a High Fleet Troops unit in the Trigon Prime's tunnel. At the end of your movement phase, set up the Trigon Prime anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. If there is another unit in the Trigon Prime's tunnel, set it up at the same time, wholly within 3 inches of the Trigon Prime and more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. Any models that you cannot place in this way are destroyed. It has death rows with units within 3 inches suffering d3 mortal wounds. Uh, faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monster and Trigon Prime. Uh, we have our Trigon. Starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds it moves 9 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, bliss skill on 4s. Uh, from 4 to 6 wounds it moves 7 inches, weapon skill hitting on 4s, bliss skill on 5s. From 1 to 3 wounds it moves 5 inches, weapon skill hitting on 5s, and bliss skill on 6s. It's strength 7, toughness 6, 12 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 7, and a 3 up save. It is a single model armed with a bioelectric pulse, 3 pairs of massive scything talons, and a toxin spike. This model may replace its Toxin Spike with a Prehensile Pincer Tail. This model may have Toxin Sacs and or Adrenal Glands. It has Instinctive Behavior, Subterranean Assault, and Death Throws, with units within 3 inches suffering D3 Mortal Wounds. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monster and Trigon. A Moloch starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds remaining, it moves 9 inches, weapon skill hitting on 4s, and 6 strength. 
From four to six wounds, it moves seven inches, weapon skill hitting on fives, and strength five. From one to three wounds, it moves five inches, weapon skill hitting on six, and strength four. It has instinctive behavior, terror from the deep. During deployment, you can set up a Moloch underground instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, set up the Moloch anywhere on the battlefield that is more than one inch away from any enemy models and more than six inches from any other Molochs set up this way uh, this turn. Then roll a d6 for each enemy model within two inches of it. On a 1, then that unit escapes unharmed. On a 2 to 3, it suffers one mortal wound. On a five, 4 to 5, it suffers d3 mortal wounds. And on a 6, it suffers three mortal wounds. The Moloch cannot charge in the same turn. It has Burrow. At the beginning of any of your movement phases, any Moloch that is not within one inch of an enemy unit can burrow. Remove it from the battlefield. It can return as described in the Terror from the Deep ability. A Moloch may not burrow and return to the battlefield in the same turn. If the battle ends and the Moloch is underground, it is considered to be slain. It has Death Throws, with units within three inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet, keywords are Monster and Moloch. An Exocrine starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds, has weapon skill hitting on 4s, list skill hitting on 4s, and 3 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, it has weapon skill hitting on 4s, list skill hitting on 5s, and D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it has weapon skill hitting on 5s, and list skill hitting on 5s, and 1 attack. It can move 6 inches, strength 7, toughness 8, 12 wounds, leadership 6, and a 3-up save. An Exocrine is a single model armed with a bioplasmic cannon and powerful limbs. Uh, it has instinctive behavior, symbiotic targeting. If this model does not move in movement phase, you can add one to its hit rolls in the shooting phase. If you do so, it cannot charge in the same turn. It has Weapon Beast. If this model does not move in your movement phase, it can shoot all of its weapons twice in your shooting phase. And Death Throws, with units within three inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monster and Exocrine. Uh, we have Tyrannofex. I think this is our last page. Don't don't quote me. Uh, Tyrannofex uh, starts at 14 wounds, and from 8 to 14 wounds, Bliss Skill hitting on 4s, Strength 7 with 4 attacks. From 4 to 7 wounds, Bliss Skill hitting on 5s, Strength 6 and 3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it has Bliss Skill hitting on 5s, Strength 5 and 2 attacks. Uh, it has a movement of 6 inches, Weapon Skill hitting on 4s, Toughness 8, 14 wounds, Leadership 7 and 3 up save. A Tyrannifex is a single model armed with acid spray and powerful limbs. It can also fire stinger salvos. This model can replace its acid spray with a flesh borer, hive, or rupture cannon. It has instinctive behavior. A biotank, this model does not suffer the penalty to its hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. It is a weapon beast. Uh, it has death rows with units within 3 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. Its faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monster and Tyrannifex. Boop. Uh, Toxicrin starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds, it has weapon skill hitting on 4s, strength 7 and 6 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, it has weapon skill hitting on 5s, strength 6 and 5 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds, it has weapon skill hitting on 6s, strength 5 and 4 attacks. This Toxicrin uses a single model armed with choking spores and massive toxic lashes. It has instinctive behavior, acid blood, uh, hypertoxic miasma, and frenzied death throws with the units within 3 inches suffering 3 mortal wounds. Faction keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet. Keywords are Monster and Toxicrine. And we have Sporocyst. Uh, from starts at 12 wounds. From 7 to 12 wounds remaining, it's Strength 5 and D6 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds remaining, it's Strength 4 with D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds remaining, it's Strength 3 with 1 attack. It hits on 5s, Toughness 6, 12 wounds, Leadership 7 and a 4 up save. A Sporocyst is a single model armed with 5 Death Spitters. Uh, this model may replace all of its death spitters with either five barbed stranglers or five venom cannons. It has instinctive behavior, bombardment organism. Uh, during deployment, you may, can set up a sporocyst in its hive ship instead of placing it on the battlefield. If you do so, being of your first battle round but before the first turn begins, the hive ship can launch the sporocyst. Set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches from any enemy models. It's a biofortress. A sporocyst can shoot uh, with its weapons even if enemies are within one inch of it. It is immobile, it cannot move for any reason. It has a Psychic Resonator. If a Sporocyst is within range of a friendly Hive Fleet unit's Synapse ability, uh, the Sporocyst has the Synapse ability. There's a Spore Node. Each time a Spore Node attacks, a Spore Node attack hits its target, roll a d6 to find out how much damage it has inflicted on the unit. On a 1, it fails to inflict any harm. On a 2 to 5, it inflicts d3 mortal wounds. On a 6, they inflict d6 mortal wounds. Each time a Spore Node attack misses its target, set up a single Mucolid Spore, or a unit of up to three spore mines anywhere within six inches of the target unit and more than three inches from any enemy model. Any models that cannot be placed are destroyed. 
These then follow the rules for Euclid Spores or Spore Mines that are part of your army, but they cannot move or charge during the turn they were set up. They have Death Throws, the units within 3 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds. The action keywords are Tyranids and High Fleet, keywords are Monster and Sporocyst. Alright, that was our last page. So our last uh, entry for this index are Gene Stealer Cults. So uh, just like... So Gene Stealer Cults keyword. Uh, if your army is battleforged, a unit can only make use of this ability if every in its data sheet is a Gene Stealer Cult keyword. Uh, so everything has to have a Gene Stealer Cult keyword. Well, let me read this whole thing. Uh, it's called Ambush. During the deployment, you can set this unit up in Ambush instead of on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, it can launch an ambush. When it does so, roll a die and consider the table below. If you wish, before rolling on the cult ambush table for a Gene Steer the Cult character, you could pick one for any Gene Steer the Cult's infantry unit. You will also set up an ambush to arrive with them. Make one roll on the cult ambush table and apply the same result to both units. However, each of these units must be set up within six inches of each other. If your army is battleforged, a unit can only use this ability if every uh, unit is a if every unit in the, its detachment has a gene steer the cult's keyword. Okay, so every unit in the detachment has to be a gene steer the cult, just like how to get chapter abilities, things have to be from the same chapter. All right. Uh, on questioning loyalty, each time a gene steer the cult's character loses a wound whilst they are within three inches of any friendly gene steer the cult's infantry units. Pick one of those units and roll a die on a 4+. plus. The character does not lose a wound, but one model in the unit you picked, your choice, is slain. So I'll read the Cult Ambush ability before we continue. Uh, cult Reinforcements. Your opponent nominates any two battlefield edges, one after another, and then you roll a die. On a 1-3, to three, set up the unit wholly within 6 inches of the first edge. On a 4-6, to six, set up wholly within 6 inches of the other. The unit must be set up more than 9 inches from any enemy models. Circling Encircling the foe. Uh, on a 2 you, nominate, you nominate, nominate any two battlefield edges, one after the other, then you roll a die, On a, uh, your opponent rolls a die, on a 1 to 3, set up wholly within 6 inches of the first edge, on a 4 to 6, set up wholly within 6 of the second. The unit must be set up more than 9 inches from any enemy models. Lying in wait on a 3, set the unit up anywhere that is more than 12 inches from any enemy models, alternately, set it up anywhere that is more than 9 inches from any enemy models, and not visible to any enemy models. A perfect ambush on a 4. Set the unit up anywhere that is more than 9 inches from any enemy models. Number 5. A deadly trap. Set the unit up anywhere that is more than 9 inches from any enemy models. It can either move d6 or shoot with all of its ranged weapons as if it were the shooting phase. Doing so does not prevent it from shooting in the shooting phase or charging in the charge phase this turn. Uh, and number six, they came from below. Set up the unit anywhere that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. The unit can then move normally, even has just arrived as reinforcements. So that's the one you want. That's the one that lets you come up nine inches away, move five or six inches, shoot and charge. That's the one you want. Uh, Broodmind Discipline. So again, you can roll a d3 or pick off the Broodmind Discipline. Uh, first one, Mass Hypnosis, has a warp charge value of seven. If manifested, select a visible enemy unit within 18 inches of Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, the target cannot fire Overwatch. Fights last, uh, sorry, fights last in the fight phase, even if it, it charged, and must subtract one from its hit rolls. Mind Control. Mind Control has a warp charge value of six. If manifested, pick an enemy model within 12 inches of Psyker and roll 3d6. If the score is less than that model's leadership, nothing happens, but if it is equal to or greater, that model can immediately shoot another enemy unit of your choice or make a single close combat attack against it, as if it were part of your army. Models cannot attack themselves, but they can attack other members of their unit. That's pretty good. You pick like a Gorkonaut, Gorkonaut, a Land Raider, something like that. Seems good. Uh, Might from Beyond has a warp charge value of 7. If manifested, select a friendly Gene Stealer Cult's infantry unit within 18 inches of Psyker. Add 1 to the strength and attacks characteristic of all models in the unit until the start of your next Psychic phase. So not a bad uh, Psyker discipline. So War Gear, when we refer to tables in the following data cards, these are the tables we're referring to. Special Weapons, Flamer, Grenade Launcher, and Weber. Pistols are Bolt, pa bolt Pistol, Last Pistol, and Web Pistol. Melee Weapons are Chainsword, Power Maul, Power Pick, and Cultist Knife. Heavy mining weapons are heavy stubber, uh, mining laser, and seismic cannon. And heavy weapons are auto cannon, heavy bolter, las cannon, mortar, and missile launcher. Let's get to the actual units. The Patriarch can move 8 inches. Uh, weapon skill hitting on 2s, bliss skill on 3s. 
Strength 6, Toughness 5, 6 Wounds, 6 Attacks, Leadership 10, 4 Up Save, and His Familiar can move 6 inches, Weapon Skill hitting on 3s. Strength 4, Toughness 3, 1 Wound, 2 Attacks, Leadership 8, and a 6 Up Save. Has Cult Ambush and Unquestioning Loyalty. Brood Telepathy, you can add 1 to hit rolls in the fight phase for friendly, pure strain Gene Stealer units within 6 inches of this model. Living Idol, Gene Stealer Cult units within 6 inches of any friendly Patriarchs automatically pass morale. Uh, Lightning Reflex is a Patriarch has a 5 up invuln save. Swift and Deadly, a Patriarch can charge even if it advanced during its turn. Familiars, if a Patriarch is accompanied by any Familiars, once per game, after the Patriarch has manifested a psychic power, its Familiars can lend its additional power. If they do so, the Patriarch can immediately attempt to manifest an additional psychic power. When rolling to wound with this unit, always use the Patriarch's toughness uh, while it is on the battlefield. The death of a Familiar is ignored for the purposes of morale. Speaking of, a Patriarch is a single model armed with a monstrous rending claws. It can be accompanied by up to two familiars. A Patriarch can attempt to manifest one psychic power and attempt to deny one psychic power. It knows smite and one power from the Broodmind discipline. A Magus can move six inches, hits on threes, strength three, toughness three, four wounds, three attacks, leadership eight, and a five up save. A familiar moves six inches, weapon skill hitting on threes, strength four, toughness three, one wound, two attacks, leadership eight, and a six up save. A Magus is a single model armed with an auto pistol and force stave. It may be accompanied by up to two familiars. Has cult ambush and unquestioning loyalty. It's a spiritual leader. Uh, each friendly genes to their cults unit within six inches of this model at the start of your opponent's psychic phase can attempt to deny one psychic power that targets them during that phase as if they were themselves a psyker. Measure range to any model in the unit. Familiars, they have, uh, sorry, they have familiars as well. Uh, a Magus can attempt to manifest one and deny one power in no smite and one power from the Broodmind discipline. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cult. Keywords are for the Magus are Infantry, Character, Psyker, and Magus. Keywords for the Familiars are Infantry, Gene Stealer, and Familiar. A Primus can move 6 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 2s, Bliss skill hitting on 3s. Strength 4, Toughness 3, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, Leadership 9, and a 3 up save. Sorry, 5 up save. A Familiar moves 6 inches. Weapon skill hitting on 3s, Bliss skill hitting on 4s. Strength 4, Toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, Leadership 8, and a 6 up save. It's a single model armed with a needle pistol, bone sword, toxin injector claw, and blasting charges. Uh, has cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty. Is a cult demagogue. You can add one to all hit rolls in the fight phase for genes to your cults units that are within six inches of any friendly Primus models. And is a meticulous planner. When a Primus arrives on the battlefield using the cult ambush ability, you can re-roll the result on the cult ambush table. If you choose for a unit to arrive with them, the new result applies to that unit as well. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cults. Keywords are Infantry, Character, and Primus. An Acolyte Icon Ward uh, moves 6 inches, hits on 3s, Strength 4, Toughness 3, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, Leadership 8, and a 5 up save. Has a single model armed with an Auto Pistol, Rending Claw, and Blasting Charges. Has Cult Ambush and Unquestioning Loyalty. Is a Nexus of Devotion. Roll a d6 each time a friendly Gene Stealer Cults infantry model within 6 inches of this model loses a wound. On a 6th wound is ignored has a sacred cult banner. You can reroll failed morale tests for this uh, for friendly gene stealer cults units within six inches of this model. Faction keywords are Tyranids, Gene Stealer, and Cultists. Sorry, and Cults. Keywords are Infantry, Character, and Acolyte Icon Ward. So you have the Acolyte Hybrids. Uh, so the hybrid and the leader both move on both move six inches. Both hit on three's weapon skill, both hit on four's ballista skill, both strength four, both Toughness 3. Both have 1 wound. The leader has leadership has 3 attacks, leadership 8, and a 5-up save. The regular hybrid has 2 attacks, leadership 7, and a 5-up save. It contains 4 acolyte hybrids and 1 leader. It may contain up to 5, 10, or 15 additional hybrids. Each model is armed with an auto pistol, cultist knife, rending claw, and blasting charges. Any model may replace its auto pistol with a hand flamer. One acolyte may carry a cult icon. For every 5 models in the unit, up to 2 acolyte hybrids can replace their cultist knife. With, and Rending Claw with a Heavy Rock Drill, Heavy Rock Cutter, Heavy Rock Saw, or Demolition Charges. The Acolyte Leader may replace its Cultist Knife with a Bone Sword, and the Leader may replace its Cultist Knife and Auto Pistol with a Lash Whip and Bone Sword. They have Cult Ambush and Unquestioning Loyalty, and Cult Icon. Whilst the bear of a Cult Icon is alive, you can reroll hit rolls of one for its unit in the fight phase. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cults. Keywords are Infantry and Acolyte Hybrids. Neophyte Hybrids. Uh, so Neophyte Hybrid and the leader, both can move 6 inches, both hit on 4s, both strength and toughness 3, 1 wound, the leader has 2 attacks, leadership 8 and a 5 up save, and the regular hybrid has 1 attack, leadership 7 and a 5 up save. The weapons team moves 6 inches, hits on 4s, strength and toughness 3, 
2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7 and a 5 up save. This unit contains 9 hybrids and 1 leader. It can contain, can contain up to 10 additional hybrids. Each model is armed with an autogun, auto pistol, and blasting charges. Any neophyte hybrid may replace its autogun with a shotgun or a las gun. One hybrid may carry a cult icon. Up to two neophyte hybrids can replace their autoguns with one item from the special weapons list. A neophyte leader may replace its autogun and auto pistol with one item from the pistols list and one item from the melee weapons list. Up to two hybrids may replace their autogun with one item from the heavy, weapon, heavy mining weapons list. Instead, two neophyte hybrids may, may form a single neophyte weapons team. This team does not have auto guns, but instead has one item from the heavy weapons list. Uh, abilities are Cult Ambush and Unquestioning Loyalty, and they have a cult icon. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Gene Seer Cults. Keywords are Infantry and Neophyte Hybrids. Hybrid Metamorphs. Metamorphs. Hybrid Metamorphs. Uh, they can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, blitz skill hitting on 4s, strength 4, toughness 3, 1 wound. The leader has 3 attacks, leadership 8 and 5 up save. The metamorph has 3 attacks, leadership 7 and a 5 up save. So unit contains 4 metamorphs and 1 leader. They can include up to 5 more metamorphs. Each model is armed with an auto pistol, rending claw, talon, metamorph talon, and blasting charges. Any model can replace its rending claw with a metamorph talon. Any model can replace its metamorph talon with a metamorph whip. Any model can replace its metamorph talon with a rending claw. Uh, sorry, metamorph talon and rending claw with a metamorph claw. Any model may replace its auto pistol with a hand flamer. A metamorph leader may take a bone sword. One hybrid metamorph may carry a cult icon. Abilities are cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty, and cult icon. Faction keywords are tyranids, gene steer cults. Keywords are infantry and hybrid metamorphs. Aberrants can move 6 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, plus skill on 6s, strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7 and 5 up save. This unit contains 4 aberrants, it can contain up to 4 additional aberrants. Each model is armed with a power pick and rending claw. Any model may replace its power pick with a power hammer. Uh, abilities include cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty, and bestial vigor, which says, when inflicting damage upon an aberrant, reduce the damage of the attack by 1 to a minimum of 1. Faction keywords are Tyranids, Gene Stealer Cults, keywords are Imagery, and Aberrants. Pure Strain Gene Stealers can move, six, can move 8 inches, weapon skill hitting on 3s, strength and toughness 4, 1 wound, 3 attacks, leadership 9, a 3 up save. This unit contains 5 Pure Strain Gene Stealers, it can conclude, include up to 5, 10, or 15 additional. Each Gene Stealer is armed with Rending Claws. Any model may also take Pure Strain Talons. They have Cult Ambush, Unquestioning Loyalty, Flurry of Claws, pure, tra pure Strain Gene Stealers have 4 attacks instead of 3, whilst the unit has 10 or more models. Uh, Lightning Reflexes, they have a 5-up Invuln save. Swift and Deadly, they can charge even if they advance during this turn. Faction Keywords are Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cults. Keywords are Infantry, Gene Stealers, and Pure Strain Gene Stealers. Uh, the Goliath Truck. I love how they steal vehicles. Uh, so it starts at 10 wounds, and from 6 to 10 wounds it can move 12 inches, blitz skill hitting on 4s and 3 attacks. From 3 to 5 wounds it can move 8 inches, blitz skill hitting on 5s and d3 attacks. From 1 to 2 wounds remaining, uh, they can move 4 inches, blitz skill hitting on 6s and 1 attack. Weapon skill is hitting on 6s, strength and toughness hit are 6, 10 wounds, leadership 7 and a 4 up save. It is a single model equipped with a heavy stubber and twin auto cannon. It may take a cache of demolition charges. It explodes, uh, with each unit within 6 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds is open topped. Models embarked on this model can attack in their shooting phase, measure uh, the range and draw line of sight from any point on the model. When they do so, uh, restrictions or modifiers that apply to this model also apply to its passengers. For example, passengers cannot shoot if this model has fallen back in the same turn, cannot shoot except with pistols if the model is within 1 inch of an enemy unit, and so on. Uh, rugged construction. Roll a D6 each time this model loses a wound. On a 6, the wound is ignored. Transport. A Goliath truck can transport up to 10 Gene Stealer Cults infantry models. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cults. Keywords are Vehicle, Transport, and Goliath Truck. The Cult Chimera starts at 10 wounds, and from 6 to 10 wounds can move 12 inches. Bus skill hitting on 4s, attacks, uh, and 3 attacks. From 3 to 5 wounds, it moves 8 inches. Bus skill hitting on 5s and D3 attacks. From 1 to 2 wounds, it moves 4 inches. Bus skill hitting on 6s and 1 attack. Weapon skill hits on 6s. Strength 6, toughness 7, 10 wounds, leadership 7 to 3 up save. It's a single model equipped with a multi laser, heavy bolter, and two las gun arrays. This model may replace its heavy bolter with a heavy flamer. It may replace its multi laser with a heavy flamer or heavy bolter. It may take hunter killer missile. 
it may take a Storm Bolter or a Heavy Stubber. It explodes with units within 6 inches suffering D3 mortal wounds, and has smoke launchers. Once per game, instead of shooting any weapons in the shooting phase, this model can use its smoke launchers. If it does so, until your next shooting phase, your opponent must subtract 1 from any hit rolls that target it. Transport. Uh, a Cult Chimera can transport up to 12 Gene Stealer Cult inventory models. Faction keywords are Tyranids Gene Stealer Cults. Keywords are Vehicle, Transport, and Chimera. The Cult Scout Sentinels can move 9 inches, hit on 4s, strength and toughness 5, 6 wounds, 1 attack, leadership 7, and a 4 up save. So it contains 1 Sentinel. It can include up to 2 additional. Each is equipped with a multi laser. Any model may replace its multi laser with a heavy flamer, auto cannon, missile launcher, or last cannon. Any model may take a hunter killer missile. Any model may take a sentinel chainsaw. It explodes with units within 3 inches suffering 1 mortal wound. It's a scout vehicle. At the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn begins, it can move this unit up to 9 inches. It cannot end its move within 9 inches of any enemy models. If both players have units that can do this, the player who is taking the first turn moves theirs first, and has smoke launchers. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cults. Keywords are Vehicle and Scout Sentinels. Uh, the Cult Armored sen cult armored Sentinels. Don't worry, that's not a picture of a Sentinel below it. It's Lehman Russ. Uh, cult Armored Sentinel can move 8 inches, hits on 4s, strength, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 1 attack, leadership 7, or 3 up save. So it contains 1 Sentinel. It can include up to 2 additional. Uh, each model is armed with a multi laser. Any model may replace its multi laser with a heavy flamer, auto cannon, missile launcher, las cannon, or plasma cannon. Any model may take a 100 killer missile. Any model may take a Sentinel chainsaw. It explodes with the units within 3 inches suffering 1 mortal wound, and it has smoke launchers. Faction keywords are Tyranids, Gene Stealer Cults. Keywords are Vehicle, Armored Sentinels. A cult Lehman Russ starts at 12 wounds, and from 7 to 12 wounds, it moves 10 inches, bliss skill hitting on 4s and 3 attacks. From 4 to 6 wounds, it moves 7 inches, bliss skill hitting on 5s, with D3 attacks. From 1 to 3 wounds, it moves 4 inches, bliss skill hitting on 6s and 1 attack. A cult Lehman Russ is a single model equipped with a battle cannon and a heavy bolter. This model may replace its Battle Cannon with an Eradicator Nova Cannon, Exterminator Auto Cannon, or Vanquisher Battle Cannon. This model may replace its Heavy Bolter with a Heavy Flamer or Laz Cannon. This model may take two Heavy Flamers, two Heavy Bolters, two Multi Meltas, or two Plasma Cannons. Uh, this model may take a Heavy Stubber or Storm Bolter. This model may take a Hunter Killer Missile. Has Explodes, with the units within 6 inches suffering D3 Mortal Wounds. Has Smoke Launchers. Grinding Advance. This model does not suffer a penalty to turret weapon hit rolls for shooting a heavy weapon on a turn in which it has moved. The following weapons are turret weapons. Battle Cannon, Eradicator Nova Cannon, Exterminator Auto Cannon, and Vanquisher Battle Cannon. It has Emergency Plasma Vents. If this model fires a supercharged plasma cannon and you roll one or more hit rolls of one, it is not automatically destroyed. Instead, it suffers six mortal wounds and cannot fire any plasma cannon for the rest of the battle. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cults. Faction uh, keywords are Vehicle and Lehman Russ. And our last item for this video is the Goliath Rock Grinder. It starts at 10 wounds, and from 6 to 10 wounds remaining, it moves 10 inches, plus skill hitting on 4s and 6 attacks. From 3 to 5 wounds remaining, it moves 6 inches, plus skill hitting on 5s and d6 attacks. And from 1 to 2 wounds remaining, it moves 4 inches, plus skill hitting on 6s and d3 attacks. Its weapon skill hits on 5s. Strength 5, Toughness 7, 10 Wounds, Leadership 7, and a 4 up save. It's a single model equipped with a Heavy Stubber, Heavy Mining Laser, and Drill Dozer Blade. This model may take a Cache or Demolition Charges. This model may replace its Heavy Mining Laser with a Clearance Incinerator or Heavy Seismic Cannon. It explodes with units within 6 inches suffering D3 Mortal Wounds. It has Rugged Construction. Roll a D6 each time this model loses a wound. On a 6, the wound is ignored. It has Transport. A Goliath Rock Grinder can transport up to 6 Gene Stealer Cult's infantry models. Faction keywords are Tyranids and Gene Stealer Cults. Keywords are Vehicle, Transport, and Goliath Rock Grinder. Alright guys. Oh, gotta stretch. So, I'd love to hear again what you guys think in the comments down below. And don't forget, uh, we're adding on still to our giveaways here. We have the 5 index, the main rule book, and we're up to a 6 index because you guys have been watching these videos. So, like I said, all the monetization goes back to prizes for you guys up until the 17th. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed these videos. If you want to be entered in the draw for those prizes, you need to comment on this or any other Warhammer 40k video and be subscribed. Don't forget to set your subscriptions to public so I can see you've subscribed and entered you in the draw, right? You want to be in there. Uh, if you're in or around Mess and Hat on July 17th, release day, come on down to Comic Readers on Railway Avenue and we'll be playing a bunch of 8th bunch of eighth edition all day. It's going to be tons of fun. Um, 
yeah, if you guys have any other comments, what do you guys think? If you want to add timestamps, add do them in the comments section below. Uh, what do you, the Gene Steer Cults look and Tyranids look really fun to me? I don't know, they've always too many models for me to paint, <laughs> personally. Uh, but just playing them looks really cool, really fun. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys in this video. Have an awesome rest of your day. Have an awesome weekend if you're watching this. Uh, and have, as always, <laughs> the Emperor Protects.